All right. Okay. Uh, Sparrow Headface for a dollar. Gun to your head. Which Persona girl would you wa want to watch urinate, defecate herself? Oh, yeah, Toromi or, or uh, for me? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No, no, no. All right, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's uh, Marty Robbins. I, I feel like Fallout New Vegas kind of fucked over Marty Robbins to where everyone only quotes Big Iron and they only think of it as like the meme song. No, Marty Robbins was legitimately a very, very good singer. Uh, inspired the guy that went on to work with Elton John as a songwriter. Which is why Elton John songs have a lot of uh, that same, I guess, kind of vocality to them, where it's mainly about the singing. Because Mari Robbins had like a beautiful voice. Also, I kind of lied to you guys, <laughs> just, just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, the song is more depressing than I remember. It is a very sad song. You know, it's a, uh, it's all about two people who die and never really got to be together. Yeah. Uh, check out the Celebrate demo. I have not yet. I've been busy. I've been busy today. Uh, sort of, kind of. Sort of, kind of. I was playing a lot of video games today, but it's because I got a lot done today. And that's that's the best part. I just got to make sure this actually works on my end. I just sat down. Why'd you start with that? Am I playing FF7? If things go like how I think they're going to go tomorrow... Uh, we might do, eh, we might do FF7, but there, there is a very specific reason I'm doing this instead. Let me just, eh. oh, right, yeah, that's before, there we go. And we're not going to do the whole, whole stream as this. We will, we will do FF7 tonight, and that's kind of one of the reasons I'm jumping into this immediately. Uh... I just got to do some things on my end. Uh... Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm confused. Don't be afraid. It's going to be very confusing. It's going to be very confusing. Uh, but before that... Crucial, I get that part done. It is crucial. Okay, okay. That's it. We're not going to do the whole whole stream as this. But there is a very specific reason I'm doing this. So, we find that clip. Someone just posted it in the Discord one day and I liked it. Okay. <laughs> Nigga, you're almost 30. Let the dog meme die. No. Okay. So, there's a reason I'm touching this. Uh, Marsh Marsh 2 bucks recently learned about Game Dude. That story is wild. Yeah. Very much so. Okay. So, for those unaware, Far Cry 2 is interesting. Uh, it's one of those where mechanically it's tedious as fuck. Uh, it, it can be very annoying. It can, it can have a lot of things that are just intentionally there to waste your time. Uh, but there are also aspects of it that people are looking back on and going, this is kind of a legitimate genius game. Also, yeah, we're gonna do, yeah, hardcore. Anything other than hardcore, I kind of feel like it starts getting absurdly, absurdly shitty. Uh, also... Where is he? There we go. You gotta pick former IRA. You gotta pick former IRA. Okay. So, for those unaware, uh, Far Cry 2 was right after Far Cry 1, obviously. Far Cry 1 is a lot different than a lot of the modern Far Cry games. You straight up fight fight mutants at the end. It's fucking weird. Uh, Far Cry 2 is exceptionally more grounded uh, to the point that some people don't like that. It does. They don't like some of the things that it goes out of its way to do. Okay, here you go. 
Hey, sir. Sorry for the delay. So you going to a hotel in Pala? Yeah, it takes place in war-torn Africa. I don't know what nation. I think it's just Africa. Uh, it might be Nigeria, it might be the Congo, whatever whatever nation nation in Africa is fucked up by war. And once again, it still sounds a little too loud. There we go. So, you are a mercenary in Africa trying to hunt down an arms dealer known as the Jackal. And I just, I, I just think the sound is not going to be fixed at all. Uh, Chance Perdimo from G5 died from motor uh, cycle accident, age 27. Shit, man. It takes a no, na it takes place in no nation. You are a beast. There you go. There you go. Play a nihilistic game as well. There is a reason it is nihilistic. I think it might be the Congo. Might be wrong. It might be the Congo. There are a lot of jungles, and it would make sense that it takes place in the Congo. Um. So, for those unaware, Far Cry 2 is an unofficial, unofficial, but heavily inspired adaptation of Heart of Darkness. The reason I bring up Heart of Darkness is because that's a very, very big thing that influenced Apocalypse Now, which I'm making a video on. Are most Far Cry games nihilistic? Yes, no. Same Far Cry series later fell on the same problem most modern Ubisoft games did. Yeah. Like Yoshi made a really good video about this game. Yeah. It's what now? Yes. So, Far Cry 2 is actually an adaptation of Heart of Darkness. The final chapter is even called Heart of Darkness, and it's about you taking a boat up the Congo River to hunt down the jackal. So, for those unaware of what Heart of Darkness is, it was the novel written by, well, novella, technically, uh, written by Joseph Conrad, talking about the British influence in Africa. Uh, the whole point of it was about how the white British were beating down the Native African. Uh, the whole idea of savagery and civilization and what makes someone civilized and what makes someone a savage. Because uh, Marlowe, who's the main character in Heart of Darkness, watched a lot of uh, British people beating and abusing, uh, raping Africans and kind of going like, are we supposed to be the civilized ones? And specifically becomes obsessed with Kurtz, who literally becomes a god to the Native Africans. Now, March March 2 bucks, I got a PS3 copy of this game still wrapped. Very valuable one day, I guarantee you. Takes place in the Congo, like how GTA 4 takes place in New York. Yeah. It's one of the most interesting books I've read. It is a very good book. Uh, it's also unspecified, failed state in Central Africa. Also, the Jackal is not confirmed, but totally is MC from 1. Yeah, yeah. It's heavily implied he's the main character from 1. Because the main character from 1 was a mercenary, if I remember right. The Hard Darkness is the game by uh, Black Coop Monsters Voring You. Wasn't Kurtz a white guy, too? Yeah, Kurtz worked with a Dutch ivory company and set up an outpost in the Congo. Because that was Marlowe's job. Marlowe's to go and find out what happened to Kurtz. Because Kurtz just kind of stopped communicating with him one day. There's good ending, and if you kill Amita and Sabal in four, they aren't that nihilistic. Yeah. It had to be the Congo because of the amount of rivers. Yeah. I see why it's called Heart of Darkness, because it's in Africa. Everybody's black. The Belgian Congo in Hard Darkness. Yeah, it was specifically a Dutch company in the Belgian Congo, but Marlowe and a bunch of guys there were British. It was weird. I thought you were playing it because you own a Jeep and it's full of Jeeps for some weird reason. Far Cry 2 is in proud advertiser Jeeps. Jeeps, nothing like World War II Granddad. But yeah. So, Kurtz is a white savior god. Kurtz quite literally developed a god complex and had a cult worshipping him. But he despised them and kept talking about how they need to destroy the beasts. Every single one of them. And then Kurtz died of malaria. And then a South African accent smash your past. They, look, they sound too goofy. Big in Africa and the English. I've uh, recently watched Ghost in the Darkness. on spray underrated movie. It is fun. It is fun. Currently watching Blues Brothers myself. I was special occasion for the stream. As stated, I'm doing an Apocalypse Now video. And uh, this is heavily inspired by Heart of Darkness, which inspired Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Wasn't it the Germans that were super harsh to the colonies? It was kind of everybody. That was kind of the point of the book, to point out, like, dude, none of us are, none of us are free. And none of us are free of sin. We're all abusing these people. Well, Scrubcat put out a Far Cry 2 5 comparison video when 5 released, and it's just as dumb as RE4. Yeah. You gotta talk about production hell, Apocalypse Now, or just release to Heart of Darkness. You kind of have to. They made an entire documentary about it. Jamal the Shadows. 
if I am right, this should have some of my mods working where it fixes up enemy AI. So they're a lot smarter and they actually do tactic shit. That's when the Jackal is a spot on Curse's character. I like the Jackal. Uh, one of the big complaints about the game when it came out was specifically that it kind of felt like no matter who you worked with, you weren't getting anything done, which is kind of ignoring the fact that that's the point. You, you specifically are not getting anything done because that's not really your job. You're here to kill the Jackal. You're not here to win anybody the war. And on top of that, the Jackal wants everybody dead. He wants every side dead, so he's funding the war. So eventually, there's, they're going to run out of guys to shoot at each other. It was considered a TND sim long with RE5 or Left 4 Dead 2. Not really, because you were mainly also fighting mercenaries. Are you familiar with Sodom? Good uh, German thrash band. Their Vietnam themes uh, songs might make for a good video intro. Hmm. A lot of the Marlon Brando segments were made the way they work to, due to Brando being a dick. Yeah. Well, Brando was kind of infamous for being a drama queen. Funny enough, with him being an actor. How long does it uh, take to make you a video? Eh, it depends. Some are a lot longer than others. Depends on season one, the whole boys still hold up. It's okay. Malaria hitting hard? Yeah. The, the irony is you're the one that catches malaria. Meanwhile, the jackal's fine. Finish Persona 4 Golden, some of my favorite video games. Yeah. Some is one of the best thrash metal bands ever. Highly recommend. Ooh. You think Jackal is the main guy from one? Uh, it's a very, very common fan theory. Yeah, the voice acting in this game is kind of weird. They just had everyone speed through their lines as fast as possible. How does malaria work? It's a respiratory illness, if I remember right. Respiratory and high fever. So a lot of those symptoms. Archive of Star Control, five bucks, develop God Complex, natives worship you, I am God, die of malaria. Yeah. That's literally the ending of the book. Uh, Marlo finds Kurtz, and he's just completely insane from malaria. And he's like golfing, and he finds him in the middle of the night trying to crawl up a hill and dig a hole. And he doesn't know why. Uh, so when Marlo finally grabs him, He's just, like, dying in his arms, and he just says the horror over and over again until he finally dies. Then Marlo has to go back to England and, and talk to his, and talk to Kurtz's fiance, who has no idea what happened. And all he tells her is, yeah, he died calling out for you. He really wanted to see you before you die, but before he died. You know, basically shielding her from the fact that, like, he went batshit insane. Which is the exact opposite of Kurtz in Apocalypse Now, who flat out tells uh, Willard... Yeah. Who flat out tells Willard, when you go back to America, tell my son everything I did. I think uh, this game should go for a remaster or Ubisoft, fuck it up. It could definitely use it. There, there's definitely aspects of it that could use some help. I would have told her the truth. You, there was no gain to telling her the truth. Because this, this was not, you know, Kurtz in Apocalypse Now who genuinely thought he was fighting the war in the way he believed was necessary to win and was, like, fighting against the lies of, of the civilization of America and all that shit. No, Kurtz in, in uh, Heart of Darkness was a pants-shitting madman. <laughs> and one second, I gotta get to Streamlabs. Uh, Mark99 for three bucks. Pope Lolly today was way better than yesterday, but bad news, we lost uh, Trump near uh, jump back in and help us take, uh, take it back from the socialist faggots. Remember, drink some water. Yee. Uh, Mini Ghost for 222. Uh, hello, hey, you solo cuck stars on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Thought it was okay at best. Also, thoughts on Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Almost 50 years old this year. Also, also, fuck you, Shoddy, even though you're not here. Uh, I like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it's fun. Okay. When I saw them songs use audio from Apocalypse Now, the Napalm quote in particular in the intro, search up Napalm in the Morning off their album M16. Oh. Fun fact, despite it was critique on colonialism, many people, including a famous African writer named Akabed, uh, accused the book as being racist not good. Which is, a, like, the only thing I can think of is the fact that it's very, very casual about calling uh, black people niggers. But it was written in, like, 1850. Like, that was quite literally just the vernacular of the time. Even though fucking Joseph Conrad was making it very clear, I don't support any of the violence against native people. Uh, it's very, very obviously like a bad thing and outright inhumane and we're monsters for doing it. 
So yeah, going, but he say end mom though, it's like, that, that's kind of being reductive. Well, there's Bloodborne Parasite spread by mosquitoes. Oh, okay. That's on Juju from my dress of darling, cunning cosplayer. She's funny. For what she is. And yeah, we have to get out of a gunfight while coughing to death of malaria. Reno being a drama queen out of shape for the filming lore, uh, Lamb being shot in darkness may seem so much better. Yeah. Kind of perks of uh, fucking Francis Ford Coppola being a, fil a good filmmaker. He knew how to ride the limitation. Now, as stated, the mod should be working, so enemies might actually be smart. Can't put fucking attack helicopters because it's obscene. Yeah, but the 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 full quote is: We train young men to drop fire on people, yet they can't write fuck on their airplanes because it's obscene. Also, yeah, they should give us an option to not full auto the fall. Or is this a fall or is this something else? I think it's actually more like a different gun. HK G3, there we go, yeah. And yeah, you pass out. Ghost exploding guns. <laughs> well, that shit be a man. Recoil is too bad on it, though. I have a second trophy, five bucks. I value Negroes as human beings, but uh, just like us, they shouldn't be treated inhumanely. Oh my god, he's racist and hates them all. Yeah. I say, it is, it is kind of funny. Because, uh. Because, like I said, I didn't I didn't read through it just because I can't find my copy of, of the book. Because uh, I did buy it. Back in high school when I read it for an, uh, an assignment, but I genuinely liked the book. Uh, I, but I can't find where I put it. So I just listened through an audiobook of it, and I saw the uh, the comments, and everyone's like, man, this book is so racist. It's like, man, it's so, like, kind of uncomfortable. And I'm sitting here like, did you not fucking listen? <laughs> the, the whole point of it is, hey, don't, don't treat people like shit. Just got back from Daddy Jim's stream. I heard seeing Daddy Jim hurt this bad. Yeah. That poor motherfucker. Tough as nails. My name is Carbonell. I don't care what your name is. You're just a problem right now. Uh, Who you work don't for? like the, uh, how the guns are all mirrored. It's weird. Yeah, but it was like 2009 game, so. I think you work for me it What's the movie, jealous. Ants? It was okay. Get on out here. Get yourself kitted up. Play Heart I'm Darkness here. Game by Eric Chal. I didn't know that was a thing. There we go. Far Cry 2 Pro's board best game, though. It is very fun. It is a very fun game. Okay. Yeah. And it's just telling you the, the weapon system. Because back in my day, Far Cry games were much more restrictive. You had to actually think about shit. There we go. Uh, do you know how to remove bullet from the body? I talk on like the the. I talk about like the the healing animation. Uh, it's when you're at the final health bar or close to it, and you don't have a syringe. It's a contextual thing. This is the only Far Cry picking up enemy guns make you truly feel like a merc scrounger for scrap, stay alive. Yeah. First thing, I need to. Not to be controversial, but do you think the U.S. was similarly abusive towards Filipinos for the Philippines getting independent? I don't know anything about that. I've never looked into it. This is not me in Persona 4 was brutal. Oh, yeah. This game would have been 10 out of 10 if fixed stealth. Yeah, I say this This is one where if they do go back and remake it, there's stuff they could fix. The question is, would modern Ubisoft be able to do that? And yeah, you have the, the classic... Be careful of the Africanized water, yeah. America staged vampire attacks in the Philippines. Uh, well, yeah, modern Ubisoft could do it. Yeah, that's the thing. Modern Ubisoft, no way they could do it. They would just actively refuse to. Come on. There we go. 
Apparently someone released an overhaul mod for Watch Dogs. They had a ton of stuff that was moved from the game for launch, and that's a ton of new stuff. Oh, that's pretty cool. So everyone's loving the Stellar Blade demo. I have not played it yet. Uh, it looks pretty interesting. There are a ton of new African actors who can who can voice that cast. Yeah, but that's the modern Ubisoft. They'd remove a lot of shit that would. They'd, they'd remove a lot of shit that people want in this game, like weapon durability and and how willing it is to kill you. 1911 was made before the pistols. Uh, U.S. soldiers had uh, before couldn't stop the Filipino riots. Like the map system in this game. Yeah, I say this game is all about not holding your hand. That, that, that is always the appeal of, of Far Cry 2 to people. Is specifically they don't want to hold your hand and you have to figure shit out on your own. Uh, it's not so brutal that it's like playing Escape from Tarkov, but it is definitely something where you'll notice a spike in difficulty compared to especially modern Far Cry games. This game is all about like, hey motherfucker, you're in Africa. Uh, WrestleMania is next weekend, and if Cody loses, I'll set myself on fire. I don't know who's going to be in this one. So, I don't know whether to be excited or be like, ah, I'll skip it, none of the people I like there. Alright. Sure, Pam, Persona 3 protagonist anime name. Uh, what is his name, like, Makoto? I think he's alright. Welcome to Africa, you dirty fuck. Yeah, basically. First thing I ever saw this game is my buddy driving, bring up the map only to immediately drive into a lake. That happens a lot. Don't check the map while you're driving. Ammo. Uh, Molotov is OP in this game. You can make bushfire. Yeah, the fire system was something that was really pushed for this game. Uh, because to be fair, for all the time, it was actually pretty impressive. You could have some pretty crazy fires. Did you add any mods? I add an overhaul mod that's supposed to fix the AI. Because if you play vanilla AI, they are very dumb. Uh, they're supposed to be able to do a whole bunch of shit. Uh, and I think on vanilla, that kind of trips them up. Because they don't know what to do. Meanwhile, if you mod it to where it fixes some issues, they can do some really impressive things. I'm going to swap to a AK. Which merch you playing was at the XARA? Your opinions on the fall of Rhodesia and how Europe handled it? That's a very interesting subject. I liked reading about the uh, the wild geese and the whole mercenary involvement there. It is some crazy fucking rabbit holes. And yeah, as you can see, we have a rusty ass AK. Uh, would you recommend Beast No Nation? You said it was spiritual successor, Hard Darkness. It is very good. It is very very good. Uh, no joke. Beast of No Nations is a fucking phenomenal movie. I'm going to sleep till like 9. Favorite Hall Life clip and which one's the funniest? I don't remember. I don't remember. Poor Clean G3. Yeah. Ro Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth Knight. Uh, then Cody versus Roman. Hmm. Having The Rock come back could be interesting. At the same time, would I be willing to stomach more of seeing The Rock? Beast of Nation's got zero Oscar noms, which is bullshit. That is actual bullshit to me. I think that's fucking insane that it didn't get anything. Like, not, not even giving the, the kid Agu. You know, not, not getting his actor anything, that's actual fucking bullshit. Because, like, for being a kid actor and the amount of shit he had to do in that movie, it's like, man, that's fucking... That ain't right, man. Okay. This is what happens when you mess with the final boss, yeah. That guy's been rigged to the highest number, so he'll shoot harder. <laughs> yeah, you have little signs that can point to where you need to go. The red one is your current objective. Doesn't try to audible out a base boosted vine boom every uh, play every time someone drops slur. Enjoy the ear rape when trying to read Huckleberry Fan retards. 
Is that one movie that one soldier kept saying he wanted to rape that one woman? Yeah, uh, if it's the scene that I'm thinking about, uh, the main character, Agu, has a mental breakdown during a battle, and his friends are trying to rape a woman to death, and he just shoots her in the head. Make sure that, uh, with this game is the weapon degradation is too rough and guns are ruined way too fast. Yeah, well, they really encourage you're supposed to buy guns. You're supposed to buy guns and regularly exchange them. That's why guns don't really cost money. You're, you're supposed to go and get new equipment every single time you want to go out into the field. I'm well aware. So, yeah, you have a little outpost. God damn it. There we go. Scouting system in this is nowhere near as good as like three. Because three is where the scouting system just became fucking OP. Uh, this game has a lot of cool ideas, also a shit ton of bad ones. Yeah. Why are guns so cheap? Wasn't they come? Is in shambles. Ever see the Rhodesian fall? Interesting stuff. Yeah, that's a far, uh, fucking dark scene to do. War as hell, and you barely see that in war movies. Yeah, well, explicitly in Beast of No Nations, the main characters are not really good people. Uh, they are a army full of like child soldiers gathered together by a warlord who wants to take control of the government faction he's working with, so then he can become a warlord. <laughs> Uh, one man army swamp uh, for two bucks. Nice, cry nice. Far Cry Two was a good game. Yeah. Kind of cool that whatever character you don't pick, you can ally with in this game. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. I, like I said, this game actually has a really cool details to it. As you're making an AK, uh, tin cans, paper clips, tape, prayers, and hope. They kill the commander in the book and surrender to you on patrol. Yeah. Well, it's being able to mark enemies on this game makes things less interesting. And there's there's a back and forth. Because the way this game does it, just actively the stealth does not work. <laughs> yeah, somehow the AK is less kicked than the G3. Warlord was a random pedo. Yeah. As stated, they were not good people. That's a movie, Lord of Warns. You hear it's getting a sequel? Yeah, it's getting a sequel, and I thought that was fucking weird, but I, I like it well enough. I like it well enough to see it could possibly continue, to think the fact that he, what was it, the Merchant of Death, who he's based off of, is out of prison. But it works so well as like a one-and-done story that I really don't know. I don't know if I kill everybody though. Damn malaria. Come on, asshole. Let's go. Never mind, man. I'm not gonna fight a tingly. That's a bad piece of malaria you got. Yeah, you have buddies. Never heard of the Aussie modified SLR uh, fall rifle used in Vietnam called the Bitch. They shortened the barrel and made it full auto. Uh, also, pistol grip at the front. Yeah, if you play Rising Storm 2, you could actually use it, and it was fucking wild. Your favorite game from the series? I like 3. I think 3 is really good. 5 is a lot of fun to play. I don't like the story in 5. They did get out of prison. What are he's up to? Remember that Michael J. Fox Vietnam War movie or Gang Rips a POW? Did you finish E2? No. No. I've, I've not been able to uh, to even play it because I've been working on, on video shit. Plus, I got everything I downloaded now. Well, I got everything I needed to download now. So. Yeah, now we gotta take him back home. Four is the best villain. He does, but the game also explicitly fucks you over with the fact that, like, none of the story needed to happen if you just waited. Uh, you can get everything you want done. Which kind of makes it, like, genuinely hard to want to play the game now when you know that twist. 
Where it's like, well, why would I just fuck myself over and I can just wait the, like, what, 15 minutes? As long as, uh, franchise came irredeemable, wasting gun f Gus Fring. Yeah. Now we gotta go all the way back. You ever play Lords of the Fallen 2014 one? No, I had no interest. All I heard was it was Dark Souls Light, and it's like, alright, I'm already getting pretty exhausted of Dark Souls gameplay. I don't want to play a ripoff of it. Voss was so good when he died, the game was ruined. Yeah. It's kind of the, the common consensus was that Voss kind of kept that game together. You guys see? You get to walk around through Africa. Now, granted, it's a very choked up version of Africa. You notice all the canyons and hills around you. It's because... This was before them rendering massive maps. Uh, Atlas for two fake mines. Any RPG slop you know? Need idea for first video? I have no idea. I guess Corpse Party, technically? What were Ubisoft trying to say with a Far Cry 4 50 minute ending? Our games are wasted time. What's the difference between Dogmas 2 and Baldur's Gate 3? Look up gameplay. That will immediately tell you everything you need to know. Alright. Anybody recommend that deals with similar themes of Heart of Darkness? I have no idea. Because Heart of Darkness is a very specific kind of story that anything that takes inspiration from it will kind of just take the same format. Where it's, they're trying to, you have X character going on a journey to hunt down a mysterious other character. They learn more about the character as they journey, and they kind of see the effects on the world that the character has. I mean, it, it's a very specific kind of story. Mission Dragon's Dogma Monster didn't respond. That's the best part, though. Uh, doesn't help the Revolution Group are genuine assholes who would stab each other in the back to either recruit child soldiers or kill surrounding soldiers. Oh, yeah. JFJ finished DD2 and he loved it, called it the best medieval RPG game he ever played. It is very, very good. Here's how it works around here. The only currency worth shit is rough diamonds. Don't accept paper money from anybody. I wouldn't wipe my ass with it. If you work for the UFLL, you'll get paid in stones. Now, one so of the set errors having a complete meltdown of how everyone's loving Stellar Blade. Yeah. Yesterday. He stopped well, because... Well, because... And promptly got shot in the head back in town. you killed him. Anyway, if you want to rocks, go outside and find them. The case has a tracker you can home in on with your compass. If I were you, I'd go buy some medicine first. That malaria is nothing to screw around with. You'll probably have some luck over at Mike's bar. I'll have to write fuck on their airplanes because it's obscene. Get yourself healthy and come by the front office in town. I'll introduce you to Gakumba. Get you hooked up. Hey, he's coming out. Yes. Yeah. All right. So now we got the intro out of the way. You go. You know what's going on. I will now take us significantly further ahead, so you guys can see actual gameplay. But so. Uh. The whole thing with the, the Stellar Blade thing and people freaking out about that is specifically companies have been sold off the speculative marketing that DEI ESG promised, which is, well, if you follow us, you can get returns. You can, If you follow us, you'll get returns. They specifically promised them buku amounts of bucks and stock price in return. Uh, that's why I really don't like the whole thing people are pushing with the whole, uh, well, they don't even give a shit about the money anymore. It's like, no, they explicitly care about the money. That's why you're seeing right now, especially if you pay attention to what's going on with Disney, uh, stockholders are having fucking civil wars with people over this shit where it's like motherfucker you promised us motherfucker you promised us over and over and over again uh so the whole idea that that this has never been about the money is, is nah that's cope it's always been about the money everything is always about the fucking money uh the true i gotta figure out where we're going here uh okay okay the true fact of the matter is, with something like Stellar Blade blowing up, it's kind of showing people explicitly, in no uncertain terms, hey, people like titties, they like fan service, they, they like seeing uh, attractive women. And the, the AAA market has tried so hard to change that. They, they have tried so hard to be like, no, 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 realistic expectations of women, realistic expectations of women. That's what the kids want. That's what the kids want to see. Uh, and no, it hasn't been. And now companies are bleeding to the point of like, hey, uh, where's all those returns you fucking promised us? And so you're seeing, once again, 
Pay, pay attention to the shit going on with Disney. D Disney is in a very interesting spot right now. Uh, they have a literal, like, not even exaggerated, literal civil war with their fucking uh, CEOs right now, where it's between a guy by the name of, what was it? Plek? Plek? Plencheck? Uh, someone like that. Uh, and Bob Iger, where they want to oust Iger and replace him with somebody else. Uh, to the point that they are having open and public ads on fucking YouTube. Pence. Yeah, that was it. Pence. Uh, open and public ads on YouTube telling people, Hey guys, when it's time to vote in the, uh, the, the new CEO shareholder reminder, this is how you do it. And people are going like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, running public ads talking about replacing their fucking CEO shareholder? Like, what the hell does that mean? Go check in it, make her gay. Yeah, quite literally. So it, it's this thing of like, why the fuck are they running to the public? You know, people who, if you're, if you're like a public, there we go, a uh, public shareholder in Disney, you probably have like in a fraction of a percentage. You know, you, you are not a majority shareholder. Uh, there, there's a lot of weird shit going on with, with Disney. And Disney is a powerhouse. Yeah, Nelson Peltz, that's the guy. Yeah. Uh, Disney is a powerhouse of a company. If they fold and start changing, that has a ripple effect. Reminder, Disney was one of the first ones to openly be ESG, DEI approved. Uh, when it was well known in the public. So, I think a lot of DEI funds and DEI affiliates genuinely are scared of the idea of Disney getting replaced with a guy that goes, fuck this shit. Because then everyone will start going, yeah, fuck this shit. Why are we still doing this? Because that's stated. You're trying to sell ideology to guys who only think about numbers. They, they are very practical people. They, they are guys who don't give a fuck uh, about the, the snake oil. You know, they, they are not there for the snake oil. They are there explicitly to sell the snake oil. We're getting that full Heart of Darkness experience. Find funny that Bob Iger ran back, uh, brought back the man that literally t uh, got Disney in that situation all because Bob Chapik fell on the face. Yeah. You see IGN's trying to push their devs never saw a real woman lie? Yeah, the French publication of IGN said the devs never saw a woman for Stellar Blade. And then people were posting the fact that the guy who owns the company, because they're also the people who did Nike, uh, has been married for 10 years and his wife is an artist at the company. So she very much helped work on the game. And once again, the, the character model for Stellar Blade is based off an actual woman. It's an actual Korean model. That's Far Cry 2? Yeah. Uh, what gets me is these fuckers see the numbers and continue to do this shit. Someone with a brain has to assume this isn't a workable strategy. Last day, they, they are operating off speculative marketing. Speculative marketing is the idea of you have to spend a little bit now to get greater returns in the future. That's how economic bubbles pop. Uh, economic bubbles specifically promise that. That's where you have the dot-com bubble. That's where you had the housing bubble. Specifically, the idea of don't worry about the short-term, focus on the long-term. Ironically, while making sure the short-term guarantees the long-term. Right. Uh, no DEI BlackRock blow my hose. Their man uh, uh, blows my hole. Their main CEO is named Larry Fink. Holy shit, the name is absurdly fitting. It's on Far Cry Primal. Very boring. Yeah, that, that's about when it started getting really boring. In fact, CEO Stellar Blade bought everyone who's employees PS5 so they can play the game when done. That's really nice. Basically, they're angry because they aren't getting their money back. Yeah, th that's the big thing. I keep hearing over and over again about how, well, the, you know, this isn't about the money. It's the ideology. They just want the total control. It's like, yeah, they want the total control, but you can't guarantee that without the money. If you don't keep the numbers guys happy, the numbers guys will fuck you over. Uh, there, there is a scene in a movie. It, it's a pretty good movie. It's not even that amazing, but there's a scene in it that is extremely profound, and that is uh, War Dogs. War Dogs is that one movie with Miles Teller and Jonah Hill where they become arms dealers. Uh, they explicitly 
tried to become illegal arms dealers by smuggling in, I think it was Chechnyan AK-47 ammo, passed an embargo, and then labeling it as Bulgarian ammo. Because uh, you can buy from Chechnya, something like that. The, the point is, they're selling AK-47 ammo that they could not, they, they should not be able to sell. Uh, and they have to specifically rely on a bunch of guys in a, in a warehouse, packaging it, and letting it smuggle out under the radar. Well, they don't ever pay the guy that actually organizes everything. Yeah, Chinese. It was Chinese ammo, yeah. They don't ever actually end up paying the guy that was supposed to organize the packaging, so he just goes straight to the feds. He goes straight to the feds and goes, these guys had me smuggle ammo for them. This dude who, as far as they were concerned, was so low on the totem pole, fucked their entire organization over because he never got paid. And that, that is something that really goes to show. It's like anyone that tells you, oh no, it's not about the money, they don't care about the money. People very much care about the money when they don't get their fucking money. When they don't get their money, that's when they start asking some fucking questions. And if you don't have the answers they like, they will fuck you. Always make sure the box guy get paid. It, it is the dumbest fucking rule that you would think everyone would follow, and a lot of people don't end up following it. Uh, Space Monkey, uh, zero eight ninety nine for five bucks. But yeah, Microsoft chose to bitch uh, about micro attractive women around and least Teleblade. Fuck both Sony and Microsoft for their Marxist bullshit. Yeah. Bad Space Monkey for a dollar. Uh, if anyone if anyone thinks it was ugly, true stand-ins are what uh, real women look like. They actually never fucking seen a woman. I look work at a restaurant. And almost all of them are hot. Yeah. Give me two seconds. I gotta grab my drink. CEO sucked his entire company worth billions of dollars in armaments trading and then sacrificed all uh, because he didn't want to pay some rando in Europe 100 grand. Yeah. Uh, did you see the new episode of Konosuba got leaked early from French Roll servers? Pretty funny. That sounds awesome. I'm gonna need to find that. Okay. Uh, my most expectation she doesn't steal 40 bucks at my wallet. Remember, Modern Disney is a company that turned a billion dollar merch franchise into a shitty television franchise. Yep. Remember, you gotta spend money to make money and these fuckers have been wasting it. Yeah. As stated. We, we are... We are dealing with people who specifically believe money is infinite. They believe money is infinite. Oh, shit, that's not what I meant. Money is not infinite. <laughs> money is very much not infinite. If you believe money is infinite, that's how you get fucked over. Because no, every company operates off of very thin profit margins. They need to make back what they just spent, and they need to make a little bit more on top of that. Money is not nowhere near it. Mm-hmm. People, people take uh, for granted shit like government bailouts and government loans, not realizing that the government bailouts that happened around 2008 because of the financial crisis were very, very big news because people legitimately thought, hey, the government shouldn't be able to do that. Like, the idea of bailing out companies because too big to fail is something that directly gets in the way of capitalism, which is the strong survive, the weak, and the fuck-ups die off. If your company doesn't make it, your company just didn't fucking make it. Sorry, that's just how it is. You know, you, you shouldn't be able to get an exception because, well, we're an institution. Well, someone else will just buy you up. Someone else will buy you up. Someone else will rise and take your place. You know, that's the whole point. You know, you, you are not immortal. You, you are never supposed to be immortal. You are explicitly supposed to be, you know, someone who can uh, fuck up and fail like anyone else. Because the whole point is it's an ever-expanding ecosystem with new players in the game and, you know, that whole thing. Misunderstand is not that they believe money is infinite. They believe that history bends their will. Marx originally described the system as religion. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm fully aware, but that's the thing. That's not how it works. <laughs> that ain't how it works, motherfucker. So if you want to believe that, you can believe it, but you will suffer the consequences of believing it. And you're seeing that a lot right now. Like, I keep hearing about how, oh, we're going we're gonna to do the work and we're going to do this. We're going to make work part of daily life. You're not just going to say it. You're going to believe it. Yet I'm, all I'm seeing is the gaming industry laying off people left and right. I'm seeing gaming industry laying off people left and right. I'm seeing people outright say DEI dead. You know, DEI fucked up because people were not actually believing this shit. And they were just saying it for the money. It's like, yeah, motherfucker, what do you think was going to happen? Yeah, I think we come in here. Far enough. No weapons. Come on, arms up. 
Yeah, whatever, motherfucker. Just try to communist owners understand money. Yeah. It's people with fake jobs that were allowed to scream a little bit too loud and get all the attention in the room, and then everyone suffered the consequences of such. Nature's healing. Eh. I wouldn't say nature's healing more so much of you're watching the consequences of what happens if you ignore nature. Yeah, the, the joke with this, you can go right next door to the United Front and get missions from them. Assassination. Chief of police. Bam. Careful. Tell him where to find this man. He's riding in a motorcade. Help him's a hungry bitch. He wants to eat the week. Yeah. Remember those videos tech people with daily lives and they basically have nothing but eat meals and go to meetings? Yeah. These communists aren't men. They are more people. But yeah. As stated, it, it, it's a... It's a whole thing to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. This guy's certified gangster. And I front people who made sleeping ogs. Uh, he's black. Check your wallet. Which one was the commies? Uh, I think these guys? No, UFFL is communist dictatorship. So UFL are the communists. APR, I guess, are... I think they're also communists. <laughs> Because they also have a lot of they also have a lot of communist iconography. I think it's two factions of communists killing each other. Power belief can be true, so to speak, but they don't really uh, realize you got to work towards it and then buy it and lie, and lie like a deceitful whore. Well, that's what I mean. Like, as as much as as much as all the the golden words about like oh well we're actually gonna believe it and we're gonna believe this how many times have you well, okay I'll, I'll bring up a perfect example P perfect example uh look at that gothics chick the 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 gothics chick that talked about like hey i was involved with black girl gamers and they treated me like shit uh and as soon as she announced that on twitter people were spamming her calling her a coon calling her an uncle tom calling her left and right this uh, now I have no idea who the chick is. I don't know if she's like a political grifter. I don't know if she's basically going to be the new Candace Owens, whatever. Uh, I have no idea who she is. But that was my first experience even learning she existed. Her saying, I don't really like this company. I think they are very unethical. Uh, I think they lie to people. Uh, and people calling her racial slurs. The, the crowd that supposedly is like, we understand trauma, and we, we this, we that. Every fucking speaking term that they love to throw out and puke out. Uh, and they're calling this chick a nigger. You know, they're, they're calling her a nigger, they're calling her this, they're calling her that. I mean, they're, they're going out of their way to show that they don't believe a word of what they're selling. So as much as we hear, oh, they're going to get people who actually believe in this. They're going to get people who actually, you know, they embody this. They don't just, you know, clock out at work. What the fuck does that mean? You know, what, what the fuck does that mean? Because, you know, that, that's reading about the bridge thing where it's like, you know, what what does that actually mean? What What in, what in like, actual practical real terms of you know you aim down the site you you line up your target you pull the trigger what in terms of the in, t in that of realistic steps will that mean you know what what exactly are we getting from this and and no one's really had an answer it's really just been more of the same it's been more of the same grifting assholes that make these consultancy companies to barge into places uh who more and more and more are being outed as just being fucking racial grifters uh, granted, they've always been racial grifters, but it's just now the general public is realizing they exist and noticing that, holy shit, Jesse Jackson became corporate. Eh, yeah, we'll still this car, fuck it. They don't care, uh, or if they do, there are very few of them. And that's why they get laid off. You know, yes, if corporations could have it their way, they'd get every single person on the planet to buy their products. That's why a lot of them do try to be inoffensive and just go to a current thing as much as possible. Because even if someone gets up at you, they'll still buy their soup. You know, that kind of thing. And the problem is the fact that they dip their toes into full-blown controversy, believing that they could pick the winning side. And time and time again, they're kind of shown that, no, there isn't really a winning side here. Sometimes best just to shut the fuck up. And then they hire a bunch of people who don't actually do jobs. It's like, dude, what the fuck were you thinking was going to happen? And gold amassed by the Spanish army ruined their economy into the price of billion. I think it also goes back to plantation mentality. You go off it, you're a persona non grata. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand... I understand that concept. You know, I understand the, the whole plantation mentality. But the point of it is, the people saying everyone else is racist, everyone else is a bigot, everyone else is a monster, 
uh, this, that, what have you. We need to we need to make the white male no longer standard in games. Uh, which, by the way, our main character is not white; he's Irish. Uh, but you know the, this whole thing, where where it's all the divide and conquer. You know, fuck the white guy, fuck this, fuck that, fuck the white male, the gamer stereotype. And time and time again, they're shown that if you even deviate a little bit, they're they're gonna act like that exact gamer stereotype to you. You know, like. They, they can preach all day about how they love black voices and black women, but the man the minute a black woman said, this company is shady as fuck, they called her a nigger. You know, it's like, the fuck? You know, that that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm very like, hey, don't take optics for granted, because you have the opportunity to to really pull the pants down of the guy you're arguing with and show them as a, a fucking moronic spurg to the general public. And if you can end up looking like the better guy... You you can end up winning. Salut. So you're going to assassinate the police chief. Good. I have a proposition for you. So your target. I have to pick her for two fake mice, Warren Clad or bust, that's my motto. Book full of secrets. You should take it. It would make your job very easy. Because once the chief realizes you have this book, this ledger, he will change his plans. He'll cancel his trip and drive straight to Irishmen are paler than other so called white people. Safe there. Then he's no longer a moving target, you see. Easier to kill. See how Lizzo quit? Yeah, supposedly. I think it's just more drama queen. This book is so important. It lists all the bribes the police chief has taken from the ABR over the years. The deputy chief, he despises his boss. When he finds out about the bribes, he will be so angry, he will give all the police weapons to the other side. <laughs> He'll send the guns out on a convoy, then I will ambush them and take the weapons. You could work with me. It would be a good opportunity for you. So yeah, basically... We can still kill the police chief for the guys that hired us, but then if we get that book full of bribes, his deputy chief will sell guns to the other side. <laughs> so we effectively even out the assassination. <laughs> Godzilla's sweep is real. I think her phone's just broken. Alright. Do we have any guns in here? Uh... She's a woman. Check your wallet. All right. How many? How much ammo do we have for this? All right. We have two bolts. Arcade scratch for two bucks. Poor Lee. His loyalty be forgotten. He's still around. Uh, don't Irishmen have a unique feat? Uh, Irish women have a unique feature that they can get pregnant right after giving birth. No cool off period. Given the term Irish twins, uh, babies born in the same year, different date. Uh, I never heard about it, but that would not be sh uh, that would not be surprising. They are Catholics. Catholics are strange people. See, one of the VAs for Blue Archive anime is crossing male. Yeah, I don't care. I know FF7. We're gonna play FF7. Just I wanted to show off Far Cry 2. We're getting that full Heart of Darkness experience. This so squad uh just released season one. And it's already a disaster. Yeah, apparently Joker's no longer free. You have to pay more. I don't know, watching Jim stream. Uh, how's it going? It's pretty good. I'm mistaken. Europeans are way more aware than ethnicities in relation to each other. Uh, Americans are aware of the same ethnicities. Yeah, a little bit. Not wrong, but kind of some shade. Your skin whites are very diverse. Now there's two fake mice. I uh, thumbs up. Michelle breaks my heart when I have to do in the end. You hear about Tekken and Waffle House? No. And do Merc Quest for your buddies? I mean, I, I am. If I can get the riverboat to not be stuck. Okay. I want to position this right, because we do have a 50 cal on this boat. So if shit goes bad, we run back to the boat and we use the 50 cal. Or, oh, that's not 50. What is that? That looks more like a... Looks more like an M60. That's sad. Ever complete this game? Like twice. Managed to find all the Ruben tapes? I've never found all of them in a single playthrough. I'd always find different ones. 249 saw? It does a look it does look a little bit like a saw. Let me, let me look at it. Yeah. Yeah, that does look a bit like a saw. Yeah. 
Uh, so then that is five bucks. Two more days till doing Spice Wolf anime. Been waiting at least eight years for this. Episode Peak shall return. And it's supposed to be like a full-on remake, right? It, like, it's not just another season. It's like an actual remake. Don't get M2 until second map. Okay. So what's this game about? So we went through the intro just a little bit. I skipped ahead much further because this is where you get the actual fun stuff. Uh, speaking of which... So, you are a mercenary hunting for a guy known as the Jackal in Africa. Uh, while you are hunting for him, you catch malaria, and the Jackal actually nurses you back to health. So, you are trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Ready for Easter and Happy Easter? Yeah! I think it'll be fun. Topping a whole progressive crowd being as bad as M2, uh, W2 lobby. I was in a server that was pretty left-leaning. 9% of them just lusting after gay guys. Actually made me sick and I'm bisexual. Yeah, stay they, they are egregious hypocrites. When, when given the chance to show who they really are, they will show who they really are. Right, I think I got him. Probably should not have a sniper rifle for this, but fuck it. Uh, did you see the clips of Rakeda bragging about not eating, doing it as a counterbalance while the alcohol he's drinking? He's supposed to eat less and less and treat water as calories. Uh, if he's talking about intermittent fasting, that's not how you do that. Especially when he coincided with drinking. Because all drinking will do is turn into sugar. drink when you fast, especially alcohol. Yeah, it's like you drink water so there's something in your stomach and to hydrate you, but you don't you don't drink booze. Hello. What be you? Alright, that's a far away guy. I might actually want the sniper for him. How hard is the early Far Cry games? One can definitely be a ball buster. Uh, one was an early, early game, so, yeah, about, like, 2002 or so. Uh, two, a little bit more so, but also kind of sold itself on the hardcore factor. Speaking of which. Ah, oh, shit, don't have, didn't realize I didn't have bullets in it. Drink water, get more electrolytes, not alcohol, you really want to kill his liver and kidneys. Yeah, seriously, it's like if you drink alcohol on an empty stomach. Center mass, fuck it. Pop goes the weasel. I wanted to go for a headshot. They did not want headshot. Who the fuck's shooting at me? Where the fuck is he? I don't even think, uh... One of the things they hate Pokemon Black and White gets is ridiculous. I never played it. I never got super into Pokemon. Fuck. Maybe the fast things he needs less alcohol to get less drunk. Alright, I think I got him. I'm thinking he was in that window. Is that 1903? Very well possible. This is Africa. Yeah, he, he's got me pinned down here at the tree. Seen the Gridman anime with a trigger? Yeah, SSS Gridman. Come on, Lolly, play a real man's game. Army man, Sergeant Heroes, Plastic Army Man, go through hell. That game was a lot of fun. That game was a lot of fun. Alright. I'm gonna try something. I think he moved. Rifle has cursed animation. Ah, you. So as you can see, <laughs> the gun jammed as he was spraying me down. Yes, it is an actual mechanic. I've seen Blood Diamond think it influenced this game. Uh, I can definitely see it. Yeah, Blood Diamond was pretty good too. How, how long ago was this? I am now kind of scared to check. 
I'm legitimately... What? Oh, okay. It took me back to the... It took me back to the tutorial save. Sanchu Medallion is draining Rakeda. Rolling the headless Thompson gunner. Norway's favorite son. All the guns in this game have cursed animations. They were trying their best, okay? It was 2009. Yeah, as you can see, Gun Jam is a very real mechanic. It is very real, and it can very much fuck you up. And we're not going to go ahead and do that one mission. I want to get a new gun, so we're going to head up north. But we have to go around this, so... These guys kill you, they're going to cannibalize you. Nah, this is uh, Civil War Africa, not Haiti. So they'll probably strip and rape my corpse, but they're not going to eat me. His bad as brawls tipping. Nah, it's, it's a thing where uh, if you pick up guns just off the ground, you're obviously going to be in a bad time. But if you bring your own equipment and you made sure to pay attention to it, uh, where it's like, hey, this gun's getting a little old, replace it with a new one, uh, you're, it, it's not too much of a problem. You can actually solve it pretty early. Okay, this is the... Uh, we're a little bit too south. Oh, wait, no. No, this is where we're supposed to be. Okay. Radical. I feel about the outposts in Far Cry games. I think they're fine. Apparently we're kind of maybe doing cocaine now. God damn, man. Alright. I'm going to save. Man, Cloud's life really went downhill. Here's my problem. This Ukrainian is trying to move in on my business. He's got a ship that's coming in. Bad product, none of it clean. You take out that convoy and I'll bring in some special inventory for you. Yeah, give me the... There we go. I love that enterprising spirit, man. Yeah. Warren Seven made some great mercenary songs. Yeah, a good musician. So this is where you actually buy your guns. Uh, and they do have a lot. They do have a lot of guns. I want, I want the saw. I think that's a pretty reasonable thing. Also, grenade launcher. There's a whole bunch of good guns. Finished Rebirth yet? No, I started playing Dragon's Dogma 2. So... Tifa and Arafuse together would be Tiferoth. Gotta buy it from the black market. Yeah, you gotta unlock it, then you can buy it with diamonds. And uh, these are the guns you can unlock in the game. Uh. Hmm. Okay. PC's old as fuck. As to it is Africa. <laughs> Where's the one us to go? Uh, all the way across the goddamn map. Holy shit. Okay. Which game do you think uh, showed how ugly Africa can be better? This game or Resident Evil 5? This game... Resident Evil 5 blamed a lot of it on Umbrella. Uh, meanwhile, this game is like... This is just fucking Africa, man. So yeah, okay, we're still a little bit ways off. Plus, de design, uh, Dinazian and Gridman movie also made by Trigger. I've not. Oh shit. 
Nice young and full of calm, unfortunately, I don't want to share it with. Uh. Repair trooper fall or is a normal fall? Uh I think there is one. I don't remember. Oh fuck. Yeah, you also get roadblocks. Anything a jackal playing this game? Ah. I mean, he definitely makes sense in the sense of, like, the, the area was already fucked. How am I making it any worse by just doing what everyone else is doing? He's like, yeah, man's got a point. Got some Starblade demo? I haven't played it. I was going to hold off on Starblade because I don't know if it's actually going to be worth 70 bucks. Once again, them them making the price $70 is, is kind of painful for a lot of games. All right, I guess we killed everybody here. Is Rakay Law doing cocaine? That's what somebody said. I don't know if it's true. Okay, so we're close to the fort. We drive past that. Gonna be a ways. Gonna try to find the golden AK six uh, times ten in this. Uh, I do not know. Damn it. My friends paying full price of games these days. Yeah, like something like Dragon's Dogma 2, I'm willing to I'm willing to, because I've been waiting on the game for like fucking ten years. Uh and it was already gonna be a success. It was already gonna be a success. But Stellar Blade, I'm I'm more like, alright, it needs to do more than just Coom Bait shit. The Coom Bait is nice, but is it actually gonna be fun to play? The demo, from what I'm hearing, is genuinely fun to play. So it's like, okay, that's a little bit better. But I still wanna know, is it $70? So over here. What's your view in DD2? Uh, I still need to put more time into it, but so far it's been very, very fun. You haven't played the demo yet? No, I haven't. Why don't you try the demo then? Because I don't want to. I'm already busy with a bunch of other games. Right, there might be diamonds in this house. There is. Uh, I'm turned off Stellblade due to cold pulse using it to complain about the popular game they believe to be DEI infected. How the fuck is it DEI infected? Because, like, if anything, they've been showing the exact opposite. I'm reading Preacher Man the Power of Jesse's Grandma. Yeah, it's a pretty good comic. Pretty good comic. I think throwing Beastman pawns into the wall pissed off guards during Gorgon fighting the goal. You like semi automatic or automatic? I like semi automatic because then I can fire it as much as I want and have as much control as I want. Mr. Tales are always fun. Would you tell us about the Frog Deja? I don't know much about it. I. I know bits and pieces. The wild geese operated there. It was pretty much the hive of mercenaries for a while. Uh, but the actual circumstances around it, they kind of exceptionally got fucked over. All right, need to find one for the... There we go. Jico physics blocked the EI. Think Sony's testing the waters of Stellar Blade and readjusting the strategy. That's what I believe. I believe that they are teasing that they want to come back to, let's say, more popular marketing. Uh, the sex sales philosophy, literal business 101. The problem is they can't just go back and do that, you know. They, they can't just come back and go like, okay, guys, we were wrong. DEI was stupid. Uh, we're we're going to come back to try to win everybody over. Because, you know, A, Sony's full of pedophiles. They can't do that. And B, they still have too much invested in it, you know? 
Oh shit, it's literally coming like... Like that's it, right there. How the fuck did I die? My mercenary groups in MGS5 are a bunch of former Rhodesian SAS. Yeah. That's the Armor 2 games, which actually was your favorite for me. The second game was fun. I didn't play too much of it, but I thought it was fun. I liked the first game. Games are so fucked, they were lucky to get a crap ton of money from that. Yeah. You got run over? Did I? Did someone run me over? I don't know. I didn't see them. Alright, fuck it. Tally ho. Crossbow's sick. It is very cool. And... Maybe? Yep. There we go. So, job is complete. So, we are at the bus station. So, if we drive... Yeah... We gotta unlock some outposts here. There's an outdoor on YouTube search bar. Blurring that was a mistake. A bunch of people shitty head cannons. Yeah. Watch way of the gun again the other night. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. So is this set in an Afro Af actual African country? Sorta, of, kinda. It's not so subtly supposed to be like the Congo slash Uganda slash. Countries that suffered actual civil wars. Sex and beauty sell. As stated, literal business 101. You can get away with a lot of shit so long as you put a pair of titties next to it. The astonishing part is that, like, seeing people complain now about a lot of uh, shit they consider to be, like, woke. Back in the day, a lot of people took it as very, very, like, standard. Like, the, the whole thing with... Uh, like Barrett right now, they're trying to say Barrett's a racial caricature. It's like, no, people were very accepting of Barrett. They, they were very accepting of Barrett. They loved Barrett. You know, Barrett was like one of the more likable characters in Final Fantasy. Uh, people really liked the the guy in 13, the, the black guy in 13. I always forget his name because his name's super fucking weird. But the guy with the sun. Okay, so we got Dragunov, M79, Dart Rifle. Uh, I think people are really starved of sex positive material. Well, uh, I think probably the best way to describe it is you have a generation of kids who have grown up with pretty much unfettered access. Yeah, Saja. Yeah, his name is super fucking weird. But you have a, a generation of kids who grew up with very, like, in-your-face sexual material uh, to the point that people are kind of looking at that statement, go, go, you know, just go watch porn in regards to Stellar Blade. And people are kind of realizing that, like, oh, they mean it. Like, they... They, they don't they don't think that you know they don't think that's an insult they're genuinely telling you why do you want this just go watch porn and get porn for free and they don't understand that there's a difference between yeah get this uh there there's a a big difference between uh uh like full on pornographic material and just sexual fan service they they cannot differentiate the two i mean in all fairness they are Pretty connected in a way. Okay. I'm gonna unlock some outputs first. But this whole idea of it has to be one or the other, it's like, no, 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 no. Want some good Nato content? Look up a uh, fic diary of a detective princess that uses the whole gender debate quite well. Eh, it's something. Right, is this north or. Yeah, that's north. Because fuck all the free nipple feminists that fought for sexual freedom, right? Well, that's what I mean. You've had people grow up literally in a generation of that, where all they heard is free the nipple and all this and all that. So I think it's a mixture of people genuinely being burned out by coom brain, and people who are so slavishly coom brain that vanilla stuff is scary to them. Like, they, they genuinely can't comprehend the idea of, like, a healthy sexual libido. It has to be the most extreme possible. You know, that's why a lot of the people, whenever they bitch about this stuff and bitch about fan service or, or call people freaks and all that, they end up usually getting out for being legitimate sexual freaks. Also, 
Welcome to the Order of the Fine Red Mist. I would say if you didn't move your fucking head. Feel bad, bit bad for the Zoomers. Yeah, well, as stated, uh, every single talking point you've heard 2,000 liberals talking uh, talking about has in some way bit us in the ass. You know, the the whole idea of, of we should be proud of sleaze and sleaze culture. It's like, yeah, you don't want to be a fucking Nazi and tell people what to do all the time, but the same... At the same time, there does need to be a level of social responsibility, you know? It's like, hey, you, you shouldn't have this shit be normal because it will bite us in the ass. Two and one, motherfucker. Uh, a lot of white people fighting in the Civil War, so I'd imagine a mixture of Congo and Anglo because South Africa intervened in the uh, England Civil War. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3 is fine on these people. Yeah, that that's a big thing. Like, nobody bitched about Baldur's Gate 3. They're fucking proud of Baldur's Gate 3. They go, well, isn't that game woke? It's like, what do you consider woke? Like, I, I know I've heard stuff about Act 3, but that's Act 3. That's not the whole game. What do these people consider woke? You know, why Why is something like, you know, seeing Shadowheart's tits and vagina okay, yet something like Stellar Blade is bad? What is the standard here? And the truth of the matter is, it, there is no standard. It's legitimate. Like, the people accusing everyone of reactionary responses are themselves extremely reactionary. They have no real opinion. They are just operating issue to issue and basing everything off there. Uh, we should bring back the idea of you'll go to hell for hedonism back in kids' heads. Honestly, just teach uh, kids basic morals and social standards. Not even that. You don't, you don't even... The threat of hell, to me, should be saved for, like, extreme stuff. Uh, if you rape and murder, you're going to hell. Uh, you are going to hell because the, the, the price of your apathy is too high. You know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, but stuff like, you know, shaming kids for sexuality, it's like... It's a part of growing up that they have to realize... The, the big thing is just being an adult and just kind of sitting down and talking to your kid, don't talk to somebody else's kid, uh, about, like, listen, you know, this shit, this, this shit can affect you. It can. Uh, not that media will affect you. It's desensi desensitizing yourself, you know. Desensitizing is a, a bad phenomenon because people can end up legitimately losing sight of how extreme they are down the rabbit hole. Kids aren't kids forever, and grown-ups don't need to tree, uh, be treated like them. Yeah. Uh, one of the most famous cases of sex sales is that car commercial that shot car curves like they were filming a beautiful woman and resulted in record car sales. Yeah. More complex with how one goes to hell. Uh, real talk would be obvious. Teach kids not to be rapists and murderers. Yeah, that's the, that's the obvious. That, that's the that's the obvious one. Of like, listen, if if you're scared your kid might end up being a murderer, yeah, tell them it's like you'll go to hell if you kill somebody. You'll go to hell if you kill somebody unjustly. We'll, we'll word it like that, because that is the actual... Shit, whiffed it. That, that is the actual wording from the Bible. You know, it's not... It's not, thou shall not kill, it's thou shall not murder. Robin's parents of the 70s and 2000s got lazy and want TV and programs to be free babysitters. Yeah. If you watch the new X-Men cartoon, pretty good so far. You have to get used to the animation looking weird. Hmm. Alright, I think he might have bailed. Oh, there he is. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Murr's a bit different. Yeah, exactly. So, bro, stay in your lane, join what you like, and leave people alone to theirs. Yeah, basically. The whole thing of it we, is we, we need to accept we are animals at the whim of our programming. You know? Everything we do is based off our natural instinct. We don't like murder because it affects the tribe. Uh, we don't like rape because, once again, it affects the tribe. Uh, we don't like stealing because it affects the tribe. You know, someone's selfishness puts the whole tribe in danger. That's the whole point of, of law and, and basic morality, to, to limit as much of that behavior as possible. So, should everyone should be dead. That's on moths. I mean, they're moths. I go to hell for what I did to those Bosnians back in the 90s. It's very hard to, for anyone to actually set aside their political views to engage with art these days. Yeah. Nothing personal, man. But. There we 
we go. But the whole point behind it is everybody wants to take everything to the most extreme possible, when we've had solutions. We've had tons of solutions. You know, it's that thing of we don't need to write new laws. We, all the laws we have are pretty much all we need. You know, you, you, don't need, you don't need Texas to require you to put in a fucking ID to visit a porn site. A, you need to tear down Pornhub because it's just an evil fucking company. But B, on top of that, pay attention to your fucking kid. You know, stop losing sight of the, the grand picture because you get so wrapped up in the daily routine that you forget about your fucking kid. Which happens so many times, and I've seen people outright excuse. I've legitimately seen people in real life excuse it where it's like, well, I gotta work so I can make money so they can feed them. It's like, yeah, but they're gonna resent you for not being there. It's like, dude, you know, there, there, there is a legitimate lack of understanding of the idea of just being there with another person being important to somebody. Christian was the solution to a lot of problems we forgot we had. Yeah. Be easier to just make guides for parents on how to limit their kids' access to the internet. And I know it's easier said than done. I know it's easier said than done, and the classic response is, well, every kid has a smartphone in their pocket. Every kid has has a phone in their pocket that lets them unfettered access to the internet. That That is the biggest hurdle to get past, just the fact that kids' own natural curiosity makes them go to places that are legitimately dangerous. But at the same time, that's where you have to put your foot down and actually be a fucking parent. Yeah, you may not, your kid may not have the cool parents, but at the same time, do you want your kids to think you're cool, or do you want them to be emotionally fucked up for the rest of their life because of what you allowed them to see? You know, there's a big difference between a kid going behind his parents' back and getting access to something, and they know that's what they did, versus a kid who never had a parent that gave a shit in the first place. If they could, they would host CP and Pornhub the instant they could. They did. That's the thing. They did. Kids have a flip phone until they're 18. Very legitimate. Parents should live on Christian to scare him straight. Yeah. I think BlackRock's part of the problem. I think that's easy. I, I think it's easy to blame BlackRock. Like, no. Companies like BlackRock can only do so much. At the end of the day, a lot of the problems we have in society legitimately come down to personal responsibility. Do, do you want to know why cities are suffering from massive crime waves at the moment? Because during 2020, during George Floyd, what the fuck did all the cops do? They turned in their resignations and said, I can't be a part of this anymore. This is not the, this is not the law enforcement I signed up for. They ran. They legitimately tucked their tail between their legs and ran. What happened with the military? Why are we seeing right now guys who are, are spurgs in the military and talking about, you know, canceling Nazis and canceling white people and all this shit? Because all the military guys said, I can't be part of this anymore, and this is not the military I want. At every fucking chance people have to actually crack down on this stuff and reassert, this is not the culture you're going to push, people would rather run because they're scared of the consequences. See right there, I don't blame them. Yes, you do. You blame them. It is their fucking fault. It is your fault for at every single step kowtowing and allowing them to take over. You know, the vaccine mandate too, yes. How many people just said, all right, I'll listen to it, and did nothing about the vaccine mandate? They, they either, you know, quit their job or, or left or did anything like that. They specifically want to push people out because they will make a problem, because you will actually stand up for yourself. So if you just leave, guess what happens? Guess who it's all left to? The assholes and the incompetent. Shot him in the dick. Tough talk for some guy's job for mommy. Yeah, dude, you you have no perspective on the situation, man. Cause as stated, it's a thing of like, why do you think all this shit went down the way it did? Why do you think cities are full of crime right now? It's like it's easy to blame these faceless organizations and ignore the fact that like personal responsibility is absolutely a factor. You know, if you leave, who is there to replace you? The guy that wants to be there. And why does he want to be there? That's why you ask that. Military struggling recruiting because of the vaccine mandate. And that's what I mean. That's on purpose. That is on purpose. They do that shit specifically to push out people who might be a problem. So if you just stand your ground and say, no, we're not going to fucking do that, you can get a lot more done. But at every single step, what happens? People who don't want to do that. 
Old one for two bucks. Who decides who was right? Whoever's left. Yeah. You have no perspective on the situation. Okay, son. This is what I mean. Like, this is exactly what I mean. Oh, shit. Malaria. I forgot how to take malaria pills. Yeah, it's heal. Man, you stay firm. Yeah. Thing called lawfare. They're like that, too. But this is what I mean. No one would rather fight in the first place. People don't want to fight in the first place, so they would rather just tuck their tail in and run. My servant nation actively hates you. But see, who's going to serve in your place? That's the question to ask. It's not a matter of why serve people who hate you. It's ask who's going to be there to replace you. Like I said, personal responsibility is key. Main people who, who get in the point of responsible whether buys the sex and be, uh, can be as consequential as murder because that's king. That's definitely, yeah, that's definitely a factor. It's also people who let... Uh, People go due to them to feel pity. Oh, it was not my his fault. 14-year-old soul's car crashed in the supermarket. Came from a broken home. Yeah. I'm going to sign in with my home state's uh, investigation bureau. May as well do my best. Be one of the good ones. Stay my ground. There you go. There you go. People who hate you, therefore the winning move. Uh, I cannot type out here. No one's going to do anything. Like Everyone just waits for the inevitable glower who will blow up the Fed or blow up this, blow up that. No one's going to blow up anything. You know, the, the more you wait on the guy who will blow things up, the worse things are going to be. Because the truth is, the solution's fucking boring. The solution is just go, no, we're not going to do that. Have standing ground, not apologize, and help him to fuck off. Yeah. Evil, are you up to now? You need All right. You didn't help. One person can't do much, especially when they think no one will back them up and they risk losing everything. But that's the thing. You at least try. You at least try and be like, hey, I'm going to be the guy you forced out. Not the guy that you got to quit, the guy you forced out. Because then you can make a big enough stink. I've been sitting hunched with my neck at an angle when I just stood up my spine crack with Rice Krispies and milk and my uh, neck popping and sound like two gunshots. Yeah. I'm close. My mentor friend just got let go from his contract job from military. He served 10 years and got nothing out of his words. Yeah. Well, layoffs are a little bit different. There's no hero coming. Yeah, that's what I mean. Every single time the situation pops off, everyone just lets it happen. Cruising that most revolution required 20% of the population to succeed. Yeah, but there's no 20%. It's like there, there, there's, there, there is no revolution coming. You stop operating off the idea of revolution's coming. Because I say, if you want to fix things, it's extremely boring. It's extremely easy to fix things. It's just telling people, fuck off. It's like, fuck off, we're not going to do this. But people have been so, I guess, passive about it for so long that they've allowed a precedent to set in. They, they, they have allowed it to, to start snowballing. And only now are people kind of going like, oh shit, we need to do something, when the answer over and over and over again is, you're not going to act like that. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do this shit. Pendulum theory is a cope. Pendulum theory is 100% real, but you can't force the pendulum. The pendulum will move when the pendulum moves. That's the thing. We, we are beholden to concepts of the universe, and the concepts of the universe do not bend to our will. Basically, you say, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, what you do, uh, what you tell me to do, and don't like that, force me out. Yeah, make them quit. Uh, make them for, make them fire you. You know, make them fire you. Boring has gone too, uh, cold posting has gone far too long. Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, it, it exceptionally pissed me off during the Floyd thing, because it, like, the, the shit we're seeing now in inner cities with, uh, with the illegals and gangs like that, uh, legitimately just going full anarcho tyrannist 2077 cyberpunk is explicitly because so many cops left. So many cops left, and all that was left were the abusive, the incompetent, and just not enough people. Because so many people want, I need to, I need to stand in solidarity with my people and leave. Like, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? Like, it, it's the question that never seems to pop up in people's minds until shit's already laid out in front of them. What the fuck did you think was going to happen? Can't fire from my local work sector. Now what? That's the thing, though. You had to make them fire you. You had to make them fire you, meaning you can gun after them for wrongful termination. You can gun after them for final paychecks. You can gun after them for a whole bunch of shit. And if they're explicitly sown as firing people for not agreeing with them, you can gun after them in different ways. Right now, you have fucking law firms offering compensation for wrongful termination due to the, the fucking COVID vaccine. You know? No thoughts, just anger. Yeah, that's kind of the big problem. Politics for people who do the bare minimum to get reelected, not changing a thing and earning shit ton uh, despite being 130k a year. That's why you don't rely on politics. Politics is the the realm of getting you fucked over. 
Will you stay in your state or will you move away if so too? I would like to stay here. I like my state. Maybe the cops didn't want to go to uh, prison for life because of some junkie overdose. And guess what quitting did? It did nothing. It made it worse. It made it worse to the point that all that's left are cops who will arrest you if you so much as try to fight back against the junkie. You know, you, you need to have people who are willing to be the reasonable one in the room. But all the reasonable ones left because it got too hard. My cops are also leaving because they didn't want to protect people. They hate them. But that's what I mean. All that's left now are the incompetent. It's like as, as much as everyone wants to bitch and moan about societal issues, guess what? We're, we're all responsible for this shit. You know? The social contract is very much a thing. And we're kind of learning the consequences of what happens if you ignore that. And taking the good cops out and leaving the bad ones in. Yeah. Those Canadians just say every one of us should not pay the carbon tax. Yeah, just saying. There's no reason to. It's all bullshit. Grabbing the Apostle Peter when Jesus said that he and all apostles would turn their back on him when he'd be crucified. Peter didn't believe until all rooster crowed three times. Yeah. Some of you need good people on the inside to help uh, good guys on the outside. Well, I stated, it's a thing of... Oh, diamonds. It's a thing of everybody that had an ounce of fucks to give left. So who is left? The guys who don't give a fuck. And now, some years later, four years removed from the death of George Floyd, we are seeing cities legitimately turn into fucking dread. Like, the, the mega cities from dread that are just crime-filled shitholes that are so full of crime that they bring in the fucking National Guard... And it's still not doing anything. Nobody wants to fix the city as they're happy stewing and shit and have no concept of improving. They want to change shit when it's guaranteed they get reelected. Yeah. I mean, red states are the most beautiful place in the country. Blue states are smell like ass. Yeah. He's got Persona 4. I'm the game just points me to your fault for getting me into it. They vote for less crops. Let them re uh, reap what they sow. But there comes a time. There comes a time where you, you let someone reap what they sow so much that it starts affecting everybody. You know? Might be able to ambush these guys. Have okay, you ever seen New York flip red in your lifetime? I don't think so. Because New York has always been kind of weird. Like, actual New York Democrats are interesting. Some of them are either the most hardcore leftist on the planet, or they're legitimately right-wing, but because New York has always been Democrat, they just call themselves Democrat. It's fucking weird. People just don't want to do shit anymore. It's like everyone just gave up at some point and said, fuck it, this isn't worth it. And they wonder why it's all falling apart. They wonder why it's all falling apart. You know, it's this, it's that frustrating nihilism of what the hell do you think is gonna happen? You know, it's that black pill cycle of no shit, everything looks worse to you, you're not doing anything to improve it. At every opportunity, people had to actually fix things and stand up and say, we're not going to do this. People got scared. They got scared and they got and they ran. New Yorkers probably can't take politics seriously. Yeah, seriously. Dude, California got really fucking bad yesterday. There was a standoff in the building next to us. Yeah. So I don't know where these guys are. I'll come straight for five bucks. What's your advice for getting over anger at the former GG guys that got trolls more like Mr. Fields? I just don't give a shit about them anymore. It's like, yeah, they're a bunch of political grifters, so... They just kind of get thrown into the pile of various political grifters. Just say no to the inevitable draft. Yeah, quite literally, just burn your draft card. What are they going to do? I don't think they're ever going to force a draft, but, you know. The current manpower shortage from the military is an unfortunate argument for the conscription where you don't have to rely on public perception and people who know other alternatives. No, that's the thing. If they try to force a draft right now, that'd be legitimately one of the dumbest fucking things they could ever do. Because as people are so blackpilled and so depressed and so angry right now, like, the people that... Oh, shit. The people that actually give a shit about the, the war in Ukraine or Israel or what have you uh, don't like the fucking government. And even if they want to go and fight, guess what? They're not going to go and fight. They, they absolutely are not going to go and fight. Uh, they are very, very... They're very happy in their little homes. Uh, you know, post on social media, buying Starbucks. They don't want to leave. They, they like their 15-minute city. If you're going to force them out and force them into a shithole like Africa or what have you, they're going to turn on you because why are you ripping away their comforts? It's one of the big reasons why Vietnam became such a fucking PR nightmare for the government in the first place because they forced the draft and nobody wanted to go fight in Vietnam. 
Yeah, do you really want to conscript an angry citizen? Yeah. Military missed the recruiting numbers by over 40k last year. Yeah. Probably doesn't help the main normies end up not helping out, especially since they end up falling in, sadly enough. Yeah. Well, the Asteid. The problem with that is just the, the endless black pill mentality of, well, fuck it, I need to do this so I can get back to my daily routine. You know, people just get so tired and bitter and angry about everything. And they just kind of inspire a cycle of angry bitterness. Yeah, falling down 1993, yeah. Uh, they also hate Biden because of Palestine. Yeah, as did. And trying to draft a war inevitably on the side of Israel for that? Yeah, have fun with that shit. Uh, unfortunately, it's the fear of being canceled that's scared uh, because of how easy it is people can spread things out of context and black people are like, why do you even try motto? And that's the thing. I don't like why, why even try. You want to know why you fucking try? Because everyone else has to live with you, asshole. You know, my, 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 my whole philosophy on it is... Hey, some five-year-old kid doesn't deserve to die because you're so fucking miserable you won't do anything. Because inevitably, that's usually what happens. People get so fucking miserable, then we read stories about dead kids. And the kids died explicitly because of fuck-ups that could have been solved if people just stood up in the first place. And I'm not even talking about glow-up shit. As stated, the, the solution to all of this is really, really boring. It's just get involved with the system. You know? Get involved with the system. Try to change the system from within. You know, get into these places. Never liked the idea of Trump and Biden as locales. They're both uh, mainly studying you know, mega acts who are fucking the country. There's nothing funny. Nah, I like Trump a million times more. I mean, I despise Biden, so I, I just like Trump. There we go. Because Trump actually gave a fuck about money, and money's important. Uh, Davis came over for two bucks. Draft would kick off another summer of love. Yeah, but everyone across the country would be cheering it on. Cause fuck you. I think Vietnam had bad PR and more to do with Soviet subversion than legitimate public ideal. But the point is, they gave him ammunition for that. Cause a bunch of rich kids who are the kids of baby boomers didn't want to go fight. Look at that Anno. He was depressing Evangelion. Dude picked himself. Uh, and now Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, Shin Kamen Rider. Dude's much better. Yeah. And the draft was the biggest problem in Vietnam War. The Korean first uh, draft just two years prior. Yeah, but that was immediately following World War II. That was like in the 50s. So that was like, what, five years removed or so? Uh, Vietnam was a significant chunk of time later. It was that generation's children. Uh, my kitty Marina enjoyed outdoors and almost caught a bird. Problem was endless. Uh, war is more profitable than straight up defeating the enemy to get drafted but stuck for 40 years on a core uh, milk in the war dry. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a different issue. That's military industrial complex shit. But as stated, that can also be fixed with getting into the system and making sure you're the general that tells these people to fuck off. I'm talking about shit like the, the, the George Floyd summer of love shit with all the cops leaving. All the people just. At every opportunity, leaving companies, you know, with their, their hats in their hands because they're like, I can't be part of this anymore. Because all you're doing is leaving it in the hands of people who, who, A, were trying to get you out in the first place so they could take it. And B, will just absolutely abuse and misuse it. So desperate for people to enlist and now they brought in literal retards. Yeah. Honestly, now tempted to get a job in the IRS grant. It's not a higher up job. It's still a job nonetheless. Uh, good people on the inside helping out those on the outside. Yeah. That's what I mean. How do you think they got in in the first place? I think the issue began when uh, media began romanticizing things like depression and angst. They basically made it look like being a nihilist was cool. Uh, now it uh, completely rotted two gens. That's what I mean. That's why you get out of the nihilist mentality. That's why I don't like nihilism. But people get addicted to it. They, people legitimately get addicted to the idea that they have no control over their life. They have no control over anything they do. They are beholden to the whims of others and, and to the whims of, of... There we go. To, to the whims of much stronger people. To people who, who can just force them to do what they want. Because I'll say, the, the vax mandate with, with COVID shit, uh, with how flippy floppy everyone was around that, if everyone all at once, and obviously it doesn't have to be every everyone, but if you just talk a group into being consistent and firm enough through it, there could have been a lot more examples of people telling their company to go shove it. It's like, no, you're not going to force me to take that shit. Fuck off. But we've had so many people who wanted to be the exception, so many people who, who, who got scared, so many people who just allowed themselves to be taken advantage of. And now, everyone's paying the consequences of that. Alex, for two bucks, JFK did try that. Just saying, I'm gonna still try YOLO. 
Like, you really think someone can go from small-town mayor president to grassroots mean? Huh, good one. The point is to fucking try. The point is to fucking try. I don't know if I hit him. I don't think so. Eh. Alright, he's making it easy. There we go. Let people want to be vaccinated without being coerced. Yeah. Pockets for two bucks. Remember when Alex here shield for AOC? Yeah, and nihilism is corrupt for people who do not understand it. Feel the sad. But it shouldn't be nihilistic anyway. Like, people just need a purpose. People need to find something to live for. Some things are out of your control. Some things, but people have gotten addicted to the idea of everything being out of their control. It's like, no, there's absolutely times you can slam your dick on the table and go, no, we're not going to fucking do that. In fact, the reason society's gotten so bad is because there's a significant shortage of people who are willing to do that. Look at me, Penguin. I'm Donkey Kong. Never know how many people actually agree with you until you get uh, put your thoughts into action. Yeah. That's on station. National Guard units from every state on rotation and security for you ask. All states must participate to lose their highway fund. I think... I legitimately think it should never be a case where it has to be done. The fact that's a question legitimately popping up now is just proof that things have gotten so downright wacky. Like, something about this is not fucking working. Mosh Mosh 2 bucks per year forced to run off uh, election. Wag me, yeah. Some of us taking into account people are also very impatient animals. May expect things to be fixed in a GIF. Not remember, uh, not may remember Jerome wasn't built in a day. Your brain were early. You at least tried and got his rhino opponent into a stalemate. Yeah. You gotta at least fucking try. I know what the other guy is. There would be a change system by completely stop paying taxes and voting. And not many people are going to do that in enough numbers to actually affect anything. Also, not voting? Yeah, no, that, that'd be a million times worse. It's like, no, you, you fucking try. You make sure you're the guy counting the votes. You make sure you're the guy uh, trying to push for candidates. I really don't know where that other guy is. Supposed to be like two or three of them. The whole point of it is actually get involved with the system. You know, you, you actually have to try. You, you want to know the big reason Gamergate didn't go anywhere? The the actual reason. It's not because just in political infighting. Political infighting is what killed it. What actually caused no progress to really be done was explicitly nobody on the Gamergate side was actually making games. You had a few figures. You had Notch, who was sympathetic towards Gamergate. Daniel Varva, who is an industry figure, who is sympathetic to Gamergate. That guy who wanted to do the last night, but the last night never ended up coming out. But they, people were specifically relying on people joining Gamergate instead of people in Gamergate trying to do their own thing. Now, it's it's hard to make a video game. It's hard to do media. It's hard to do anything. But the point is, you fucking try. You, you fucking try. You might be on the boat. All right, I might have just shot a Randy. And action needs a little apathy. Yeah. There's a fine young capitalist. Yeah. The fine young capitalists fucking tried. They got fucked over, but they tried. The problem is, a lot of people just get you know, kind of get wrapped up in a grift. They, they get wrapped up in the easy solution. You know, the, the stream for money thing, the, the endless podcast, the, the, the Candace Owens route of just being a political grifter. That's good for making money, but actually wanting to change something and be a part of it, that, that's harder. You know, that's something that can, that can fuck you over, and people get scared of being fucked over. Have you heard of Mugen Lord? Apparently he's trying the exact message you're saying right now, the whole you have to get out there and do things. Yeah. Uncapitalist also got fucked by his always fucked over. That's what I mean. They got fucked over. But you're always going to be fucked over at some point in anything you want to do. Any field, any job, any any road you want to go in life, you're going to be fucked over at some point. The, the whole point of it is, are you willing to get up from being fucked over? Are you willing to walk it off and keep trying? Because that's exactly what a lot of the people in charge of culture right now that have ruined us have done. They did that. March, March, two bucks may may attempt breaking in translation work. Yeah, fucking do it. Fucking try it. He's going through the Simpson thing with the Brandon Herrera gun laws. He made millions and he won't make a dent in gun rights propaganda. That's the thing, though. That's the thing. You fucking try. 
because you never know what can happen if you are persistent enough. Talk up share for five bucks. Anyone else noticing that everyone's sweetie to describe spice as partners overnight? Uh, yeah, that's that's dumb. That's dumb. Cool the G&G guys. Dang, this looks uh, so bad. I don't want to even grift off it. And honestly, what I don't get is if you hold that philosophy, they never end in absurdism, which is, uh, I understand is essentially life may be meaningless, but find a good meaning. I don't even like the whole life is meaningless. Life is extremely meaningful. You want to know what the meaning of life is? Spreading future generations. Having humans on the planet continue to exist because of us. That whole thing. Uh, quite literally, children are the purpose of life. That's why people who don't have children late in life talk about it being one of their biggest regrets. Uh, that's why everyone can relate to to a movie like uh, like Her or Synecdoche in New York or, or, or movies that specifically talk about the human condition. And a lot of those movies that talk about the human condition focus around the idea of love and having children. You know, that whole thing. Because at the end of the day, that is quite literally instinctual lizard brain, lizard brain shit everyone has. If you fight against that, you will be miserable. Everyone can talk about how they're miserable. Yeah, Cobrain is working hard changing one wording in a decimal at the local level in his mountain town. Uh, as far as I can, uh, I can get his name, person, testimony. Change enough decimals and enough documents, shit changes. As stated, what you're talking about is literally the things that people that have infiltrated companies and gotten into culture have done. They, they have thrown their head against the wall so many times their fucking skull split open, and they still fucking try it. Uh, so his son's having a meltdown on his Discord, and he's uh, getting views like he used to. It's honestly funny. Yeah, yeah, just desserts. Thing is, I think he's still getting like 13,000 viewers of streams. So I was like, motherfucker, you're still well uncomfortable. No, he's spreading breeder propaganda, anti natalism told me so. My last door source is find that lack of, uh, of a shift strange. I really don't know where that last guy is. I think he's just, I think he just doesn't exist anymore. Would price be too high for you to change system through paperwork? But that's the thing. You gotta fucking try. I'm just gonna cap these guys. You gotta fucking try. You keep throwing your head against the wall, because what what is doing nothing going to do about the price of food? What is doing nothing going to change? It will change nothing. Nothing will ever happen, will continue to be the, the state of life. But if you try, there is that million to one possibility it can. Reminder, it's what, like a billion to one odds that someone can win the lottery, yet every year there's someone that does win. It's fucking possible. Them Dragon Ball AMVs didn't raise no pussy. Exactly. Hell, Kim easily made a game about running uh, Wings of Redemption with a truck. Yeah. Let's show Jack means about nothing ever happens. They went to really hate anti nihilism. I saw a few harassing women and now she was having a daughter. Yeah, that's just miserable people trying to spread their misery. Once again, kind of a kind of a massive mindset at the moment. People who are expressly, you know. Well, again, this is Far Cry 2. People, people who know they're miserable, who know they're unhappy, who feel angry about the fact they feel cheated by life, so they're going to try to make everyone around them miserable. You try and you fail, but you might inspire someone that might be able to do it. Exactly. You just keep throwing your head against that wall. If they want to be a creative director for a prototype remake, I only need to try until I make it happen and actually become a reality if I try hard enough. If you try hard enough, I can't change culture in an afternoon like you can tire. You can get a lot of people on your side, like a sweet detective account, spreading the word there's more to do. Exactly. That's why That's why I'm really happy with the direction that uh, Kern is doing. Mark Kern, uh, he's explicitly going like, hey, these people are fucking shady. They're fucking corrupt. They don't believe a word of what they're saying. Uh, if you disagree with them in any way, they will gun after you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like, you know, go, going out of his way to show who they really are as people. Because at the end of the day, that's indefensible. You know, you can get away with a lot of shit so long as you're able to, to convince people you're in the right, but the minute people see what you really are, that's when they start asking questions. Like, what the fuck am I doing with this? Like you, you want to know you you want to know why I, I harp on this so much because 
Look at the Church of Scientology. Back in the day, the Church of Scientology was a big organization. They had ties to the government. They had massive ties to Hollywood. They were all over the fucking place. It was a mainstream cult. A literal mainstream cult. Now you look at today, and they're fucking laughingstock. They, they, they are a complete laughingstock. Nobody takes seriously. Because people just tried. They, they fucking tried to rip them apart and, and eventually succeed in doing so. Because there is, there is a limit to how much people are willing to take. Yeah, it was. Exactly. Is there a news station film of the guy reenacting winning the lotto using a scratch-off lotto ticket and fuck over wins a car? There's a lot of weight in the industry. He's busy trying to get the word out. Uh, devs don't need to be afraid and stand up. Exactly. That's why you don't, you don't, you know, just shove your thumb up your ass and continue the black pill. Nothing ever happens. It's all fuck things. Like, no. You, you make people aware and you make them, you, you, you make them know that, hey, these people are not fucking immortal. They're, they are not immortal. They can't control everything. They can barely control their own fucking people. You know, this is an organization that specifically relies on fucking people over. Look at all the shit Zoe did and how quickly they threw her under the bus once fucking, uh, what's-his-face died, Alec Holica. When, when Alec Holica died, they dropped Zoe like a rock. Uh, she had some, and I mean some, uh, comic book deals to, to write some comics, but those went up like a fart in church and fucking vanished. They, they fucking vanished, and she's never been heard from since. She nuked her social media. It is not impossible to get rid of these people. Are you fucking with two bucks? Keep, keep speaking truth. Yeah. But when the frog's a fallacy, ultimately the frog will jump out of the pot when the bar gets too hot like people do. Exactly. There, there are people who will just always naturally feel like something is wrong. It is just human instinct. You cannot condition people to live like animals. At the end of the day, there will, al there will always be the true believer who is willing to do it and die for it. You know, you have the, the horse from Animal Farm who worked himself to death literally just to prove to the pigs he could. To, to prove to the pigs he was so loyal he was willing to die. And they treated him like shit. But everyone saw him and saw him work himself to death and go, What the fuck are we doing? Like, wh what are we doing? What's the worst that can happen if I take the black pill? Uh, you become a nihilistic faggot. Like, you, you just become a miserable asshole that does not contribute anything. Remember, folks, Christians were once a minority in Rome, as were the Bolsheviks in Russia. Even the woke types now, I'm normally a pessimist, but I like what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. I don't make video games. Have they seen the shit that's on Steam? All you need is some uh, game engine and idea and a good word of mouth and sitting in uh, BMX Power World. Yeah. His name was Boxer. You will respect Boxer. It's nice to do to be in the right place at the right time. If you try fucking hard enough, you can be in the guy in the right place. Yeah, exactly. I don't make video games. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, equivalent of a black hole. Yeah. Well, I'll say it's a thing of, if you think things are already shit, what's the point of not even trying? You know, it's that thing of, you may look like an idiot trying, but fucking try. Being from experience, walling in anger and spite does get tiring. Yeah. We're not meant to live like that. Horse died for the rulers, but sparked a revolution. Yeah. Because once again, people saw what happened to Boxer... You know, they, they saw him literally work himself to death for nothing. Like, he, he just died uh, to prove that he was that loyal. And they didn't respect him. They didn't give a shit about him. Half of them didn't even remember his name. Oh, we're getting shot at. Die for loyalty, but they didn't care. Yeah. Big difference between depressed and nihilistic. Nihilistic give up, depressed are in the dark. Yeah. Shit. Missed. Big man on deck for 10 bucks. Here's 10 bucks from the malaria pills. I don't think that's all of them. Nope. There we go. Even Guts stopped being nihilistic. Yeah. Nothing ever happens in the grander scheme of things, but shit happens smaller scale, and that's something people tend to miss because they think they're an action movie. Exactly. Shit happens very slow and very boring. You know, it's boring up until it's not. That's the whole lesson of it. Take 
There we go. Ukraine wasn't slow and boring. Do you have any idea the circumstances that led up to Ukraine? It's like that, that was literally, what, a 200-year-old conflict that we've been brewing in that region for fucking God knows how long? You generally play a sniper loadout in this game or other shooters? Not really. I just have the sniper for a mission. I just kind of stuck with it. Talk about this year's the 100th uh, de year anniversary of Vladimir Lenin's death. Yeah. Okay, so over there is the outpost. Now, Ukraine was slow and boring. Exactly. It was slow and boring up until it wasn't. And right now the conflict is slow and boring. It's a complete stalemate. Yeah, Ukraine's also another MIC scene. Mm-hmm. I'm saying our intervention in UK was slow wasn't slow and boring. I mean, it kind of is. Ukraine fucked up and they gave up their nukes. Remember, never give up your nukes. Technically, invasion started in 2014. Nah, there there have been there have been tensions in that area for a long time. Ever since the Soviet Union, even before then, like yeah, there was some serious salt in that area. From his Ubisoft and Bethesda games, health is easy. You have to go out of your way to make the game challenging on yourself. It can be, yeah. Faith in the system is laughably diluted. No, it's the fact of, like, what the fuck has the, well, your your faith in the system is diluted mindset ever actually done? Like, what has it actually accomplished for people? It hasn't brought anything good. All it's done is make people want to disengage, and because they've disengaged, they've handed it over to the people they fucking hate. Like, what what's, what's the good outcome of all you're doing is giving the keys to the kingdom to the people you don't want to have the keys? Even the ass focus too much on the president and Congress, not enough on the local government, something that has been way more impact on their day to day. Yeah. Haldemar is a prime example of some dark shit happened between the Soviets and Ukraine that happened in the 1930s. Mm hmm. They already have the keys, they won't give it up. No. There's plenty of places where they don't have it. And guess what? You should probably try to fucking rip it away from them. But no, everyone would rather the big dramatic thing instead of actually attempting to fix things. Yeah, this game when it came out, literally no idea what to do or where to go, and I was being attacked by wildlife and people. I live in Australia, and even I felt it was too much. You think about the whole Diddy situation and being a, a booty merchant? Eh, not that surprising. I mean, he did come from that era of gangster rap. There we go. We're in high tensions there since the Scandi sailing down the river. The current thing, thing started with Crimea's occupation. Yeah. It's sad being a cuck because the other option uh, is by saying no and being mean. Okay. So there we go. Showed you a little bit of Far Cry 2. Eh. I mean, eh. Now I'm actually going to uphold my promise. I'm going to uphold my promise. I'm going to switch back to, to Final Fantasy. Why will it not let me? There we go. Did he do it? I mean, he fled the country. <laughs> If Diddy didn't do it, he sure is, he sure as hell not doing a good, you know, he's not making a good case for himself. All right, let me get my controller here. Hit the therapist speak that's so prominent online, especially with Zoomers. Yeah. Cuck a revolutionary. There ain't no one being a fucking revolutionary, dude. Like, th that's what annoys me about the, the black pill mentality. They all talk like they're fucking second away from revolution, but they're not. They're, they're not, you know. Every single chance people have had to prevent bad shit from happening, they never fucking do it. Uh, as much as people talk about how they're totally prepped and they're gonna they're, they're gonna shoot down all the fucking glowies, no one's ever gonna fucking do that. You know, no one's ever gonna fucking do that. Stop, stop trying to push society to a point where that's going to happen. You you try to fucking fix what you can so you don't have to worry about crap like that. So you don't have to think about crap like that. You know, the 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 basic basic societal contract of just don't be a dick and try to make the world around you better. To me, are fat and lazy. Exactly. We, we saw that with the Summer of Love, where what happened? People ran to the fucking National Guard and demanded they use, you know, live ammunition on people. They they wanted the militarization of the police to make the bad men go away. If you kick off violent revolution, all it's going to happen is the militarism wins. That's why you don't do that. 
Alchemist 1999 for uh, two bucks. People are too selfish and weak. No one's willing to sacrifice for others anymore. World War II, millions of young men died protecting our country. They can arrest one person for saying no, but they can't arrest a million people saying no. Grow a pair of uh, vent rant over. Yeah. Eco for a dollar. Uh, hell, you don't even have to be ironically right wing in order to get canceled. You can be entirely on their side, but if you deviate slightly, they eat you alive. Yeah. Big Puss Ben Shiro for a dollar. Why are Germans so good at war? Because their guns are gas operated. Why the sex slave loses the weight? Uh, because she started intermittent fisting. Uh, what do you call a modern day open world adventure game? An RPG, apparently. <laughs> uh, Zodiac for a dollar. You love this game. Wish there'd be more Africa Sims like this. Also, learning about the period in African history. Crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, Big Puss Ben Shapiro for a dollar. Uh, hey, Lord's got into a Cyberpunk 2020 campaign. On another note, I really do wish they include more elements from the tabletop in 2077. I'm sure it's a serviceable video game. From what I played, it seemed more like Borderlands rather than Cyberpunk. Phantom Liberty made a lot better. Phantom Liberty made it a lot better. Uh, Marsh Marsh 2 bucks will help the deep, uh, deep state turn my room to a sauna. Okay. Now we're going to swap back on over. Okay. Disagree because the Summer of Love became an insurrection when they did that in front of the White House. But that's what I mean, though. You know, that, that, that's... That's what I mean. They were quick to crack that down. They, they were very quick to crack that down. You, you are allowed enough anarcho tyrannism to a point. Then they'll beat you. Then they'll beat the shit out of you. There's banks I'm catching up to where the Invincible show is in comic, basically just Beeline's Bank Quest. Oh, they don't have a budget for 26 seasons. Uh, Ray Faulkner, five bucks for old strugglers. Get sunlight, grow a garden, draw, learn music, uh, learn trade, read a holy book, keep yourself going, uh, something pays off. Yeah. Things need to change for the, the U.S. We shoot itself in the foot. Not even Civil War ain't coming anytime soon. Folks are too comfortable with what they have despite the problems we have. That's the thing. They are able to get away with so much because everyone just copes with the idea of Civil War. People are so drunk off the idea that Civil War will fix everything that they'd rather let it all burn. There is no Civil War coming. There is no big collapse coming. If there is a big collapse, everyone is getting a dick up the ass. Nobody is safe. We saw that with COVID alone. The, the COVID panics alone completely hit everyone blindsided. Nobody was prepared for that. You know, I'm not talking about the virus. I'm talking about the panic to the virus. You know, the, and the virus itself was overblown just for fear-mongering. If shit actually does hit the fan and, and people are caught off guard, no prepper is prepared for that because the actual shock of first engagement will fuck everybody. You know, you, you are not going to be the badass Tom Clancy LARPer. That's why the goal of society is we prevent things from getting that bad. He turned us into fucking you know, it's the, the simple humbling fact of do you really, really want to play out this fantasy? We stand FF7 Lolly kept getting ran over by a huge rock, and now we join our hero. We get counting succeeding in the neighboring states. I don't even think that's gonna happen. As stay we don't, don't look for the dramatic angle. Don't look for the dramatic solution. We just need to actually fix things, you know? Fix things by getting involved with these systems that we've allowed to be completely taken over by the incompetent and the, and the malicious, you know? How many different fucking government positions are solely there for money laundering? You know, that kind of thing. Whether you like it or not, your status quo is and will change dramatically. No, it won't. <laughs> it's, it's never done. Because that's never been the plan. The plan has never been to get people into into these like overly dramatic slave roles. No, it's been to find enough discomfort that people will tolerate, keep it there, and then profit off that forever. Get people just uncomfortable enough to feel like they can do something and that they'll dream of a revolution, but then they won't fucking do it. Because time and time again, people have been hit with that are you going to nut up or shut up moment. And people have always shut up. They've always shut up. Because we're not at that level of discomfort to where they can get away with shit like that. People want a big climax to a situation, though, most likely to be peaceful. Yeah. Uh, I don't want a civil war. I want independent, Cajun free from Anglo Protestant oppression. This is a joke, by the way. Yeah. Damn it. I gotta remember the. I gotta remember that this is fucking weird because I changed it. There we go. Uh, 
Was the wo uh, word woke a fed up for blacks all these years? No. Man, people will think that life is like a video game movie when reality crisis and wars uh, will catch everyone off guard. You aren't Orange Schwarzenegger. Exactly. It's like nobody, nobody's ever going to be prepared for it. That's why you don't want it to be a thing. There we go. Is Tom Clancy ever made aware of Ghost in the Shell? I think he would have loved it. I think he... I don't remember him ever mentioning it. I don't remember what button that is. I say this, that... It's bumper? That's fucking weird. You liked it, I think? Oh, I never realized he even talked about it. The glue larpers are the right-wing equivalent of leftist climate alarmism. alarmism. Yeah, I stayed. I, I'm of the belief of if there was a civil war coming, you would already fucking know. And not in a, well, yeah, we do know. It's like, no, people would, there would literally be like fucking armed gangs on the streets ambushing people from state to state kind of shit. No, but we're not at that level. We're, we're at the basic anarcho terrorism which is a bunch of criminal gangs that are fucking people over, and you can't go to certain neighborhoods and cities, but that's all it is. People, people still have the rich, safe areas they can run to, that kind of thing. Okay, it should be. Yeah, it should be about here, yeah. There we go. People do not ignore it. No, no, I stayed. If shit was about to hit Civil War, it would be a lot more bloody, a lot more violent. We're not at that level. We're at basic street crime shit. Yeah, not right now. Damn it. Our Harper's leftmost stake of the tent. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Way more people died during the 60s. Yeah. It's not basic street crime compared to 2012. No, it is. As stated, that's how you know. So it should be around here. Yeah, it should be around here. Like, we had more violent insurrection. Not even insurrection. But we've had more violent riots in decades past. We've had more violent riots beforehand. Like, the shit we have now is bad, but it's just street crime shit. I don't think telling people to touch grass works anymore when he did tell people to eat dirt. I almost forgot the middle class areas where rich, uh, city rats can't get to. Exactly. Are we near the moment? No. No, not yet. We still have a ways. Uh, why is every p stream now turning to hitting black pillars with a spray ball? They're getting annoying. So that's day. People are addicted to misery. They're, they're addicted to misery because it gives them a sort of uh, persecution complex. It's like, I, I'm standing against it. My my trial of strength is just standing against it. You know, me being the true believer. The, the 1984 thing with Winston, where, once again, Winston didn't actually get anything done. He was just fucking a chick in an apartment. But to him, it was a political angle to do that, because the party didn't want you to do that. Very just on the leftmost stake. You'll be good. Okay. Take to misery. Look at the food stamp changes already, thanks to immigration. That's the thing, though, dude. If you want to fix that... Bitching on social media doesn't do that. It's like, uh, complaining about it on Twitter is not going to fix anything. So get involved with your, you know, state-level government. You know, your local government. Say, hey, let's not have policy that favors illegal immigration here. Make people aware. You know? That kind of thing. Try try the basics before you start talking about Boogaloo. Because right now, it's like... The only reason they're doing it right now, well, at least they're only promising food stamps, is sim uh, simply for elections. There's uh, promising it for election years right after November. They're going to completely forget all the illegal immigrants even fucking exist. Whether or not Biden wins or Trump wins, they're going to fuck them over again. Because they do that every single time. Every single time they'll dangle amnesty in their face. They'll dangle citizenship. They'll do whatever they can to win their vote. Then they fuck them over. Uh, we saw that with the Dreamers. We've seen that time and time again. So it's this thing of you got to bank off their own cynicism. The fact they're like, they're not going to see any of this shit through. Because even they don't want to rock the boat. Uh, people don't understand common rights have been in human society for millennia and Rome was practically their block party. Yeah. Oop. Well, that might just be a 
I think that's just a graphical glitch. I don't think that's anything. I thought that was a materia, but it's not. Who promises the name of the game in American immigration policy? Exactly! Rest your local congressman every day. Their uh, contact, contact info is public. Yeah, they don't want to make the illegal, immig illegal immigrants citizens. They want the illegal ah, It's hard to fucking say that. They want the illegal immigrants to be as off the book as possible because a lot of them are cartel agents. Cartel agents explicitly are not supposed to be on the book because then they can be tracked down very easily. And the whole point is they're supposed to be operating without anyone even knowing they're there. And this is actually going to be very important for... Yeah, I'll do, I'll do water ring. Yeah. This food stamps getting cut uh, that big of a deal. It's, uh, it and welfare purely exist to keep the poor and working class down and getting addicted to come and teeth. Yeah, off topic, but a huge uh, ass roach uh, was crawling up my leg earlier today and it mainly flicked it off and stomped on it. Yeah, roaches are... Oof. Which Pixel Air FF game is your favorite? Which modern FF game is your favorite as well? Uh, six and four. Those are my holy two. I love four a lot. I was really happy I played it. Uh, I played it recently because I wanted to go through the series. Uh, four is really, really good. I don't eat grasshoppers. Do you think voting is real? It's not comparable to Tyson already buying grasshopper from Cricket Farms is. And buy a fucking chicken. <laughs> As stated, take some steps to yourself to make sure you don't do that. Say it five times and fast. Nah, I can't. Winston was just a bad dude. Uh, Beyond stole food from his sister. Waited only to be in his middle age to fight back. Even though he didn't really love, uh, he didn't really love the chick he was banging. She didn't love him. Yeah, as stated, Winston was kind of a bad person. There won't be chickens, won't let you have chicken coops. Then what 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 are you accomplishing by bitching? If you're not gonna buy a fucking chicken, if you're not gonna vote, if you're not gonna do anything, then what do you expect to get done? If you don't wanna buy the fucking chicken, what do you expect to get done? <laughs> yeah. Ever played Shadowrun? I never I, I never really got into it. You have someone saying Yuffie is best girl in chat. Uh, lovely as we Tifa fans know what to do. Yuffie is really good in OG7. I can't even get a gun too because I'm a felon for wheat distribution. You can get a fucking chicken. Is Winston a player? Uh, in 1984, the book, no, Winston's a fucking loser. <laughs> he said a lot of truth. Too much truth. Get him. Favorite Pokemon game? I never got super into Pokemon. I was always more SMT. 97 Discord? Alright, give me a sec. Yeah. Good game, good fucking game. Beat this last year. It's my favorite Far Cry. Yeah, Far Cry 2 is really good. Okay. Yeah, you can buy chickens for like five bucks. Yeah. You can get little chicks. Get a little habitat for them. I'm going to let you plant without buying their seeds using their pesticides. Just grow your own. As stated, all the things you're complaining about, there are solutions to. Solutions you can very easily do yourself. You can get all natural seeds. You can get all natural feed. You can get chickens. This is what I mean by, by addiction to misery. Like, you would rather there just be no answer. And it's like, dude, there are tons of answers. If you don't want to eat processed chemical-filled fuel, or uh, chemical-filled uh, fu feud, fuck, I can't fucking talk, if you don't want to eat food filled with chemicals, get your own animals. Make your own food. You can do it. People have done it. Chicken, eat, chicken can eat lettuce. Yeah. If the HOA will let me have a chicken coop in Texas, you never know. Ask. Look into that. That's something to legitimately look into. Say, hey, I want to raise my own chickens. It's also a source of income. You can sell the eggs. Have to sell the house, I guess, this one's crashing. No, just buy a fucking chicken! <laughs> like, this is what I mean. I give you the very simple... I, I give you the very simple solution. You don't want to eat food covered in chemicals and pesticides? Buy a chicken. Your solution is sell the house. <laughs> I 
Uh, that's on the West End Games, to Wars TTRP uh, TTRPG. I never played it. Chickens are great pesticides. They eat larvae, wasps, and bees, and gross bugs. Yeah. If you have a problem, buy a chicken. It's just that simple. I we shouldn't speak, uh, start speaking in your native language of English so hard, Kraut. Buy the chicken, eat the pants. Yeah. HOA won't let me uh, raise long pids and bipedal sheep. It's over the West has fallen. Video essay is use Bioshock as a gotcha to gamers who don't want politics and game and never mention Bioshock 2. Yeah, last well, day, the, the phrase no politics and games has always been a misconception of what people meant. It's specifically, we don't want dumbass corpo politics. None of the, none, none of the like, half-heartedly throw-in Twitter talking point shit, you know. Nobody wants to read some asshole's Twitter feed. Eh. Pretty sure... Yeah. Okay. Mm. What does Yuffie have? Because she might be... She might also have a diamond bangle. Okay, okay. Uh, what materials do they have? Ice, ifrit, okay. Uh, mm. Okay, that's just a counterattack. Okay, I'm not too worried about that one. There we go. I don't want your dumbass messaging in game. Don't turn it into your soapbox. Exactly. You know what? I'm buying the chicken. Man lost out. Raise my own farm. Get rich while this man jerks off the nearby ditch calling his baby dirt hole. Uh, I think I'd lose the HOA vote. All in favor of letting machine have his chicken coop because he in, he in fear of the uh, impending boogaloo say I All who oppose nay. Last well, day, just you can get a small one. Just talk to your local HOA and just ask. Instead of just assuming they'll tell you no, just ask. Which bug would you want to fight if they're the size of a human? None. They're all terrifying. Like, bug is one thing. Bug the size of a human, that's a whole other. Remember, I had a boss who had a pet chicken. Yeah. Oh, age old saying, miss 100% of the shots you refuse to take. That's the lesson at the end of the day. Like, I outright say to people, it's like, hey, stop just abandoning the system and, and actually try to fight to change it. And then everyone wanted to be like, no, but... It's so over, though. It's like, all right, then it's going to continue to be over because you actively refuse to try. Like, you know, it's it's that thing of, like, yeah, the house is on fire and you won't pour any water on it. And you're wondering why the house is still on fire. There we go. Where is your chicken? I have cats. They'd kill that chicken in a minute. And we have local butchers that we just buy our stuff from, and it's a million times better than store. Joys are being faggots. Just built a coop in a room in your house. Yeah. It's like one, six, two for two bucks. That's positive thinking. Exactly. How convenient. Yeah, I know, right? Local butchers are awesome. Uh, when it comes to natural organic chicken feeding, be expensive. They really have, rarely have it in 50 pound bags. It costs twice or more uh, the uh, amount of regular feed. Yeah. <laughs> This is now the chicken party stream. Uh, bug says the humans. What type of bug would you wife who uh, I'm down for caterpillars that have multiple holes? Caterpillars are also scary. It's so over and then stop bitching. Exactly. Going to the butcher shop makes me feel sick. I don't like going in them. I like butcher shops. We have one in Bardstown that's actually really good. That's some of the best breakfast sausages I've ever eaten. California won't allow residential chicken ownership, banned for being E. coli risk. And then don't let them know you have the chicken. Caterpillars are cute, how dare you. A caterpillar the size of a human, though. Think about it like that. West will rise, billions must buy chickens. Does not have a chicken, I need to fight HOA, Tyson lobbyist, military industrial complex, or I can raise up other Americans who've had enough when the time comes. The military industrial complex does not care if you buy a chicken. 
Got another enemy skill. Uh. Mm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. You know what? Added effect is nice, but it's not as nice as enemy skill. So I should put enemy skill there. Uh, around 1313, five bucks. My HOA told me to take down my USA Army flag. Uh, they came to my house after I came back from drill. Tried to take my flag, told me to fuck off. No CPs. Yeah. <laughs> Dick Cheney himself will burst through my door if I purchase a chicken. How do you feel about snake waifu? Wamias well, are okay. I liked Mia from Monster Masume. She was nice. I think military would do with the chicken is buy it at 30% markup. Yeah. Can't buy a chicken. West has fallen. This is what I mean. You know, it's like the 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 addiction to to misery. The the addiction of it's so over. Nothing I do matters. It's like that's why you're miserable all the time. You got you gotta not do that. You know what you need to do. You need to start, go start chuckle farming right now, so you can mock the guy in chat. The biggest chickens. Uh, been watching Archer, and honestly, the last good season was the Hollywood. I love the running joke of everyone thinking. Uh, Everyone thinking Veronica Dean was hot in Shanghai Moon. Is that a stream lab? Alright, give me a sec. Eh, there we go. Because remember, this is this is the weird one. I got a fucking... I mean, Far Cry 2 was also kind of weird. So I gotta click off this. He turned us into fucking killers! Uh, so I remember for a dollar. My grandfather's chicken coop in his backyard. Stop being a uh, bum shit. Also, it's a gun on his right. Age of apathy. Yeah. That's that's the frustrating part. Everyone sees it's worse. Everyone everyone sees things are getting worse. Everyone knows they're getting worse. And instead of being willing to actually stand up and try to prevent the flood from destroying everything, they would rather sit down and watch everyone else drown. And it's like, dude, the water will come for you too. You know that 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 is the annoying part of it. People are genuinely offended at the suggestion of like, well, can you at least try? If I buy a chicken, I can't bring myself to kill it. You don't have to kill it. He eats eggs. Eggs are good for you. Eh, come on. Try to remember the steps here. When I can, I'll get myself a chicken coop. Yeah. I'm killing us slowly with a comfortable status quo. So why do you want to be part of the status quo? Buy a chicken. I, you can get bunnies rather than chickens if you can't get any chickens. Uh, just make sure to get some with fat. Yeah, but then you have to kill bunnies, and that sucks. At least chickens are, like, dumb enough to where they'll basically kill themselves. Buy a dairy cow and get fresh milk, then buy another cow to get beef. Well, at that point, you, you're straight up just specking into a farm, so you need territory for that. Chickens, you can get, like, you know, a small little coop. All right, there we go. Uh, Proxy the participation trophy generation, of course, they don't want to try. Oh, I think I have to go down the middle now. I think that was it. Like I said, try to remember the steps to this. This one's a little weird. Girl, uh, Boogie's girlfriend broke up with him. Again? No monster for two bucks. Best chicken breed. Go. I don't know the breeds. I just know the colors. You have red ones. You have white ones. You have black ones. Werner Her uh, Herzog fucking hates chickens. He thinks they're dumb. Uh, prove him wrong. I mean, to be fair, chickens are really dumb. Uh, Velma Season 2 was announced again, and people on Twitter still blame it on hate watching, even though no one knows if the numbers came from hate watchers. No, they flat out said Velma had two seasons. Uh, the contract for the show was like two seasons. Good dog to protect the chickens from foxes. Mm hmm. Bunnies are cute, besides, you have a bunch of young bunnies and a funny slang where it comes from C comes to play. Rabbit meat also isn't good for you in the long run. It's not good for you alone, you have to supplement it with other stuff. Uh, vegetables, uh, spices, things that can kind of add to it. 
Because, yeah, rabbit starvation is a real thing. We have Comet. Comet is a very good materia. In fact, I'm actually just going to slot that onto somebody. Uh, I might slot that onto maybe Tifa? Yeah, gravity, because gravity, in my opinion, is not really that worth it compared to it. Balanced key to life. Mm -hmm. Every 80 hate watch season one will do the same season two. I don't think so. I think a lot of the responses to Velma was just, like, pathetic. Like, everyone everyone just kind of saw it and said the same thing. It's like, this is just desperate. I've had mutton, bison, and elk meat. I really like lamb. Lamb actually has a lot of flavor to it. Ron Freeman complaining about stuff they can't do is the real fatherless behavior. They don't want to be comfortable on long enough to do things they need to do to reap rewards. Yeah, because that's where the black, uh, black pill mentality comes in. They think absolutely nothing matters. Everything's already fucked, so what's the point of even trying? Are you doing a stream tomorrow? Uh, I thought about it with the fact that, like, I wanted to do Far Cry 2 tonight-ish, and then we do 7 here. Uh, I might do a dedicated 7 one tomorrow, but that depends if I'm doing D&D &D tomorrow. Because if I'm doing D&D &D tomorrow with Art Bro and all them, I'm gonna be spending my night there. But if they take a break for whatever reason, then... Yeah, I might do 7. I might do it. Damn it. Yeah, I did hear that people still want to continue gaslighting the narrative of Velma getting season two. The hate watchers' fault, like you said, contract seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez, this scene. Yep. A lot of my chickens walk around my house sometimes. It's really funny. Chickens do move really funny. They're goofy animals. I stay dumb as shit though. Have Ketseth and uh, Rebirth combo synced and comet together, so get a freak meteor summon with a cost of ATB or MP. Jesus. <laughs> well, good things require effort to accomplish. Well, I'll tell you, the, the biggest thing that gimped Gamergate was explicitly people not making a sort of parallel market to video games. To where there are people who are expressly pro-GG making video games. They allowed the industry to fester with the exact same people in it who just relied on their connections to weather the storm. That's what happened. Comicsgate at least started off as a little bit different, where people were making alternatives to comics, and that went down a whole other fucking grift in itself. You strip air of all her stuff. We have not touched her since Midgar. We only used her when necessary. I have information that will lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. Hey, the man Skyver stagnant comments game for his ego. Eric July is at least trying. He, he, he's got something out the door. How come Cloud didn't save Aerith here? Is he stupid? Damn, I guess we have to bang Tifa. I guess we have to name our daughter after after Aerith, you know. I love Sephiroth just standing there. <laughs> you can see his mouth's open, he's just like, oh. Pippa Stream ended and I came here to this. Oh no, what a nightmare. Watch your Watchmen video. If I could, I would make the main chick a hypocritical racist who spouts white supremacy while holding similar views for her own race. Like one of those where she talks about how evil white supremacy is meanwhile she lives in an all-white neighborhood. That could have been something. Love how Sephiroth kills Aerith and he just goes, anyway, come to my house and party. We got hamburgers. And I will say, the music that plays during this is a good theme. I do like the theme. <laughs> I 
Aerith should have bought that chicken. <laughs> Damn it, Aerith, if you just bought a chicken, the West wouldn't have fallen. Sad reports that Froth does not T-pose in Rebirth. Aww. Earth theme is so good. It is very good. If only you bought that chocobo, Earth. If only Earth told her HOA no. My first time I played through this, even knowing this would happen, going in, knowing it for years, I still cry when I got this part. It is a good scene. It is a legitimately good scene. I remember its weakness, so here we'll sense. And yeah, the, the theme plays even during the battle. Where Sephiroth fucked up, realized that Aerith's a Citra, an ancient human connected to plant. Shut up! Spoilers! The real enemy was the HOA cloud. Sephiroth's the ultimate Doom poster on Twitter. Yeah, weak against Earth, but it has Reflect, so he wants to be a bitch. And yeah, the reason we put that Water Ring on Yuffie is because this enemy has Water Attacks, so now Yuffie just steals, feel, uh, just steals health. Okay, do Cure again. She just needed to fight the HOA. She would have lived. I've had Rebirth Cloud cope super hard and refused to believe Aerith dies. To be fair, I also coped and was like, nah, they totally won't kill Aerith. Okay, is his... I'm gonna risk it. Is his Reflect gone? It has been a few turns. Okay, no, it has not. That's not good. She's a nail bat, uh, has high crit with Clem Hazard and does 6k damage. I don't have the nail bat though. At least I don't think I do. Uh... Yeah, fuck it. We'll see what happens. This is probably going to be a really bad idea. Uh, there's a mod for FF7R that replaces President Shinra with Mjolnir MK5 and Barrett Mjolnir MK6 trip scene Halo 1 Chief with Golden Grave 1911. So they're dead on Rebirth. From what I understand, they do play it as if she's dead. Which, not gonna lie, I fully anticipated, no, nah, they're gonna keep Aerith alive. But I guess, no, they are actually gonna commit to Aerith dying again. Aqualong, he already has, yeah. Hehehe. <laughs> they killed Aerith and Rebirth as state. Apparently they are playing it straight. They're, okay. They're playing it straight up until, until Zack shows up. <laughs> You still play Factorio? Not as much as I, I did. Just because it's like, yeah, yeah, Factorio can be addicting. One of the trailers for this game to talk about one of the game will focus on the party's relationship with the Earth, instant death flag at that point. I know, but Remake did a lot of subversions with people who died. So I fully expect, because I, I still have not beaten Rebirth. I don't know the ending of Rebirth yet. I don't know the full context of Rebirth. Uh, I don't know if, if Aerith is actually dead, dead. Or if it's a thing where they're keeping it ambiguous again. And yeah, Yuffie, Yuffie breaks down in tears. She's sad. Normally avoids bowling, but inevitable anyway, though, committed for the most part. She's a spirit who can't leave the surrounding area around the temple. Ah. Uh, 
Uh, speaking, did you see that baby Zach fan art me, Kugaka? <laughs> Zach stuff is just fan service. Zach and Cloud team up happens in a live stream when you fight Sephiroth again. Oh, okay, so Zach doesn't actually play that much of a role. After all that, Arbiters of, of Faith are you the stubborn fans? They they backpedaled. It's as if adding a poor jab at the fan base and element, a multiverse element was a bad idea. Well, we don't know. It's not over yet. <laughs> we still have two parts to go. Wait, she died? Yeah, OG7, she's dead. Like, she's actually dead. So you're gonna Zach, anyone gonna watch season two of Smiling Friends? If the reveal is... If the premiere is actually real. Yeah, it's more it's definitely more a spirit deal. Okay, okay. Which makes sense because she is an ancient. Check Discord, okay. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty good. Like Phoenix Down won't work dead. Yeah, she's dead. There's not one big shit post. Yeah, right. Like, where to bury your cloud? Well, it's the temple of the ancients. It's specifically the temple of her people. So you're letting her go back to her people to become one with the planet. As they, the the people who go like, oh, FF7's about environmentalism. That is like one tenth of what the story's about. Yeah, much her death is a big part of gaming. I'm surprised she didn't die considering the remake is the first time people are experiencing a lot. I know, but the way the remake ended with keeping some people alive there, I was convinced, like, oh, they're going to build up to, to Aerith not dying, and that's going to be the big deviation. I need to sit down and play FF7, and I, I own it, but I still haven't touched it. It is very, very good. Very, very good video game. You think Aerith is a fat ass is the way to contrast Tifa's top heavy existence? The Mass for Hard Darkness inspired an anime check out genocidal organs by an American special forces dude searching for a man who caused genocides around the world. Eh, yeah, sounds like it, yeah. That sounds a little bit hard of darknessy. More of a twist of Aerith lives in the remake, really. Yeah. I understand if they want to keep her dead, uh, due to the fact of, like, hey, they still basically want to tell the same story as OG7. They've only really done remixes at this point of certain elements. But I kept hearing, like, oh, the ending is going to be completely different from OG7, so I thought, okay, yeah, Aerith lives. It hurts OG7, too, uh... Hurts on OG7 too because she was one of the best party members in Battle and she was cool. I loop personality and stuff and the rest of the party. Yeah. I stayed like I, I was pointing it out when we uh, played earlier parts of the game. Like, Aerith is just a really fun character. She she is, you know, very plucky and likable. Uh, the people who call her boring, it's like, well, I think they've only really seen... I think they've only really seen her design and kind of assumed from there what she acts like. Where, where it's like, oh, I bet she's very, like, shy and meek. It's like, no, she's very plucky. You know, Aerith has more of a sense of humor than a lot of other party members. But, you know, people don't really know that because maybe they ha don't have... Maybe they don't fully remember Seven. Maybe they only watched Advent Children. You know, they, they don't know the actual full context of Seven. Aerith absolutely had a dump truck under that dress, a total wagon, the whole damn bakery back there. Also, Aerith was left for dead, uh, was left de dead for good in OG story because of the Carrier's mother died not long before during development of the game. Yeah, yeah, because uh, that's kind of the whole inspiration behind her death scene. It's kind of when that developer had to come to terms uh, with his mom dying. That's kind of one of the the big one of the big themes of Original Seven is the idea of loss. You know, everyone's kind of lost somebody. Uh, Tifa lost her father in her hometown. Cloud also lost his hometown along with his mother. Uh, Aerith lost Zack. Uh, Barrett lost his friends and he lost Dine. Uh, Red 13 lost his parents. Uh, Cat Sith almost lost his friends because of what he does in the story. Vincent lost his, the woman he loves. Uh, Sid once again almost loses somebody because of his actions. 
Like, loss is a very heavy theme in 7. Which makes moments like this very funny. I want to get that Triss, though. Ran into the game as humanity be lost entirely. Yeah. Yup, 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 yup. Yup, 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 yup. <laughs> yeah, Cloud lost his dignity at the barber. There we go. Hop, 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 hop. Uh, Cat Seth Reeves lost his job, a whole section of Midgar, thousands of people in his faith, and we believed in. Yeah! Still can't believe Hojo Cuck Vincent. Yeah, the fact Hojo has any game is genuinely one of the more shocking elements of Seven. Theory is that in Remake, there are two coexistent parallel realities conflicting, causing all kinds of whack shit, hence the Whispers trying to keep shit in order. Well, I mean, like, it's not even really a theory. <laughs> From what I understand, uh, they flat out confirmed Advent Children happened. Advent Children happened, so the ending is Sephiroth went back in time to fuck with Cloud, and Sephiroth going back in time is the events of Remake. It is explicitly Sephiroth breaking the timeline. So the Whispers are fighting Sephiroth trying to get everything back in order, but Sephiroth is too powerful and is able to fight them off. Cloud lost the virginity to Tifa under the airship with everyone watching. <laughs> Aerith dies. Cloud, oh no, anyway, loose chest. Seth maybe the last laugh, uh, but Cloud has been tapping Seth's mommy hard with his big sword. Taste the pain, Sephiroth. Got enough time travel and time compression FF8, yeah. Except for all shitting all over the time stream as time genies have to sweep it up. And the Zack timeline. Yeah, Zack has his own timeline too. And that makes things even more complicated. Because in his timeline, fucking everybody died. Like, Zack's timeline is exceptionally fucked. There we go. Uh... Whisper is just a live stream in black is the advent as uh, astigmatism. The big uh, big thing is that Aerith did the FF10 dead into the temple. Yeah. Mm. Zach can't catch a break. He really can't. He really can't. Okay, bolt armlets. Yeah, go right. Uh, is Aerith giving us the cold shoulder? Ghosting us? Timeline split into separate ones now? Sorta, of, yeah. So what's going on with FF7 story? Uh, it is after Advent Children. Advent Children happened. And because Advent Children happened, you have a pretty major deviation in events. Uh, the final cutscene from Rebirth uh, shows how they get material onto equipment, and it wasn't just what I expected. Uh, equipment just absorbs it. It's weird. Huh. But did Dirge of Cerberus happen? Uh... I stayed. I haven't even gotten to Vincent in Rebirth, so I don't know. Did they ever conflict anything with Dirge of Cerberus? There we go. Tiny Yuffie. Yeah. Yuffie impressed them with being small. And she just hides in the fridge. So time paradox? Basically. It's, uh... Basically a time paradox. That's why the Whispers are a thing. The Whispers are there trying to fix the time paradox because Sephiroth is explicitly breaking events that, you know, should not be happening. He just vore Yuffie? He did, in fact, vore Yuffie, yes. Or 
Remek had Nero and Weiss in the Yuffie DLC. Yeah! There we go. Uh, Remake did have Deep Ground in the DLC. Okay, okay. So yeah, they, they did not conflict at all then. Is seeing Evan Children Cloud the only good thing is seeing Omni Slash animated? Yeah... Evan Children had some problems. Because it doesn't want me to go right, okay. And this way it is then. Uh, entire meta commentary remake is that it's remaking FF7. Yeah, it's it's literally in a meta sense remaking seven. I'm feeling that FF7 remake has the Buster Sword up. Uh, is that the Buster Sword is the best weapon all around, especially when upgraded? Yeah, kind of is. Yeah, because like the the thing about the weapon system is you're only really using different weapons so you can get their skills. It's fucking weird. Uh, Apocalypse Fair, five bucks. Team Four Star and Gel. Apocalypse don't get nearly enough shit for doing uh, going on a dub's route. Yeah, I think it's because people just don't really care anymore. <laughs> they're like, oh god, they're still doing things. Uh -huh. Our beloved Chocobos. There we go. I think he's stunned, so we can get some free hits on him. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, stream gave me motivation to draw again. I'm going to draw uh, Naoto surrounded by pet chickens thanks to you. Yee. Just buy the chickens, Naoto. Just buy the chickens. Also, in the Shinro Mansion side quest, they do set up the Hojo AI from Durs. I think part three is going to play out Durs stuff and conclude it. Oh, okay. That would make sense, because, like... As much as Vincent isn't really that important in the grand scheme of Seven, it's kind of fucking weird because he has, like, direct ties to Hojo. Like, direct ties. Ah, oh, damn it. You will buy the chickens. I don't think Remake Trilogy will cover dirt stuff. I think it'll save that for DLC spinoff. That would make sense. Several did all this shit. Cloud didn't buy the jackets. He didn't get into chocobo breeding. The reason you don't get into chocobo breeding is because that'll cost you like thousands of hours. You have to force the chickens to make incest. It's disgusting, disgusting minigame. Terrible minigame. Yeah, evil Pippas. Of course, I say evil Pippa, but evil Pippa is a little redundant. What's the reason for the mutant Moogles and Rebirth? I think it's just their typical redesign, because Final Fantasy will try to redesign Moogles every now and again, and sometimes they're pretty good, other times they fucked them up royally. Do people eat chick uh, chocobos? Are they tasty? They're literally just giant birds. Like, in Final Fantasy 15, I think, like, one of the items you can get at restaurants is literally just fried chocobo. Sephiroth was a chicken man. Aerith was a pork lass. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven timelines, Last Order, Crisis Core, and everything before Seven. Advent Children, Sephiroth timeline, Fuckery, Crisis Core, Seven Remake, Advent Children, then whatever fixes the mess. Yeah. It's gonna be weird. Uh, Dirge heavily implied Vincent is being Sephiroth's father. Yeah, yeah. I stayed. Uh, Dirge is kind of weird. Dirge is weird, and if they want to factor it in, they kind of have to address it. Oh, it tastes like big chicken. Yeah. I'll say this time and time again, FF Tactics Advance was, was peak Moogle design. They were really cute in that. And that's all you need in a Moogle design. Are they cute? Talk about breeding, I mean hyper-specialized racing ostriches via disturbingly shallow gene pool. Anything to get those golds. 
The common easy game manga got announced as just Brutal Legend covers a reference to Fire and Ice by Yingve Malmsteen. Hmm. If it is even a tenth of how hype Bastard was with its heavy metal fantasy, I will be very happy. I always make eggs before work for the protein. Yeah, it's good for you. Alright, now we go in here. And Sephiroth and Vincent do look pretty similar, not surprised. Yeah. I mean, I say the the whole thing in this is that it's it's more like Vincent's just tied to the woman they use for the experiments to create Sephiroth. But yeah, Dirge of Cerberus apparently just flat out confirm that well, confirm, quote unquote. That uh Vincent is sort of kind of Sephiroth's father. Uh, Arthur Tomlinson for 20 bucks. I am back and once again asking about uh, MAR on the list. Working through a whole bunch of shit. whole bunch of shit that's been waiting for a while. Because I'm going to do Apocalypse now and then I got another coin flip. And the coin flip will be between... The coin flip will unironically be between two that were uh, waiting for a while. Which I say, but you know what I mean. There we go. Now we have counterattack. Wait, what do we have for material here? Okay, cover. Uh, you wanna know what's funny about me? I figured out the fucking Pokemon timeline down to the date. FF7 timeline's nothing to me. There we go. Uh, where Ganks is a really cool looking sword. It is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, fuck it. I'll give her Titan. She can kind of be our, our summon specialist. And I gotta give Tifa her equipment. Uh, never forgive Halo 5's Lock vs. Chief scene for bastardizing a fight between the best of the best sol uh, super soldiers. Shout out to 7 Remake for doing that shit as well. Yeah. There we go. Giffy Spawn in the pick disturbs me. Mm. Yeah, I'll give her a fire. There we go. Uh, you already talk about what happened to Grimdark? Yeah, sadly, a stomach cancer. It's fucking sad. Like, legitimately depressing. Cloud about to go snowboarding. Yeah. Okay. Now there's a specific set of steps we gotta do. I'm trying to remember what they are, though. Because, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get the snowboard from the kid, but you gotta do other stuff first. Ever dog breed? Minor poodles. Uh, not gonna lie, I'm, I'm really enjoying our Frenchie, Iggy. She, she is a goofy fucking dog. Winston's pretty good, too. You know, good old English bulldog. I'm going to rob these people. Eh. Visit Aerith's mom yet? No, we're we're kind of in a we're kind of in a part of the story where we're kind of stuck up here in the mountains until we are able to get free. When we get free, we're going straight back to Midgar for for obvious reasons. And I'm actually going to go ahead and stay at the inn. Is your mom afraid of chickens? No. No, she's not afraid of chickens. I mean, obviously, if they're walking up to her and, like, fluttering their wings, that's one thing. Like pit bulls. Pit bulls are pretty cool. If you actually chill with your pit bull, they're, they're usually pretty nice. You are right about the Troon Pipeline. Finster it came out as a transit college. Look at that girl cock now. Jesus Christ. What the hell's going on with people? It's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Hmm. 
That makes Griffith not an apostle. Uh, is the amount of people he sacrificed or was it destiny? No, he's a specific kind of demon. Like, he is a god hand, as in a general of demons. Alright. Come on. There we go. Finster was always a weirdo, so no shock there. Yeah, there you go. If you own a chicken, you will not troon out. Yeah, there you go. Buy a chicken, it solves everything. Alright. So we got the snow... We got the map. I'm trying to remember the other steps of this, because it's... We get the map. We gotta get the snowboard somehow. I think we have to talk to certain people. Oh, this is important. Okay. Uh, prepare for a massive lore dump. <laughs> Mom got a pit bull, the sweetest thing, had uh, her for years. Her name is Angel. Yeah. Ooh. It is literally a lore dump. So a matter of time until they perfect artificial wombs, start putting them inside trans people. Uh, you want to show those kids to be glorious? <laughs> That's on silky chickens. I really don't know the differences between chickens. So does this lady look familiar? <laughs> she should. <laughs> Silky chickens are the one with fuzzy feet. Oh, okay. Ever get nervous when your family members comes down and calls you by your real name and everyone listening can hear? Nah, I'm not worried about that. Posted Silky in the Discord. Oh, okay. Oh, they're the really fuzzy chickens. Oh, okay. Cloud Nation as well, make them and Sephiroth and Airfall have green eyes. No. Sephiroth and Cloud are because of Mako exposure. There there is a difference. In fact, about myself, when I was about four or five, the family friend had a pit bull who had puppies, and when my mom and I were at their house, they lost me. I was sleeping with the puppies. Oh, that's cute. So, that lady in the video was talking about the arrival of the virus. Uh, the virus that <laughs> infected people and turned them into monsters. If that sounds a little familiar, it's because it's talking about Genova. Uh, the Genova is a virus from outer space that came and went to war with the ancients. Because the ancients were the guardians of the planet, and they did not want Genova to take over and kill all life. So to know infected the ancient term and the monsters uh, roaming about today, yes. In other words, the thing. It is literally John Carpenter's The Thing. FF7, FF7 stole Halo lore. I was uh when I was three, I pet a family friend's golden retriever and got my nose bitten off. Jesus. 
Golden Retrievers aren't usually the type to do that. Our movies to have some take inspiration from. This would be very bad if Genova got into the live stream of the planet. Yes. Uh, Genova's whole thing is it goes from planet to planet and taking over all life. Sephiroth, especially in Remake with kind of how they're teasing it, uh, is being manipulated by Genova to do its bidding, and he is under the impression Genova is the rightful rulers of the planet. Even though, no, it's not. As stated, it's kind of interesting how Remake's doing it, because Remake is explicitly tackling it from the angle of Sephiroth is also being manipulated. Uh, maybe maybe I'm crazy, maybe Rebirth doesn't address it, but it kind of looked like that's where it was going. Where even Rebirth wasn't immune to the... Well, not even Sephiroth and Rebirth was immune to the call of Genova. Got to bring up last stream, but I got a new dog, Golden Retriever's really friendly with my Shepherd and Black Lab. Yeah. So these are Aerith's actual parents. Are your parent coughing? What are you talking about? Everyone's asleep. But yeah, these are these are Aerith's actual pan uh, parents. It's Elfana, and I forgot what the doctor's name is. How'd Genova get created? As stated, it, it's an entity up in space. No one really knows where it came from. It's, you know, horror. Professor and Error's mom banged. Yeah, Professor's her father. You ever watch show Love, Death, and Robot? Her later season sucked. All around, it was just kind of like a way to spec short films. Basically like, hey, here's an idea we have. We don't know if we're actually going to do anything with it. I know one of the later seasons, it was literally just a ripoff of Attack on Titan. Like, that was one of the short films. It was literally just uh, a society under attack by a race of giants that ate people. It was literally just Attack on Titan. Pretty sure I hear smoke detector beeping. That might be what it is. No. We put batteries in ours. Doctor's name Gast. Yeah. Genova's the other angel from Evangelion. Got thrown to a fence point in a fight and got a scar on my cheek. Kind of looks like you say from 5D's brand. Isn't Genova an alien parasite like Lavos from Chrono Trigger? A little bit, yeah. Japan really liked the alien parasite idea from the thing, which to be fair is pretty cool. Yeah, Professor Gast. Yeah, that was his name. And yeah, Hojo. Hojo's the one that killed Eris' family. Professor looked out with Eris' mom, yeah. Well, he has a smoke detector. Is he black? The issue is not if you own a smoke detector. It's that you can't tell when the battery needs to be replaced. Everyone should have a smoke detector. It's very crucial to have one. See how Topic is selling Pippa shirts? Yeah. Jorge, when you tell them that when the surviving Marines could stay behind it, it's a space problem, they can't get off the Corvette anyway. It's too referential. None of this has anything to do with Reach. Hojo is arguably more evil than Sephiroth. Yeah, Hojo's a piece of shit. Like, he's just an asshole. You ask that doesn't know where the chirp comes from. Yeah, right. Yeah, they they shoot Eris' father and they experiment on her mother to death. Sephiroth, you can argue, was groomed to a Hojo as a groomer. Eh, sorta. It's more of the fact of like 
Sephiroth, when he learned of his origins with Genova, embraced it fully, and arguably became under its influence and became a thrall. And... yeah, okay. So there we go. Yeah, that, that's the lore dump you need. So, uh, Aerith's parents were a guy by the name of Professor Gast and Olfana. Professor Gast was actually uh, researching the history of the Cetra and the Ancients, and fell in love with Ilfana, who is Aerith's mother. Uh, then Hojo came and killed them, and, and Aerith was forced to live by herself and was raised in Midgar, as we know. Sephiroth is technically Griffith. He does look a lot like Griffith. And the funny thing is, this was completely optional. You never have to you never have to interact with this at all. Shoving a boot up Hojo's ass. I think he dies in like some unrelated way in the story. I think he gets killed when the weapons attack Midgar. I think. Kind of wish Ansem kept the Hojo like uh, roots as the Kingdom Hearts went on. Yeah, the the whole like evil researcher that gets involved with the downright Eldritch. And it's the Turks! He's the boss fight? Was he? I don't remember. Which one was he? You do have a late game Hojo fight. I don't remember his fight at all then. Shit. You kill Hojo and you can help Vincent get his revenge if you have him in your party, uh, which is canon, by the way, according to Dirge. Oh, okay. End of this, too. Okay, okay. If I'm in the second to last dungeon. Okay. Fake fan, fake fan. Turns to a monster with Mako. I don't remember that at all. Maybe when we get to it, I'll be like, oh shit, now I remember. But at the moment, I'm like, I'm completely blanking on his fight. Holy shit. Maybe the scariest thing Winston could say to you if he spoke to you in perfect English. Probably wears my balls. Where's my balls? Because we're going to have them neutered soon. Turn stuff to a Hojo Genova hybrid thing. <laughs> so you dodge Elena and she ends up rolling down the hill. It's really funny. I'm a Midgar during a raid. Uh, transforms from a monster thing during phase two. As to, I, I just flat out don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny how, like, Rebirth tries to make Elena more cool, but at the same time, she still is a fuck-up. Meanwhile, in, in OG7, she is just a fuck-up. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be interesting. First, we got to get the snowboard. I'm going to come as you middle of the night with a pair of scissors. Okay. Oh no, it's prime girl failure. You gotta love her. Yeah, I really like her in OG7. She's a lot of fun. Uh, she's basically the Yuffie for the Turks. She's trying so hard to be to do her job, and it's just not working out. I think we can just take it. Or we gotta talk to him first. Okay, yeah, we just take the snowboard. That was it. Turks have a little chinita balls. Can play Bosch on stream at some point? I think we will eventually. You, you kind of have to. It's one of the all-time classics. 
Take my mom to the ER on voting day, so I ended up forgetting to vote. Uh, there's some kind of late voting thing, or am I screwed? Uh, I think you have, like, the best possible excuse to be like, hey, I didn't vote. It's like, you gotta take care of family shit. Family shit will always take precedence over anything else, because it's like, they're, they're your immediate people. Okay, the Turks are not down here. Actually play System Shock 2. We did before. I might continue that campaign, though. I did kind of get in a rough corner in it. So I'm literally going to cure Cloud's depression. No, Cloud's depression has to be cured through sheer existential dread. Did you ever play Bioshock Infinite on stream? All right, listen, that's a that's a step too far. That game sucks. I haven't played FF7 since the last deploy. I gotta play it again. It is very fun. And yes, it is quite literally FF <laughs> FF uh, X. Okay, wrong button. Okay, so it's literally just the A button to jump. Oh shit. Oh god. Snowboard! Oh god. Oh god, this sucks. Okay, I can just use the D-pad. That'll help. Yeah. Yeah, snowboarding. Oh god. They shitty America, bad game, and you'll suffer. YouTubers cure clouds depression. Can the Bao Bao twins alone fill my dark soul? I'll mosh for two bucks. Get tricky. Oh, God. Cloud's not feeling very tricky at all. We have a bad franchise. Can ruin, I believe a bad sequel can ruin all franchise. Nah, if the franchise is good, there's always going to be ups and downs. There can be really, really bad parts of a franchise, but people will still love the good parts about it. If one bad sequel is enough to kill a franchise, it wasn't much of a franchise to begin with. I mean, how look at Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim 1 is such a perfect little movie. Everyone loves it. It's inspired a bunch of stuff since. Uh, people have loved the art direction. They love the shameless love letter to mecha anime. And they had Uprising. Uprising, uh, you know, Pacific Rim Uprising is ass. No one likes it, but no one ever talks about it. They talk about the first movie and why it's so good. So then his spiky blue hedgehog snow pass, uh, snowboards past saying, hey, hey, hey. I'm trying my best here. Oh god. Oh fuck. Oh jeez. This is just this is nonsense. This is bananas. Oh fuck. Eh. Ow. Eh. I don't think the balloons actually... Like, I don't think the color of the balloons actually matter. It's just a certain amount you collect. You can get, like, a special item at the end. Like, I think if you collect as many as you can, you can get a materia? I don't remember what type, though. Ow. Damn, Cloud, why do you suck? Shut up. Shut up. Ow. I'm snowboarding for you, Aerith fumbles immediately. I'm hitting every single tree. Soldier Jeans lets him tank an entire tree. I'm not very good at the snowboarding in this. Kingdom Hearts 3 is his minigame. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2 also had it. Kingdom Hearts 2 really pushed the skateboarding aspect. It was weird. <laughs> You're gonna make him lose his depression by calmly hitting trees. Uh, course 30 GP, safety, uh, BT course, 100 GP, all materia C course, 300, uh, crystal bangle. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I knew it was some kind of reward for it. The 
It's for getting through head trauma. Yeah. Who placed all these trees in this forest? Game Wars 2 uh, did come out in 2003. That was a big year for skateboarding games. It, yeah. It wasn't like a big aspect of it, but there was a skateboarding minigame in 2. I remember that. Because you used to be able to do that. Like the, the first one you do in the tutorial when you're playing as Roxas and you have to get all the little errands done around town. I used to be able to do the, the skateboard one so fast, it'd literally be like maybe like 3 seconds. Of course, that was back years ago. I don't even know if I'd still be able to. Sephiroth, it was me, Cloud. It was always me. I made you fumble the snowboarding. Suddenly I have the George of the Jungle song stuck in my head. And in canon, Cloud did in fact crash the snowboard. Okay, I guess that's another another glitch instead of an actual. Uh, okay. So now we gotta figure out where we're at in relation to everywhere else, and then find our way to the top of the mountain. Fun fact about that: actually, if you keep working at earning enough money in the tutorial, you can get a free AP uh, plus extra money. Oh. Do you prefer Batman the Animated Series or Superman the Animated Series? I would prefer Batman. Oh God, Cloud Tifa's paraplegic. <laughs> Sephiroth or Virgil has the best drip? Uh, Virgil has the most style. I think Sephiroth is the most iconic. George, George, king of the jungle, strong as he can be. Watch out for that tree. <laughs> Gotta figure out where we are in relation to. Batman rules. Superman's cool too. Yeah, that's about how I about how I view it. Ever play custom role for the GameCube? I've not. You feel looks like you can deck and fly. She cli fly across the room after you did. She is a ninja, so she'd make you pay for it. Okay. Who's the best girl on Terraformers? Blonde American bitch with glasses cute. Yeah, she was pretty good. Everyone rode on Cloud's back as he was snowboarding. These Sephiroth got an awesome theme where they say, I was tired of it before I ever heard the theme of how much people gush about it. Yeah, One Wing Angel. I, I will admit, One Wing Angel is one of those where it's much better when you're actually in the fight and how much buildup there is to the fight. Turn in for the night. Yee. Could Virgil take on take a supernova? Uh, I don't know. I mean, him and Dante are basically immortal. But that kind of raises the question of, all right, at what point does basically not apply? Okay. So we're at a point where it kind of splinters off. I think if we just go north and then north again, we should be at where we need to go. I don't remember if there's anything we need to grab. I explained to my parents I was totally not gay for me to get V2 or plushies. You're a grown man getting plushies. It's already pretty gay. <laughs> Oh god, it's Yuki Ono. Come 
Come on, Yuffie, kill him. Okay, couldn't kill the dragon, which makes sense because he is flying. No, oh, you don't know that. You don't know that. All right. Tifa, don't even think about making a move on my man. All right, so as stated, I think if we go... I will see. I think the cave is a shelter. So we're going here and see if we can save. Okay, no, but it does... Oh, shit. Don't document of a man. It's pretty gay. Shota stole it. That's my defense. What in the fuck? <laughs> then you're both gay. Uh, you Silent Hill 2 music a lot in your vids, yeah, you haven't made a video on Silent Hill. I plan to. And that's one of those that it's been on the list for a while, so I might try to cover it. My big thing is I gotta figure out how I want to tackle it. question is, who's Gary? The man who bought the body pillar or the man who stole it? I didn't buy it. I came from a uh, sponsor. Mm. I want to save that. Uh, Borocho Gato for five bucks. How do you think the extras in the movie would go if Dante was the demon doing the possessing? Well, Dante wouldn't possess a child. He's cooler than that. Oh, fuck, Cloud. You know, ultra respect for single vids on each. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Uh, it's like... Because, I mean, they are big games with a lot to them, so I don't want to just, you know, be willy-nilly about it. Favorite okay, Silent Hill? Mine's two. I love... Uh, mine's one. Mine's two. I like two. Damn it, Cloud. Nope. I should make a video on Venture Bros. I do like Venture Bros a lot. That is a very good show. It's sex Store, your only sponsor? No, for one, it's a website called like Anime Dakimakura. Uh, I think that's the name of the company, literally. Uh, and no, I did Raid Shadow Legends before. It was only the one time, though. He was like, I'm about to knock this bitch out. Nope. There we go. Everything a sponsor had you, you made the deliberate choice to get the Gintoki pillow. Because I didn't want to just do a basic, uh, you know, basic bitch one. And I was like, oh, everyone would do a Stolfo, or everyone would do this, everyone would do that. I was like, no, I'm going to be the man. I'm going to be the man and pick Gintoki, the, the one true one. Monster does sell sex toys. Yeah, that's true. How much did Ray pay? Like 500 bucks. I was still super small in comparison. I just burned that limit break line. I didn't want to. Oh man, I would have gotten Kenshiro. They didn't have Kenshiro. I didn't want to burn that limit break because as you can see, Meteor Rain's pretty fucking powerful. Uh, custom rep on GC was great. Its character portraits are some of the goofiest art. I love it. Post a few in Discord. Oh, okay. Kind of gives me uh, Ace Attorney vibes. Wonder if some, wonder if similar people worked on it. So someone actually sponsored Bonehead like Lollygus Egg on my face. Yeah, he runs fucking sick and carry you long for a Omni Slash. Yeah, it's fucking brutal. A lot of the, a lot of the limit breaks when you know how to use them are actually really helpful. We got the strike body pillow. They didn't have that. You get your real estate lessons as you wanted. Nah, I stayed. I'm still working as a, uh, I guess, assistant agent in the office, or however you want to put it. 
And it's been carrying me. I think it's pretty helpful. Uh, Goosey and Fat Fake Minus. I like Venture Bros, but went predictable with a whole Nihilistic Roots similar to Rick and Morty. Not really. Uh, it only really did that with Dean. Like, Hank actually ended up kind of being the counter to Dean in a lot of ways. A contractor? No, I'm with a company. It's just more of like office assistant than actual agent. To all have PC, should I get Mori or Crony Case? That's up to you. Do you actually want to tell people you like Mori? Do you? There we go. I think Lois Island is right for a bad track and sponsorship, at least I hope it isn't. There we go. Anyway, did we go in the right direction? Should be. Uh. Yeah, yeah, we're whereabouts, yeah. So, yeah, just this way. Like I said, I don't remember if there's anything we can grab that's special. You gotta wear a tie? No, no, we're, we're pretty laissez-faire about that. Just basic, basic khakis and button-up shirt. For Rachel, you uh, should pick the most violent and depressing flicker show you can. I did. I did The Northman. Game being nihilist ass that slept with his brother TF. Yeah. Nope. There we go. You will not trick me. Okay. I think this I think this is where we're supposed to go. Yeah, it is, because it's a tent. Okay, that's an all materia. Me. Maybe I'd consider going on ECAP. Nah, I kinda like being by myself. Like being by myself means I'm only beholden to to me, and it's good. I don't remember if this is the good direction or not. Ugh. More is great. Uh, chat just doesn't know good shit. First episode of Kana Super Season 3 leaked online. Sorry, sir, you have to mute you. Yeah, no, I know. People, people talked about it earlier, so it's like, that sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. You play Souls like? Yeah, I mean, I, I play Souls games. Uh, I grew very, very exhausted of the, the absolute glut of of endless Souls games, as I'm sure a lot of people didn't really want to admit to. But yeah, and I'm pretty sure this is not the direction I'm supposed to go. So. Okay, so we're back in the drift. As a P is good. It is, but as stated, I just grew exhausted of Souls gameplay. Okay. I'm genuinely trying to remember how to do this. I uh, miss that VTuber that masturbated on stream with her toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, VTubers are a strange, strange bunch. You know, Northman got to find which theaters are going to have Nosferatu. Yeah. Nosferatu might be really, really good. Feels like a good moderation, not when they're spewed out like they're going out of fashion. Yeah, I grew very, very tired of them. I 
feel like that description matches at least 20 VTubers. Okay. So let's go forward. Uh, will we be able to use a tent? No, we cannot. Okay, so this segment we can't use a tent. Here we go. Okay, okay. So yeah, just head as north as you can uh, and address the fact that it's like fucking around. Okay, so save. I think he'll let us rest here. Pugs in the snow, are they remember us? You ever played Remnant from the Ashes? Uh, Souls like about guns? I played a little bit of it. It was, eh. Boy, it is what it is. So he gives you the tutorial on how you're going to climb that cliff. It's also Easter. Happy Easter. That is true. It's now... Okay. It is weird because it's not... It's still the 31st of March, but people are just calling it Easter Sunday. And I don't really know why, because isn't, isn't Easter the first Sunday of April? So wouldn't it technically be next week? I really don't understand how they're doing it this year. I really don't. Because I was under the impression of like, oh yeah, it'd be April 1st on Sunday. That's why we're doing it on Sunday. Don't question it. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. What are, why are we doing this? And yes, oh man, I know how to do this. Yeah, that confused me too, because I realized it wasn't April. Yeah, it's like... He started a specific calculation. But it's like... It's the first Sunday in April. So just do it on the first Sunday, which would be next week. You know, because like... Because really, think about this. Okay. So... I think Easter follows the Jewish calendar. Well, that, that's telling us to have Easter in the middle of March. I was trying to think we've all been uh, skedaddled here a little bit. Easter, what's Easter? All I know is today is Trans Visibility Day. Easter falls on the first Sunday after the full moon that falls the uh, spring equinox. It's supposed to be the first Sunday of April. I think everybody just goes for the equinox so they can say whatever the hell they want. Because I hear it too, it's like, oh, first day of winter is like a specific day of an equinox of a moon. I'm like, fuck you, it's when it starts feeling cold. When it starts feeling cold, that's winter. You don't need no goddamn equinox. It's whenever it feels cold. Yuffie's cold dance, yeah. Easter was also in March in 2016. The first of April that year wasn't even until Friday. I'm starting to think we make this shit up. I'm really starting to think we just make these rules up as we go along. You can fall anywhere between uh, March 22nd and April 25th. I, I just think we make this shit up. I think we do. This is an actual canonical controversy in the early church. Yeah, I think, I think it's made up. I think the side that lost should have been the one that won. Then they hanged everybody who argued otherwise. Well, if it doesn't get cold, no winter. No winter. It's officially no winter. You get second summer. Easter's on the day our Lord died. Nobody even knows when that is. You know why? Because we keep changing the fucking calendars. Nobody knows if it's April. No one knows if it's March. You can't figure out when Jesus died because no one can figure out what day it was. My friends going to Japan next year. Any advice? Uh, if you're in Tokyo, people will be able to speak English decently well. You'll definitely run into some where they'll have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, but it's not going to be too much of a problem. I'm taking into account people running into everything are satanic. That is true. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. I 
It was April Sunday, because fuck you. If you're dancing, stay warm. That's how you stay warm in this segment. You have to... You basically have to just move your body, heat up, you know. Typical thing to shake off the chill. Rules exist for a reason. Can't just throw them out like nothing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Because April is the first Sunday of... Uh, no, Easter is the first Sunday of April. There you go. That's the rule. That's what you follow. If you don't like it, you get hanged with the rest of the pagans. Every election year is a leap year. Has been, yeah. Fuck it, celebrate next week. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna go around the neighborhood, dress as a rabbit, hide eggs everywhere, and wants to bitch, I'll be like... Now is now is fucking e uh, Easter, because the first fucking Sunday of April. 120 is hot. Yeah. I mean, you're in the middle of a fucking snowstorm. You'd rather be hot than cold. Just don't forget when talking to retail employees in Japan, it helps talk with a Japanese accent when ordering things. That or just point, <laughs> just point. They 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 understand body language more than anything. I don't know why they started attacking each other, but I'm not going to complain. The rabbit is a pagan. And you know what? Yeah. I think, I, I think we need to hang all the pagans. To be fair, Jesus' birth, uh, birthday is not clear. It's close to the Jan 5th. We're not talking about his birthday. We're talking about the day he died. Got a Dragon Star mod for Blade and Sorcery. Spent the last hour and a half swinging that around good times. That was a bunch conspiracy I absolutely believe in. Listen, okay, it'd be hard to find conspiracies that aren't true. <laughs> Miss America's stream today. It was pretty good. He was talking about Mersh, uh, one of the guys he has beef with. Specifically how Mersh accused him of not having cancer, and so Mecker just brought out all of his fucking medical records. And it's like, yeah, I sure am faking it, right? It's like, oof. He died on Friday and resurrected Easter Sunday. And no one even knows when Easter Sunday is. Because we allowed all the fucking pagans who can't even keep their goddamn calendar straight in office. This country used to be something. Isn't medical records supposed to be kept secret? I mean, if it's your personal ones, you're allowed to divulge them as you see fit. It's your information. Now, if Medicare's doctor decided to talk about them publicly without Medicare's permission, yes, that's a very bad thing. That's a HIPAA violation. Damn pagans and their made-up myths, they can't even keep their own mythology straight. Hurts to hear about Jim's heart attacking dusty bones, yeah. Poor guy. Uh, I'm on the right leg of the Caribbean right now. Stop caring about politics. Be happy. Yeah. Hearing Medicare say he doesn't want to die screaming hit hard. The the sad part to me was he was talking about how uh, basically he wanted to have kids. He wanted to have the, the all-American dream of just a house in the suburbs, a wife and kids and all that. And he can't have kids because he doesn't like the idea of dying and leaving them without a father. So hearing that part was like, Jesus, that's kind of fucking depressing. Apparently, Ralph Dox is oncologist, yeah. Take a piss on Stonehenge, show those pagans.
Just be a good country and start letting people, like, like let non-Easter Sunday people in. I was about the man to be happy. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's part of the reason he really doesn't like the, uh, the sector crowd, I guess as they're called. Uh, because he kind of sees them as a collection of guys that are squandering something he never has. Because he, he got, like, exceptionally pissed off at that Ralph audio. The, the, the Ralph audio where Ralph is, like, threatening to beat the shit out of one of his wives. Like, Medicare actually got angry at that. And I think, I think some of it is the fact that, like, he kind of views those guys as, as people who are squandering something he literally just can't have. You know, I mean, he, he still has his wife. He's still married to Jade and all that, but he's literally streaming as much as he can and trying to earn money. So she is set up with a nest egg after he dies. Uh, he never had children with her because he was terrified of the idea of dying when his children were super young and traumatizing them. So when he sees Ralph threaten to beat the shit out of his wife or talk about how he doesn't want to be with one of his kids, he literally sees that as like an insult, you know? It's, it's that thing of like, motherfucker, I would actually kill to have what you have and you don't even know what you have. You know, that kind of thing. We're watching uh, Medicare back from his first uh, Internet Aristocrat, seeing him now. It's no wonder he's pissed at Ralph from here, throwing it away. Yeah. No demographic Ralph hasn't pissed on, yeah. be a sad day when Jim passed on for the mortal realm. Yeah. I can relate to Jim. Yeah. That's day. I think... I, I think he kind of shows just... How normal he is compared to a lot of people in that circle. Where, like, his dream was just having a, a, a house and, and wife and kids. That's all he wanted out of life. Back, back in the old days, he wanted to be a fucking teacher. You know, that kind of thing. So kind of seeing everyone around him just fucking blow up the way they do and legitimately waste a lot of opportunities in life. Like, yeah, no wonder he felt disgusted. At least now he's in remission. That is true. Power of Spite's keeping that old man alive. Called my, mo uh, called my mom and uh, told her I'm not coming tomorrow and we'll be coming next Sunday. <laughs> Said he hates fake conservatives, the guys that go around uh, praising God then beat their wife and pay for prostitution. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're they're fucking frauds. They're, they're fucking frauds and they're fucking grifters. They, they they don't believe a fucking word they're saying. I stay they're going around doing drugs and whoring and gambling and all this shit that, you know, they, they suppose they're like, oh, that's so evil, it's so horrible, the Bible says not to do that, and they don't fucking live by that. They don't give a shit. It's like, yeah, it's insulting. Like if you're if you want to go drinking and gambling and whoring and all the all the usual you know vices of man, then you can do it. Just don't be a dick about it. Just don't go like, oh well, we still gotta live that that heckin' trad life. It's like if you're not gonna live by these standards, why are you demanding others do it? You know. It's like. If you want to drink and gamble and, and do all this fucked up shit, just be a party guy. You know, at least do like what Dick Masterson did. Say what you want about Dick Masterson. At least he's been honest about that lifestyle for a while. He just wants to, to drink and have fun and party. <laughs> you ain't know, if you don't die overdosing on Xanax. I was like, trad shit's a grift. Yeah. On the other spectrum, those damn pagans and the use of uh, hypocrites proof the Bible is a lie. I mean, the Bible's a theology book. You can't disprove it. It's like disproving a fucking self-help book. It's like, dude, you're kind of missing the point here by miles. All right, now I gotta remember how to do this. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should be enough for to hold on to another tent. <laughs> Still not really sure what the sources actually do, because it never feels like they have much of an effect. So modern pagans have rationality. People who care if they have kids are called breeders. Yeah. I hate SFO, maybe Jim having, hating the idea of not having kids. Well, as stated, Jim wanted to have kids. 
Like he wanted to have kids. His thing is he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to leave his family if he dies early. You know, if he has kids, he is leaving his wife to raise them alone if he dies. Like he very much wanted to have kids, and once again, you can see he's very protective of kids. Dick Masterson's hair started to gray. It's really weird seeing an old man try to be the party guy and talk all the pussy he gets and drugs and alcohol he takes. I mean, it's not a lifestyle you're exactly supposed to live by. Source rate of stat by one point. Okay, okay. That's kind of why I never felt like they went anywhere. So obviously if you have a bunch of them, then maybe you can do an effect, but, you know. Also, Jim said he had to watch his mom die from an illness, so the audio of Ralph telling his mom to fuck off to her to take her to the hospital also probably got him angry. Yeah. I would not recommend boozing and whoring, but people don't listen to me. Yeah. Drag gifters are some of the people I hate most on the right. Where they're the ones that ex time and time again will get in the way of getting shit done. Where they're like, guys, you need to live by the heckin' Bible. They, they do it right now with the fucking culture shit. Uh, they they want to go after VTubers and say, well, that's heckin' degenerate coomer bait crap. You should just read the Bible and nothing else all day, and they don't fucking do that shit. You know? You, you can't win the culture war if you actively tell people to disengage from culture. You need to cheat to get a lot of sources or W item glitch for it. Okay. I mean, I'm not too worried about it, because you can you can beat the game just playing normally. Jimmy's doing great uh, sacrifice who doesn't contend his potential kids to a father's behavior. Yeah. That walls types are a plague, yeah. In theory, he still could. He could, but as stated, it had to be something where his health takes an extreme tick up. And he, he's also scared of his kids getting it. He outright said that one of the reasons he he didn't want to have kids with Jade is he's terrified of whatever health issue he has affecting them. Because apparently they still don't know what's really wrong with him. They know he has cancer, but they don't know what caused it. They don't know if there was any genetic factor to it. So he's terrified of the idea of having children that would eventually suffer what he's dealing with. I say the, the recent stream was pretty revealing in a lot of ways. Where you do kind of get an, an insight to the guy beyond the character where it's like, shit, that's actually really sad. The only person who attacks VTs I know about is Dev. Sargon does it. Tim Pool does it. They do it. They do do it. Adopt? Well, as stated, he doesn't like the idea of leaving his wife alone to raise a kid. He's tackling it from the angle of, I'm probably going to die. Uh, my bad man, the guy who runs Kiwi Farms. What is that in reference to? I'm not, I don't remember. One of the few good things that can uh, come out of designer babies of not abuse, making sure fathers and eggs defects don't pass. Yeah. Hope he survives in Breeder. Worst fate a woman can get is raising a child alone unintentionally. Yeah. Yeah, being part of Lady's stream with Jim hurt a lot. Yeah, I stayed. He, he was very honest about a lot of what he's dealing with, and that's kind of what makes it sad. You kind of get hit with that realization of, like, shit, this dude is dealing with something that's a legitimate existential issue. You know, because everyone knows they're going to die. Everyone knows they're going to die. Everyone is aware of their own mortality. You, you, don't, you don't start the game without understanding there's an ending coming. But he's dealing with it from an angle of he could literally die next month. That's something that does hit you, and is like, holy shit. It's called an autoimmune disorder. Cancel itself. Uh, can appear on your kids in the future, but not guaranteed. Autoimmune disorders are died directly to genetics. Yeah. My friend's perfectly fine with not having kids, and while I don't agree with it, uh, it's her choice. Uh, someday it'll be a parent. Yeah. Jim has cancer again? He's dealing with a lot of health issues. Uh, imagine if Jim has kids and then his kids get all the diseases he gets. Also need to take into account, uh, that his mom had it and he has his kids could get it. Exactly, he's scared of that. I'd say that the, the new stream really was revealing a lot about his mentality and it's genuinely kind of tragic. The remarks uh, acknowledge he, uh, would likely die for medical seem really dark, like the guy's giving up on life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jamie sadly a coin flip, yeah. Much better excuse not to have kids and oh, but overpopulation. Well, that's the thing, like, Medicare in his latest stream, that, that's why I keep emphasizing this. He, he's not tackling it from the angle of, oh, well, I never even wanted kids anyway. Like, he's literally saying, I wanted to have them, but now I'm too scared to because I don't want my kids to suffer. That, that is legitimately fucking sad to think about, you know? Once again, I think it's I think it's what motivates him to be so, you know, I guess aggressive against, like, the, the guys he's arguing with, where he sees them as people who are directly, I guess, squandering something he just can't have. You know? Jim is grabbing even if he won, them, uh, his body's still broken down to try. That is true, like, he's dealt with so many different... Uh, you know, therapies and treatments, like, with the amount of chemo he was on, it's very well possible he can't even have kids anymore. He might actually be sterile. That's why Jim is aggressive. Yeah, I mean, like, Estate, you could tell in the, the Ralph stream, I was going through the audio with, uh, with Ralph screaming at his mom and his wife and, and talking about his kid and all that. Like, he was legitimately angry. He can, but he's denying himself. No, I stay. The, the the state of what he is, I I think he legitimately probably can't even have kids. Fellow well, laughs and uh, said all that. He still laughs, enjoys family and friends compared to that to Ralph or Merce. That is true. Sad part is that every human uh, is born with cancer cells. Just needs a red trigger for them to activate. Cigars and cigarettes uh, can take chemicals to activate them. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, everything's full of carcinogens in some way. So I don't see his dreams, he can just uh, freak me out and just make me feel like a doomer. Do you pray for him? I mean, he seems like he's doing alright now, at least in the sense of he's in remission and he feels strong enough to stream again. But it is something where hearing him talk, you definitely do can't you do kind of get that humbling factor of like, holy shit, this is what this guy's dealing with. You know, once again, kinda 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 makes a lot of your personal problems, you know, sink into perspective a little bit. Where you understand your personal problems are a problem, but there are guys out there that can legitimately be staring at death. I guess finding an icicle? It is for a puzzle. That's why I don't see his stream. Oh, yeah. Because the radiation treatment definitely can't have kids, makes you infertile. Yeah, it's definitely a risk. Uh, radiation and chemotherapy. That's why they outright have you, like, you can consent to it, to where you can give them a semen sample to be stored. In case you are rendered infertile by the by the treatment, so you can at least still have in vitro kids. If he's healthier, medical would just stay, uh, say sane shit and make you humble, yeah? Cooked meat is for sane for being cooked, yeah. Right about the stream about his mom breaking down until she died, damn, yeah. Buy a hat if you want to help Jim and his wife. I bought a hat. I wear that hat. Make sure you tell your family you love them, yeah. Did he do it? I have no idea. I don't think so, because that's the, the way he was talking, he was legitimately terrified of the idea of his children inheriting the genes he had that caused all these problems. There we go. Not Josh or Josh and one kids. This isn't about Josh. This is about Medicare. Buy a hat for your hat. E. Even though the in vitro does not have a very high success rate. Yeah, it's a very specific procedure. There we go. So he's literally, I don't want my kids to endure my curse genes. Yeah. I say, it's not an excuse he pulled out of his ass to where he didn't want to have kids and he's just making something up. No, he flat out said he wanted to have kids. His goal in life was to get married, have a have a house in the suburbs, and then have a family. But now because he's dealing with all these health issues and they don't know where they're coming from, whether it's a genetic thing or what have you, he's legitimately terrified of the idea of his children inheriting them. Haven't seen Dune 2 yet? No. I plan on going sometime in the next few days. Eh, 
There we go. Been going through treatments for literal fucking years, yeah. Still could adopt. Well, that's the thing. He, he doesn't want to leave his wife behind to raise children if he is going to die. There you go. Yeah, doesn't want to leave the kids fatherless. Exactly. Uh, my grandfather got prostate cancer and they caught it as it was beginning, so they were able to kill it. So that's not surefire cure, and I worry about that myself. Yeah. Yeah, Medicare, I would throw, overthrow a small government for what you have at your dream like shit. Yeah, uh, that does kind of seem to be his mentality with Este, the, the kind of sector crew. That's why he's been railing on them so fucking hard. Because he kind of just sees them as like a bunch of dudes who just squander this. Because, yeah, I mean, Ralph treats his family like shit. Merce treats his family like shit. Like, they, they, they treat these people like just fucking garbage. I think Enhanced Sword's a weapon. Let me see. It is. But it offers, like, yeah, two more material slots, but it's not really worth it. Yeah. Browse Agent have filmed in first place. Can't be that easy. It is. It is. Are these guys still silenced? I forgot about that. Won't lie, it's a legit fear I have. Uh, with a bit of fear of getting diabetes, I know since my great-grandfather had it, and well, it just happened to my aunt. Well, so long as you watch your sugar intake, you should be all right. Piece of shit can get families. What's our excuse? That's always been my my whole thing in life. You know, it's like yeah, but we'll actually let us have our turn. But the the whole point of the fact is, people around you who are just absolute pieces of shit, degenerate scum are all out doing things. They're all out doing things. They're all out there trying. So what's our fucking excuse? What what is our fucking excuse to at the very least not even attempt to fix things? I mean, everyone can can scream all they want. I know people try to try try to get uppity when I brought up that point of like, hey, when the George Floyd thing happened, everyone just kind of took tail and ran. But at the end of the day, it's true. It's true. Everyone has their chance and their responsibility to actually fucking try and get things done. Worst part is it's not even that strong. Holy fuck. Okay. We might have to redo this fight, but I know immediately how to solve it. Assuming I have it in my inventory. Okay. Well, chess, uh, well we're just chatting with everyone spinning and being dizzy. We, we got a status effect by this thing. Because to be fair, this is a higher level monster and a dick. Bring back a uh, frog. Uh, it's weak to water, but I don't know if I actually have water, so fuck it. Throw Kujara at it. Tifa's a frog. She is a frog now. All gym stuff apart. Merch is just pathetic. Even a middle-aged man playing with cats on Twitch at midnight. Yeah. Know the Marlboro? No, I know the Marlboro. I just forgot his name. Yeah, it's a higher-level monster. Usually when it shows up, they're... kind of assholes. <laughs> Like, they changed from game to game. I know Final Fantasy 16, they were a flat out boss fight. Good Yuffie Frog. There we go. I remember Knowles, I want a family post at infamous own a farms, but still mock him for it. Being high level monster and game devs being cunts. Nah. Yes, no, kinda, maybe. Like, the way you fix it, let me see if I even have it. Yeah, see, we, we were safe because we had the frog small. Uh, should be... Oh, we may not have it. It may be on someone else. Uh, you're supposed to have the headband. Uh, because by this point, the headband was kind of a running joke in all the games. I think they call it the head ribbon. Where it protects you against every status effect. Uh, every status effect, you, you are fine and it can't hurt you. Do I have, like... 
Touch cross level numb. Mm. Alright, I might have to invest in accessories some more. Yeah, water ring drains water. I think she has because she has fairy ring. Uh Eh, fuck it. I put fire ring on her. At least it nullifies something. That's just the ribbon. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Headband, ribbon, or different items. Okay, okay. But yeah, point is you had the ribbon, which protects you against every status effect. Uh, every status effect in the game, so you're able to avoid shit like that, and you can basically trivialize boss fights. Some of the meta certain fire uh, Final Fantasy games are just flat out getting the ribbon. I know fire... Uh, I, I, I'm trying to say fire... I don't even know why. Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy 2... You want to get the blood sword and the ribbon and the final boss fight for one party member at least is literally a, a fucking... Like, they can't die. It's that level of broken. That's on sweet and sour chicken. It's pretty damn good. Pretty damn tasty. Fire Emblem's a different game. Yeah, I don't know why I kept trying to say Fire Emblem. Earth dead. She is in fact dead. Can you load up FF6 Remaster for stream as I want to see if something works, if you have a save file for Will the Ruin, go into Integar and see if Snare inst uh, Insta kills it still. I don't have it on PC. And even if I did, I have to start a new game. Because, as I said, I don't have it on PC. Everybody in general is such a powerful accessory. Either don't obtain until late game or do some serious side questing. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. You have two or three weapons throughout the game. Uh, that plus Angelic Ring. Auto revive. Makes him damn near unkillable in a lot of context. Oh, yeah. Fire Emblem A, Craven, some strategy RPGs. I would love to show you guys Symphony of War. I really, really enjoyed my time with Symphony of War. Yeah, later versions of FF2 only have one blood sword and it's missable. Yeah. Because the blood sword, as stated, is like fucking broken towards the end. When Jim dies, there's going to be a gold rush to claim his throne. They, there kind of already is. Everyone keeps trying to do their own, like, low documentary thing to live up to the title of Medicare, but. Then people end up censoring the word faggot in all their videos, which kind of defeats the purpose. This stuff is really annoying, and it's in every Final Fantasy. It is... ish. Uh, FF6 is where it actually starts being a thing. Every Fire Emblem game before that, it's only really one or two things. Like, it's actually really hard to miss stuff in Final Fantasy 1. Why is Cloud squatting refuse to fight or something? No, he's just poisoned. It's just the animation for when they're poisoned. No one can. I cannot. I'm not sick or smart as Manicure. That is true. It's like just... He just represents that style or that, that generation of uh, of YouTube where it's like... No one can replace him because that generation is gone. That's on cookie dough. It's okay. Okay. So I went the opposite direction. Keeping in true delusions like Keffels and fucking Chris. Yeah. Tales of series here. Uh, there's so much missable. You don't consult the strategy guide. Yeah. Can you win her from the monsters? You can, but I don't see a reason to. You can win these fights. There's monsters in Final Fantasy VIII as well. Yeah, it showed up around... I want to say five. I think five is where the uh, the big plant monster guy... I always forget his name. Uh, Marlboro. I think five is where it shows up. Do you cook it slightly, or is it people who make flavors that are close to cookie dough? Depends on the mood. Depends on the mood. Because if you cook it slightly, that's just having really soft cookies, and soft cookies are really good. Generous YouTubers came from those era, died a long time ago, in the age of grifters who played safe. Yeah. We are wearing Corpo Tube. I brought first period in Final Fantasy 2? That must have been one of the rare enemies then. I could never fill out the compendium. Because, like, if you want to fill out the full compendium in Final Fantasy games, that is a shitload of hours. Because some enemies are, like, insanely rare. Some of them will literally only show up once. Cookie dough ice cream is so fucking good. It is pretty good. These got into a Final Fantasy game. Which do you choose? Uh... 
I'm trying to think of one where the story mainly revolved like personal issues and not really end of the world stuff. <laughs> to where I could at least keep my head down and survive it. So maybe... Maybe eight? Maybe? Because that, that's the one where I'm trying to think of like, alright, was there actually dire world ending con uh, consequences? Oh, okay, okay. Four. Yeah, as long as you're not one of the towns that gets really bad luck. Ever think of streaming FF10? I definitely will eventually. Yeah, 1.6 chance to spawn on the second floor of the caves in Mysidia. That's why I never got it. It has time compression. That's pretty dire. But how does it affect me personally? Fuck it, FF6, no balls. <laughs> You're a fucking animal. Am I get a chair? What's best for the back? Get an office chair. Don't get a gaming chair. Get an office chair. FF9, so I can go Super Saiyan. It had an end of the world scenario at the end. But could I keep my head down and let Squall handle it? That's the big question. Because if Squall can take care of everything, then I don't have to worry. I mean, that's just what Squall's getting up to. As long as you don't live in a city, FF12 would be cozy. Uh, village life, hunting, and farming, yeah. Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, also one of those where uh, it's around personal issues and judges that keep you from dying. Just don't go into Jagaz, ghetto. Choose farming, only your opinion. Sheep are cute as fuck. Uh, chickens are pretty cute. Sheep are pretty cute. I think goats can be pretty cute. You have chocolate, uh, do you have chocolate eclair or orange chocolate chip ice cream in America? We don't have orange chocolate chip, but we do have, uh, we do have chocolate eclair. Really, eight? Don't have a chance to tit fuck Tifa in seven? Seven has a lot of, a lot of collateral damage. I'm trying to think of what would, what would be the least collateral damage to where I can just keep my head down. Like, definitely no 15. 15 is like a fucking dystopia future at the end. 13, all of reality ends. Fucking, uh... Six, you have Kefka. Five is also pretty bad. Five also has some pretty grisly moments. At least in the sense of, like, yeah, people die. Uh... Four, you could potentially? Because that's mainly just Cecil and his friends. How about 14? 14, there's so many warriors of light, you could probably keep your head down. Just stay out of Ishgard, because Ishgard's fucked. Remember chocolate chip orange popsicles at our town swimming pool? Uh, my dad was stationed in Germany. I say, we don't have chocolate. We have, uh... We have orange... Orange cream, which is like orange and vanilla. And I think we may... Like, we have chocolate orange candies, but we don't have it as ice cream. 15 gets present and dystopian fucked up in the latter half of the game by the uh, first half's lighthearted tone. I think that's kind of the point. The, the whole point of it is it baits you in with the the road trip dude bro hangout thing. And then you get the end of the world. And it's like, oh fuck. And the end of the world is like dire bad. Now granted, they kind of spoil elements of it uh, with that one side cave you can go into where the the demon Lamia is begging for its baby. And it's kind of implying that like, yeah, the demons are humans. But to be fair, that's kind of been a running concept anyway. Eh. There we go. Never tried Fanta Cake. I have not. That actually sounds interesting. I've yet to play FF10 too. FF10 explicitly gets pretty dire, so I'm like, yeah, I, I want to avoid the world of 10 as best I can. FF15 is basically the hangover JRPG that comes dark. Yeah. Around the time Luna Freya dies, where it just all around gets very depressing. F10 is riskier than 12, because Sin does randomly blow up villages. He does. He does. For demons just being evil in media. Well, they never try to make you sympathize with the demons. The, the whole idea of it is people are turning into demons, and demons are mindless monsters that kill everybody. So it's not like a thing of like, oh, the demons are people. I mean, the demons are literally people. Like, 
At first, it's like an experimentation thing by the company. I, it's the company that's involved with the Empire that invades fucking Noxus' homeland. I can't remember their name. But they get that whole DLC with uh, Prompto, where you find out they created their army by fusing clone babies and demons together. And now they're just flat out opening the, the, the hole that allows demons to flood in. Like Devilman demons? Explicitly not Devilman. It is just people turning into demons. It's people turning into monsters. And Niflheim, yeah. Yeah, check Discord for a pick of the cake. Okay. That actually doesn't look half bad. That actually looks pretty good. The heat madness. And yeah, there's another Genova experiment. The dead man without no man? Not even, it's just people turning into monsters. You know, it's because Final Fantasy 13 did it too. Uh, Final Fantasy 13 did it to where there was that demon realm that was breaking into reality. And uh, said demon realm, if people died, if people died because they get pulled into that realm, they turn into demons. It was something like that. Because you had that whole uh, opening scene uh, in Final Fantasy 13, Lightning Returns, where where's lightning at uh, Snow's nightclub, and then like the portal to the demon world opens up, and it just drags a waitress, a waitress right inside of it. Shit, dude, Final Fantasy feels way more grimdark than Warhammer Fantasy has Skeleton Man eat God Souls. Nah, not really. Yeah, there's been an actual boss fight, so. Yeah, focus on almighty damage. Why the witches go to hell, though? Because that's day, the, the demons are just killing everybody. Yeah, I'll do Bahamut. I got scared, but no, I'm going to do Bahamut. 13.3 is basically hell. You can't die, but you're stuck in whatever condition, so yeah, it's fucking hell. Yeah. 15 rubs everyone wrong. Well, it's because it's literally unfinished. <laughs> it was broken apart in different media. Still really rubs me the wrong way. How heavily leans on DLC to fix the broken story, then cancel on half DLC in the end. Because that state, it was literally unfinished. That The idea is it would all be one big game, but then they broke it apart. Is you a photo in general? I mean, is it of the cake? Because, I mean, I saw the cake. Oh, yeah, chocolate the clear. Okay, we don't have that. We have literal, literal eclair uh, ice cream, where it's little chocolate eclairs that are frozen, and they have, like, ice cream in them, and they can eat those. I like that concept of environment influencing, uh, influencing your physiology. How goes the writing if you put anything to paper? Uh, the crime story idea I actually have. I have, like, basically the whole idea of it fleshed out. I like the... Yeah, basically the whole structure of it. So I'm thinking about, like, after the Apocalypse Now video, I might actually try to get something on paper. Like, actual, officially, not, like, ideas. Like, what happened to the waitress? she okay? She got turned into a demon, as stated. She got dragged into the demon realm and turned into a demon. That's what happens when you're pulled in there. It's not like, you don't, you don't see what happened to her just because she was a jobber. The whole point is it was showing the demons are attacking. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know what? I don't care if it backfires. One day, it'll always become an appraised writer when you see strings of blackmail. Another form of chocolate clear ice cream we have is vanilla ice cream with ribbons of chocolate, uh, bits of shell pastry, and swirls of cream pasture mixed in. Huh. Good luck, man. I really got past the planning ideas phase, and I'm in hell with all the drafts I'm working on. King March 4 is any indication we're getting what verse 13 is going to be? Yeah. I think that's probably going to... Oh, it doesn't kill. Okay. 
Thanks for introducing to B Banger Broomstick Cowboy. Yeah. To just heal? Yeah, the, the heads are affected by different elements. So some will heal while others get fucked up. I knew that going in. My hope was it would at least kill one head so then we can just focus down one. Because then that's just dealing with one element. Series talking about demons is spaced out. Final Fantasy uh, 13 3. Rocket Declares one of the best flavor of the day specials at Culver's. Come on, Yuffie. Ah, fucker. Alright, we gotta get her back up. Sadly, she just burned her limit break. Bad breath work? I'm kind of curious. I don't think it will. Uh, seriously though, Google the recipe for Fanta Cake is addictive and your whole family become addicts and become their dealer. Hmm. I am willing to try out new recipes. There, there have been some we're kind of experimenting with. Okay, that didn't do near enough damage. I hoped it did. They really like setting Yuffie on fire. <laughs> now, do you think an Oscar adaptation of Starship Troopers could ever be made? Because, man, I'd love to see the Power Armor suits a big budget. Oh, there's the anime. The anime is actually pretty damn close to the, the book. What's your D&D &D character? Uh, right now, uh, with the, the session I'm playing with uh, Art Bro and L them. I'm, I'm playing a, a barbarian guy called Default. He is just the most normal guy ever. Like, he, he is very reasonable. He's very forthcoming with people. He, he is as generic as it gets. He is an NPC. My phone died at 3%, now 2. Yeah, Default. Yeah. I've been, I've been enjoying that. I've been having fun with that. Oh, uh, fuck on. Let's see what Titan does. In the mid of mid. That's good. Yeah. Sounds like he's the main character. Oh, I've been fucking with Art Bro. <laughs> I've been fucking with Art Bro so bad because I just... I just go off script and just, like, do random shit. Like, I'm not intentionally trying to sabotage, it's just I get an idea and I try to see through it to the end. And he's usually pretty good about uh, humoring the ideas I have. Oblivion NPC music is your theme song. The best tactic to confuse the enemy, become an NPC. <laughs> Okay, that's bullshit. You went three times. Is he a good dungeon master? Yeah, he's usually pretty good. He's actually got some really creative ideas. Did that not kill? Nope. Okay. Ah, uh, he wanted to be a spiteful bitch. Can I do different voices or only the, uh, only one? No, he can, he can kind of do different voices. I mean, obviously, we know he's just trying to put on voices, but he's usually pretty good with it. I have to say, he's, getting, he's got good ideas. No, the bosses are incredibly dull. Eh. Game could not possibly anticipate my actions, even though I do not know what I'm about to do. Well, it kind of helps that, like, certain days we do, we all have, like, weird luck with our rolls. Like, certain sessions, we're all hitting nat 20s. Other times, we're getting, like, really low. So, things that we want to try to be creative, we're either fucking up royally or we're getting on the dot. Like, like uh, to fuck around, there, there, was a, there was a session where our, our goal was we had to, to work with a hag, who obviously, if you know D&D lore, is basically a really powerful witch. And the really powerful witch owned a tavern for, like, fantasy creatures that are on the run from, like, a order of paladins that are trying to clear out fantasy from the land. 
Uh, and we ended up having to work with him for, like, mutual gain shit. But my character to fuck around wanted to steal the reward from the hag early. Which, obviously, if I fucked up, that'd be a very, very bad thing, because hags are really strong and they don't like it when you fuck them over. But I ended up succeeding all the rolls to successfully steal the item from them early. Uh, so I played it dumb and made him think that, like, I was just an idiot that was blathering about. Literally Shrek. Yeah, he flat out admitted he, he stole the plot from Shrek. <laughs> like, he, he flat out admitted he got the idea from Shrek. <laughs> but, uh, uh, that night when everyone was trying to take a long rest, I decided to ignore mine so I can go outside and, and hide the treasure somewhere. And then I got caught by one of the gnomes working with the hag. So I ended up having to do, like, a, uh, tearful heart-to-heart -heart with the gnome and help him get through relationship problems he had. And we ended up bonding really well. But then the hag found out I stole shit, and so I immediately pinned all the blame on the gnome. So I got to keep the reward, and the gnome died. It's like, yeah, I, I ended up having to be a little bit Machiavellian, and the funny part is I had, like, the, the lowest intelligence of the party, and I somehow pulled it all off. <laughs> Did you punt the gnome? It got skinned alive. Uh, first time playing D&D, some asshole kept getting the high rolls uh, uh, and nearly killed me in fireballs. He was one of the... It's what my character would do, jackass, and played since. What edition y'all play on? Uh, I don't know what edition. I think it's like 5e, just because uh, that's the easy one to kind of get people into. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck, tricked by an actual retard. And it, it happened because I had nat 20s. <laughs> so yes, I managed to trick a witch... Uh, into, like, killing one of her loyal employees who was, like, definitely not going to betray her simply because I got lucky. <laughs> That's not very default of you. It was extremely default. Did you punt the skin gnome? No, it ended up, like, literally hoisted as a fucking decoration on the hag's bar. So, like, when you walk into the bar, you just see, like, a hang skin gnome as you walk in because I fucked him over and... <laughs> And convinced uh, his boss that he was trying to steal from her. <laughs> What's this in my addition? As stated, it's it's just five E, just because that's the easy one. You tricked the hag. Is that hag maxing? I uh, gotta lock in now, so I'm gonna fight off some uh, Legion Hoover Dam on very hard. It's mostly a non-combatant character. <laughs> Wish me luck. Friend I was dealing was fighting a lesser beholder and rolled a crit fail, but since he was halfling, he could re-roll and got a nat twenty. We have a funny story when his girlfriend come looking for him. <laughs> I am actually wondering if Art Bro is going to factor that in. Because he, he usually factors in like the weirdest fucking details into shit to, to mess with us. So I genuinely wonder, is, is there going to be like a, a revenge plot where that gnome's girlfriend wants to figure out who killed him? The age of 400 is in demand. <laughs> One of my players often fails to really think about what he wants to do to solve his immediate problem, and hilarity often ensues with consequences. <laughs> Wouldn't be hard to find out, he's still hanging around that bar. <laughs> Very clearly, the players truthfully pinned the blame on the hag for skinning him. Dude, that's the, my, my character is, like, weird about this shit where, like, as, as far as everyone's concerned, he's just some fucking weirdo that started hanging out with everybody and just won't leave them alone. Oh shit, and Cloud died. But yeah, he's, like, some weirdo, because I, I only got involved with uh, with them recently. Uh, they would play D&D for a while. They're their whole group, so I'm only just now coming in. So as far as they're aware, my guy is just some fucking lunatic. That started, like, following him around and, and says weird shit. And yet somehow also gets into, like, weirdly in-depth Machiavellian schemes when he is nowhere near smart enough to do that. Like, it got to the part where Art Bros just flat out like, Do you want to just remake your character to, like, a bard? Because you're kind of pulling off shit a bard would do. And I'm like, no, I like him being a barbarian. It's funnier this way. <laughs> Character's just Conan. He kind of is. Like, I specced into grappling, and there was a, uh, there was a fight we did against a bunch of vampires. 
Because the, the whole thing is we had to go and kill a bunch of paladins, but the paladins were actually fighting a group of vampires. So the, pa the vampires had to kill everybody. So my character just started, like, grappling vampires and, like, you know, ever, everyone else would just do, like, a basic attack shit of, like, oh, I attacked the vampire or something like that. I'm specifically, like, all right, I want to throw the vampire into the campfire and then, like, pin him against the campfire to where he's still burning. And, like, Art Bro would actually, like, let me do that. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's like the, the vampire is, like, on fire in the middle of a, a campfire. And my guy is just, like, holding him down with his foot. Mm. You know what? Here. I do Neo Bahamut, so then I can get Bahamut to Yuffie, who once again is meant to be our summon. Are you sure you're not bar default? No, bars are gay and less funny. Machiavellian savant barbarian. Uh, my slightly dim player went through a bag containing explosives rigged to a goddamn pressure trigger and cyberpunk. He still hasn't lived that one down. You curb stomp a vampire? I did, in fact, curb stomp a vampire. Should have penalized your health for that. He didn't. He he liked the idea. Because, like, I specifically was going... Because I, I was even explaining why I was doing it. I was like, alright, I'm going off the idea of fire hurt vampire. Because everyone else is like, they, they, they would get like, uh, every every turn the vampires were, would regain health. Because that's like a thing they can do. Uh, so I was thinking about it from the angle of like, alright, so media, what hurts vampires? Uh, holy water, we don't have any holy water. Uh, silver, we don't have any silver. Fire? So I said, fuck it, campfire. Playing an autistic member of the group that's secretly a trickster demon. Thanks all McCann based my character off him and now I'm reading some Conan. I want to make a barbarian character. Barbarians are a lot of fun. Yeah, barbarian needs no instruments to do a bard's job. Therefore, barbarian better than bard. Dude, like, Aste, we're playing 5th uh, edition. So, combat-wise, it's, it's pretty fucking easy to break. Uh, and I had no idea how fucking broken barbarians can get in combat once you're, like, just a little bit higher level. Because you pop a rage in combat, you have advantage on all your rolls. Uh, all your strength rolls, at least. So if I pop it in the beginning of combat and want to do something like tackle the, the vampire lord that's controlling everybody and grapple him and wrestle him, I have an advantage to do that. So long as I don't fuck up both rolls, uh, I can grapple a vampire king and keep him pinned in to where he can't do anything. That's how most classes are. Game really doesn't take off until level three. Yeah. You doing okay there, Scarlet? She was laughing. That's bar character, essentially a fancy version of Ash from Evil uh, from Evil Dead, and Antonio Banderas and Desperado, or Desperado. You can suplex a dragon if you want in five E. Yeah. Fucking uh, Irishman's character, who he he does like the typical edgy, edgy sort of leader protect guy. Uh, he fucking did a a people's elbow on the vampire lord from like a cliff. He's still super proud of that, cause to be fair, it was pretty fucking it was pretty fucking weird. It was wild. I'll go to bar college, get a useless degree, join a dwarf guild, another skill. I uh, think those sneaky wizards, uh, snarky wizards, want to build their own staircase, their towers. Nope. I had one where I was a, a scion. I tried to fight, I flick a null goblin with my giant hands and accidentally decapitated it, horrifying uh, the pack and concussing the shaman. That's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Best character I ever played was a portal hopping human ranger swordsman who knew eight different languages and had to be a translator off into very foreign beings. Yeah, there's a lot of wild shit you can do. Uh, best character I ever played was a portal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. D&D, &D, what would a Helldiver category as? Uh, I don't know. Probably some kind of Paladin. Not a huge fan of 5e. From my understanding, it is very, very streamlined. Brutal Corco and Barbarian is great. 4d12 uh, for damage on crit. Oof. Oof. 
Paladin of Liberty. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Uh, I think Kaiser Knuckles better than what Tifa has. Let me make sure, though. Not really. It's just more materia slots, which, once again, we don't really need. Character, I was thinking I to get revenge on that guy who nearly killed me with fireballs to come back as a fire gen size, so I have resistance to it. Play a dwarf and I had random attack a party member. He did zero damage. It can happen, yeah. Anything about automaton talking hell divers too? Are they people or creations of gay and patriarch cyborgs? Uh, I think they are just cannon fodder. They are target practice, and questioning what they are sounds very undemocratic. Alright. There we go. Edge access to Carl DLC, just dang, yeah, it's good shit. Uh, best armor against common bots called the Exterminator for a reason. Yeah. Little well, Mad Starship Troopers suddenly got so many fans who truly believe the book is a blueprint for a perfect society, especially Sargon. Yeah, it's not. It's just what one guy thought. It's it's the Star Trek thing. I'm like, yeah, no shit. It sounds perfect and idealistic. It's specifically made to be perfect and idealistic. Look, now Americans are not people. They sit in the back of the bus. Uh, Cyclops production for 20 fake mines. When I started the Donkey Kong thing, I was listening to you in the car. It was a mountain road. Nowhere to pull over, and the cars were behind me, so I couldn't just stop. I was stuck with it for a full 15 minutes. Happy Easter. Glad my cyberpunk players are investigating killer on their gang's turf, who is either a man enhanced with nanotech to emulate a vampire or a real one. I haven't decided which one yet. Have you tried the Quasar, uh, Quasar cannon yet? One shot bots drop, uh, drop ships. Yeah, I played a few games where people had it, and they're pretty useful against ships, but contextually, that's kind of all they're really good for. Uh, who's your favorite girl in Bunny Girl Senpai? I like Tomoe, the one who did the time loop. Time loop was pretty good. This part's poopy. Uh, Cloud loses his shit and becomes a macaloid. Yeah. Long time ago, we played a game that allowed uh, flintlock-style firearms. Uh, so I'm down to my last pistol, and I rolled 20 and one shot the villain before we all died. <laughs> Ever played Vampire in the Masquerade before? I've only played Bloodlines. I've never actually played the tabletop for it. I know that's technically more just World of Darkness, but you know. Oh shit. My best feat was with my Blade Slinger. Uh, Blade Slinger got the big bag to leave us alone. We just out of the forest by bitching. I had a long week. I don't want to fight you now. Fuck off. Starship Trooper is a literal second-class citizen. Sargon's an idiot. Yeah, it's dead. It's, it sounds nice until you think about it. Plot Tekken 8 Deluxe Station. Early access DLC. Tekken Fighting Coins with Damn Nina Williams. Tekken 7 Black Cat Suit. Falcon should take ultimate revenge of sex Sephiroth's mom. I know who she is. I stand by it. Okay, red light. Oh, no, that's an attack. I don't remember if I actually managed to pull it off or not. My buddy's a, a character. Oh, one sec. Uh, Alright, 25,000 health. Okay, so no weakness. My buddy's character in Vampire and Masquerade Tabletop is a Mokavian. He's being gaslit to think of their cat girl. <laughs> Domino might uh, just allow me to treat any strength rolls as a stat number instead of what you roll as wild. Yeah. Like, the, the the session we're in also has a lot of homebrew elements to it, uh, where, like, our approach is kind of come up with ideas he thinks sounds cool for, like, a, a fantasy thing. So it's kind of cool where we're, like, uh, 
making the system actually work with that, on top of a lot of the, the crazy shit we, we get up to. Because, like, he, he kind of fleshed out the that whole Paladin order to where, yeah, they're basically just the bad guys from Shrek, but they're also not wrong in, in that fancy stuff is actively hurting things. But I'm I'm just getting into the, the session and learning about shit. So fucking... <laughs> So fucking, like, I have no idea about any conversation that's going on, and I just interrupt to, like, point out weird shit. Uh, with that rule in the final level of Barbarian, no strength check will be below 24, you strong boy. Yeah. Uh, Cloud A Sephiroth, what? I fucked your mom. You what? I have a set world, I have my players always playing, and I'm starting something called the Town of Redemption Outcast. He's, re he's resonating something like an instinct, uh, resisting creature. Okay. Or fuck, I was no patient for Griffith's Fantasia bullshit. As stated, it, it, it is extremely funny, because, uh, like, he tries to set up a whole dire foreboding thing, where, like, oh no, this noble is totally gonna fuck you over, and things like that. And then he'll have the scene take place at, like, the, like, they're unveiling a new statue for the city or something like that. So I just have my character interrupt their speech and go, I bet you can't jump off that statue. And I'll make them actually have to do rolls to make them jump off the statue. <laughs> Where they'll, like, get in a contest of, like, Nuh-uh, I can totally do it. Nuh-uh, I can do it. Uh, I mean, you see people like the hag, you might understand why they want to kick magical creatures out. Oh, yeah. Is rape allowed in D&D? That's for very specific sessions with very specific people. Do you have beef for the class of 09 people that's going to make the anime? I don't like the whole, oh, I hate visual novel mentality. I genuinely don't like that. Whenever I hear that, I'm just like, fuck that. I remember the same campaign when I image projected my face in the sky, yelling, behold, behold, behold. This guy the shit out of a cold ball pack, and I thought I was God who was not the quest. And Farquaad does that. a barbarian does his masculinity. Now, the funny part is, like, I'll have my characters stick to the whole, like, no, uh I could totally do it, even if he fucks up royally. Like, during that same incident with the hag, uh, I decided to get in my mind to just make my guy want to get, like, a, a loot or some kind of guitar so he can pick up music, so he can start a band. Uh, never before had he made any inclination that he wanted to start a band or he had any, any possible care for music. And it got to the point where, like, the rest of the party is, is like just making some fucking skeleton who's trying to play the music in the bar, give up his loot, so he can just, so they can just make my guy happy, just be like, fuck off, just let him do what he wants, just whatever. Uh, so like, Art Bro went as far as like, giving the skeleton lore that, that's his great-great-grandfather's loot that's been in his family for centuries. And like, uh, we had to have like a, a contest to see if, uh, to see who would get the loot. But then I fucked up the rule so bad that uh, everyone in the bar was angry and we had to leave for the, before they tried to kill us. He really likes that red light. So not a bard. Yeah, no, the guy's not a bard at all. It's just out of the blue he got the idea of, like, I want to play music. So, like, tried to rip away this loot from the skeleton that's had it in his family for a thousand years or something like that. And then, like, after, after everyone was done and they were, like, meeting and, and talking about what happened... I made my guy go super like, no, see, the reason I lost was because I wasn't fated to have that. That was not my loot. So I'm still having, like, a big cope fest about that, and it's, I, I think it's been pretty damn funny. He's a bardarian. As stated, he's not even that far. He just got it in his mind that he wanted to play music one day. <laughs> Give me the loot. Have a homebrew horror campaign set in the Fate Moon, uh, Fate type Moon universe. Lady who sells some weapons is uh, Koi and Sa uh, Skaya. Might be big. I have no idea. Plucks a string, it shatters in the timber. Barbarians, man. Default lost loot. Default failed barbarian exam. Dishonor upon his goats. Uh, I don't think it really matters who you give it to. I think no matter what, it'll... So fuck it, we'll give it to Barrett. Be funny to smash guitar thing after one song. <laughs> nah, I didn't go that far. 
Because that state, it was a thing of like the, it was bad enough to where any provocation would have pissed everybody off. So it's like, all right, so we actually have to take this bit seriously now. Because it was after a really bad fight and everyone was beaten up. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to push it that far. The barbarian's like the judge from Blood Marine. No one understands him. He has a plan for everybody. Do I not have a tent? I may not have a tent. Fuck. All right, so we're actually having to use resources. Be like fourth hog ox slayer and turn your music axe into a literal axe. No, I stayed the him using the mu him doing the actual music is like ancillary to the joke. The joke is just one day he wanted to play music and nobody really knows why. There we go. Day hundred uh, eight. Day eight hundred ninety. Asking Lola to make a better call. Saw review. Hot Russian lady is a kitsune. Still in her accomplished to finish her creating her nine tails. Can't fucking wait. There we go. Good trade satirical series version. Both can be good. Uh, the twenty twelve remake one was really really good. And at the same time that that classic eighties comic humor. It's so fucking good. We demand guitar time. I am default knows what default wants to start a band. I have a recommendation for you, City of Violence, uh, 2006 South Korean martial arts film, series under Ray Gem. That does sound pretty good. Love you, Rio Z. Uh, part of the reason the villain uh, was after me and my friends because I joked that if I could date the villain's daughter and he said yes, yeah, so basically doomed us all. He saw you play the guitar. I was D&D talking about me how internally disappointed I was with Vox Machina. Yeah. I say the, the whole appeal of, of tabletop shit is just being able to Get into the weird situations that your friends will allow you to get away with. Well, I says Sephiroth like how chill it says top 15. Uh, it's called Duty Black Ops 2 becoming too real. 2025 is next year. What happened uh, with June 19? Baldur's Gate Three is better representation for D&D than Vox Machina. That shit was Tumblr as hell. Yeah, because that's day the the fun with Baldur's Gate Three is you still have to follow the rule set of the world and what the DM wants to do, but what you can do in between that is all all up to you. If you want to break script, see what you can get away with by breaking script. And Baldur's Gate Three does that a lot, where well, there's a lot of moments where you can just absolutely go completely in a different direction than the story intends you to do. Last session we fought several characters from Konosuba and the funny part is it was lore accurate. Wiz was the MVP that mind controlled our sniper Mega Man and Spirit Bomb. And the managers at my workplace the massive DD fans always coming up with the campaigns and talking to me about his ideas almost because we want to get into it. It is fun. It took me a while to really get into it just because like the whole idea of organizing sessions and all that is like, man, that sounds like a pain in the ass. But now that we basically have a system worked out with uh with Art Bro and, and his his buddies, it's like, yeah, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. The mayor of my town is a deceitful yet moral-based succubus wife who uh, wants to not be an evil monster anymore. I 
Let's watch Conan review and holy shit, completely forgot about him and how big of an impact he had on fantasy. Oh yeah, good shit, good shit. So yeah, you get the big reveal. The soldier program was in fact fusing human beings with Genova cells. Future D&D is going to be kit bashing rules and concepts uh, now that uh, Wizards of the Coast expanded all, expanded all its fucks. Oh, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of why I was never really worried about, like, tabletop going woke, because people just homebrew shit. They can just get the older editions and the rule books and just go off there. I mean, even if they do a thing of, like, oh, race bonuses won't apply, people just homebrew it to where, yeah, they will. Buffing Forest, some fun stories playing tabletop thanks to him. I know existence of Weird West. Like spaghetti western shenanigans, but with native curse and stuff. Yeah. What is it with people fusing with Satan in Final Fantasy? I don't know. Job my OG 5e rule books from 2016. Those are my absolute go to. Surprised you don't really care for curriculum when you mention about it from previous streams. I'm surprised you never mentioned it in some of your reviews. I, like I said, the, the whole fun of the, the tabletop ship right now is shit that me and my friends are coming up with in a campaign to have fun with. Which show do you think is the weakest protagonist? Uh, Jonathan, as fun as he is, I think is the most basic bitch. So maybe him. Uh, but his death scene is legitimately fantastic. So. What's this, some additional wrong? Estee, it's, it's 5e. Kind of already is. People homebrew a lot. Yeah. I just think fusing a Satan is a good idea surprisingly often. The next stage of human revolution. That short side can cut you off from people entering the hobby from current books. Eh. Not really? Like, like I said, people mainly just homebrew their own shit anyway. Because... Uh, the, the rules are there as a guide base for the basics, and then from there you can expand upon it depending on how experienced you are as a DM. So shit like that is like, eh, it's up to you. But especially with like really controversial changes, uh, people are absolutely going to go back and go, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to play it like the old system because what's changing it? You know, what, what's changing you from being able to factor that in? Just go to the old edition. I mean, to be fair, even Rocky said you want to make Jonathan more interesting looking back. Yeah, he was starting off. It was It was part one. It's fine. Also, Rocky said when he killed off Jonathan, it was a huge taboo at the time to kill off their hero. Yeah, it's what really set JoJo apart, the fact it was a multi-generational story. I watched a, an anime called Haibon Remel uh, tackle some pretty deep subject matter like death and afterlife. Surprisingly, it is more well-known. I have not. A race that are part dragon can breathe fire, ice, uh, lightning, acid, etc. Can act like it's not a race advantage. You can uh, rules your uh, way around when moving it all together. Yeah, right. Just heard of them myself. I have strong opinions of critical either way. I just didn't know about the part for a long time. I watched reviews. Last day, I, I I never liked critical role. Like I just flat out did not like them. I didn't think they were funny. I didn't think they were entertaining. Everything about critical role to me was just annoying. Table talk can't be woke. Uh, I know it might take so long to make your own, but you can in old rule books that are there online. Well, I stated it's people already homebrew everything anyway. People come up with their own campaign ideas. They can come up with their own systems. One of the aspects of Cyberpunk 2020 is flat out saying, hey, develop your own hacking minigame because the one in the rule book fucking sucks. Uh, Hi, Bon Rommel. Uh, Renai is on my watch list by the same guy who made Technolize and Lane. Hmm. So you get the big reveal. Cloud was never at Limbleheim. It was Zack. Okay, he was sort of at Nibbleheim. My pet peeve with JoJo is the protagonist got less spoils they went on. How dare you take away their gains, Rocky? If it was your choice, what would you pick for Part 7's ending theme? Fuck, okay. That's hard. Because Part 7 has, like, such a specific aesthetic with the anachronistic Old West thing so maybe something that sounds like old west spaghetti western but more of a modern flair 
you know, not quite Ace of Spades by Motorhead, but definitely in that same vein of, like, something you would listen to in the desert. I should know Joe killed off its hero in 1973, which is a legendary ending. Uh, this is in the same magazine, but even over a decade before Jonathan uh, Joestar died, it was totally allowed. It was, but it was a taboo. And Ishino Joe specifically did it at the ending. Uh, JoJo did it in the middle of the story. That's on Hot Pants from Part 7. Part 7 is, part seven is just fun. It's just fun. Has some of the best stands, period. Has, like, some of the better cast. What's the new D&D rules to take stuff away? So it's pretty easy to just say, no you. Yeah, basically. I like Jonathan, all the other JoJo's more dickish. That kind of was Jonathan's whole thing, the fact he was nice and a gentleman. He was sword at Nippelheim, what? <laughs> Pretty sure the ending themes are all music from when the arc was coming out, so it'd be music from around 2004. Yeah, kind of. It still, it still tries to click the, stick to that like classic music thing. I was get through Shadow Heart reminds me of a hot emo chick back in high school. Lost my virginity to, and she gave me a BJ in the bathroom. You know what? That might have actually, yeah, that might actually be something to brag about. If you can say, "Hey, there's a chick I fucked that kind of looked like Shadow Heart," I think a lot of people would go like, "Holy shit, lucky!" Uh, the best character was an Oath of Vengeance Black Dragonborn Paladin who had a magic rusted metal jaw that always dripped bits of acid due to his acid breath sack being destroyed. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Play Motorhead from the ending of Part 7 would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can see it, depending on the song. What did Jojo do? I was listening partially. Uh, when Jonathan died, that was actually kind of a major shakeup because they killed off the hero of the story, and the story did not end. Uh, Jojo protects have their own charm in different ways. Yeah. John's also the first non-Japanese shonen protagonist. He's the first non, uh, first. It's also the first shonen protagonist to die. He's not the first because that's data. She didn't know Joe did it before. And if you really want to get technical, Devilman did it too. Stand what you have based on a wasp song? Uh, don't know. All depends on what they can do. Are Dave Productions still animating Part Seven, or is there another studio? From what I understand, Dave Productions is still involved with the whole thing, so I think they're going to do Part Seven. I'm really going to either hear Thin Lizzy or Motorhead for Part Seven. Hmm? And first die in story not ending. In that regard, yeah, you have yeah. Like Joseph's sassy attitude appeals to me. Joseph's fun. Harder, faster? Maybe. You also have the horror. You also have Heaven Hung in Black. Uh, trying, to think of, trying to think of ones that would actually sound like stand names. Maybe Love Machine? I'm trying to think, like, what could you do with that? Because the horror, pretty obvious one, is... uh. You know, make make someone's worst nightmare materialize. Like, I can see that working. Uh, Heaven Hung in Black, maybe, like, oil-based. You know, a lot, of, a lot of shit you could do. Rebel in the FTG. Yeah, I can see that. Jonathan's dad got narratively done dirty by being the first official Joe Star. Yeah, Jonathan's dad is just kind of a massive retard. <laughs> Crimson Idol. Crimson Idol absolutely sounds like a stand name. I'm surprised that we still haven't gotten our main stand. No, we have. I've watched the anime Darker Than Black. I have not. Also, Barrett just gave the black materia to to Sephiroth, posing as Tifa. Neon God. Neon God would also be a pretty good stand name. I haven't uh, named a stand Radiohead yet. They might have? 
Why'd you do that? Barrett was under the impression that was the real Tifa. Harder, faster is the sand? Maybe. Headless children? Headless children could also be a stand. Black guy posing as a white chick giving some powerful pills to the white haired genetically engineered genocider. Chainsaw Charlie? Yeah, maybe. Holy Wars could be a cool stand name. Yeah, maybe. Smooth Criminal. I think I think Smooth Criminal is actually a stand name. Uh, why do they still make an Ultra anime as CG? Why? Probably budget. Because uh, Netflix is helping distribution, and they might add, it might have been a thing where Netflix produced it too. Holy Diver, I think Holy Diver is a stand already. Dirty Thunder Cheap, that one is a stand. <laughs> Because that's D4C. Man, the mirror's stand already. That is true. Does that imply Sephiroth canonically is so femboy he looks like Tifa? <laughs> Dio's already referenced. Dio's reference, I think Holy Diver is literally a stand. Diver Down is the stand. Took away the beauty of the manga. The authors already uh, actually study anatomy and fitness, draw the movies accurately, and still epic. King and Omega is also pretty good. Yeah, like I said, I think it's purely a budget thing from Netflix. It's it's some bullshit. Being a D4C, ever seen that video of Trump debating other Trumps with Valentine's voiceover? Yeah, that was weird. So yes, as far as Hojo's aware, Sephiroth is dead. Well, the real Sephiroth is dead, and what you see now is just the Genova aspect that thinks it's Sephiroth going around doing stuff. Luckily, Kengen vs. Baki is written by the Kengen writer, not the Baki writer, so it might actually be good. Is there any stands based on Joy Division? I don't know. I'm surprised Nirvana hasn't been a stand name. No, it has. I don't. I don't remember if it was a song or if the stand itself was just named Nirvana. But yeah, Nirvana's been referenced. World has divers gear as a reference to Holy Diver and Dio stand. Well, there you go. Yeah. I'm crackhead stuff. Dracula flow gave Quarrel to some good good. Sephiroth's mom was cosplaying as Sephiroth. Does that mean we had to bang Sephiroth to cuck Sephiroth? Trusty ex exhibition would be a killer stand name. Nirvana, I think part six. Yeah, I, stay, I don't remember what exactly the reference is, but Nirvana has been referenced. Foo Fighters. Yeah, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters has been pretty fucking blatantly referenced. Spring Hill Gym. Oh, okay. Black Hole Sun is the stand name, yeah. So he's a swamp thing? Is 
Sephiroth canonically uses a full bottle of shampoo and conditioner every time he baits. I mean, he has to. Have you seen that hair? Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, that, Pearl Jam, Full Fighters. Yeah, all those have been referenced. Mississippi Queens is stand. I think that one has, yeah. On the gas station live stream of the Earth kind of shit. I enjoyed this bizarre adventure thanks to Part 3 Stars Crusaders. Yeah, no, it sounded like a part skipper, but honestly didn't know it existed for a long time. Yeah, definitely go back and, and go through Part 1 and 2, because they're really good. Okay, I, I like how people just have life outstanding, like there's no stand, Black Hole Sun. Well, he was talking about in reference to, it sounds like a stand name. And it's like, yeah, I could see I could see Black Hole Sand being a sand name. I think it'd be pretty cool. Rage Against the Machine. I don't think that one has. I don't think. Judas Priest? Judas Priest has been referenced, like, multiple times, I think. Same in Biggie Smalls and just as an Ant-Man shit. Yeah. There's a chance Imagine Dragons might be a stand. What about Sephiroth and his hair, hair care comes from Price Score and supply the source of the Sephiroth's fan club until it's just Hojo. Apparently the 101 Gundam in Japan is shutting down. Sadly, yeah. It sucks because it was really cool to see. I think Painkiller would be a wicked stand name. I don't know if that one is. I don't think it is. That doesn't sound familiar. But yeah, it would be. And yeah, we just gave Sephiroth the black materia. The actual Sephiroth. We at least got to see it. That is true. We at least got to see it. Nickelback and it just uh, makes coins. It takes 10 chapters to beat him. What was the deal with the Invincible, Invisible Baby and JoJo? I don't remember. That was part four. I don't remember the stand name. But yeah, it was a baby to where its stand ability makes everything around it invisible. And I think it outright deletes it from reality after a point. So like the baby itself will still be there. But stuff around the baby will start getting erased. And treat it as if it wasn't there. And the thing is, the baby couldn't control it because it was just a baby. Oh yeah, and all the weapons are alive. Octon Baby, it's a U2 album. Okay, okay. Unicorn still upright. Uh, it's just RX-79 getting take down. Aww. Don't fear the Reaper would be a cool stand name. It would be. Got to find Emerald and Ruby weapon? I don't know. They are very mean. I think Joseph could see the baby because he had dementia. Something like that. He just kind of instinctively knew it was still there. Because I think he had flashbacks to when he raised his daughter. The manga novel, there's a stand called Joy Division. Oh, okay. Was, was Horse With No Name Part 7? I think so. Yeah, that sounds like Part 7, yeah. Because you had Whole Horse and I think Horse With No Name. Just get that to the round, you'll be fine. Yeah. He was wearing clothes, I'm pretty sure. If you're talking about the baby, the clothes were invisible too. I stayed... People... Could barely even recognize the baby was there. At first it had clothes, then it made the clothes invisible. Because that's when they found out about what it could do. I think uh, Ruby Weapon automatically counters uh, Knights of the Round. Yeah. Just still the most badass Joseph. Uh, Jojo, even as a seen old man with dementia, he still sees more shit than the rest. Yeah. What about Arena of Pleasure, Electric Circus, and Burning Man? Those could all be pretty good too. Piper at the Gates of Dawn is a stand name. Oh, Muse sounds a stand name. Uh, I, 
Yeah, I can see that working. Here it happened, P. Diddy. Homeland Security FBI raid is other properties case opening of criminal. Yeah. Watch this damn little girl's way. Oh, go boingo. So which camp are you in? Sandman or Soundman? Not sure what the reference is. I'll stick with Sandman. Remember, Joseph cut himself to find the kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, poured blood on her for that little bit of time that they could see. Because her chef, uh, chief becomes a JoJo stand up. Stop reading, they suck. So yeah, Cloud was basically brain dead for a long period of time. And Zack explicitly had to take care of him. So for some reason, after Nif uh, after Nibelheim, he went almost like catatonic. And Tifa found him in Midgar. And Cloud just seemed to not really know what happened. So that guy put, uh, not put Mi Mizra the goat art artist here because he had a five assistant so he didn't do all the work. How true is this? Oh, Miura. I mean, Motherfucker still made some of the best manga in the industry, so I was like, yeah, he had assistance. What, do you want him to do it all by himself? Ruby has no resistance to paralyze, so he can spam Hades or Dazzlers, then use Knights of the Round. Okay, okay. So Cloud was basically sleepwalking. Uh, kinda. It's more the fact of S day. He, he kind of went, like, catatonic slash was in a coma, and he didn't really process what was happening. And yeah, Tifa kind of fed him a fake story about what happened at Nibelheim. That's why he's an Omni Smash Mimic Combo and Ruby. There you go. Very fair. And if I remember right, the, the weapons still operate off that thing of it'll run away after a certain point in the fight, but it'll keep all the damage you gave to it. So you can basically will them down to death. Or is that only one? I know for a fact it's at least one. I don't know if it's only one, though. Who heal his mind? Uh, when he came back in contact with Tifa, he kind of snapped out of it. So Tifa kind of gave him false memories to operate off of. She didn't fit him a fake story. Start questioning when he gave his version of Nibelheim. Yes, no. This one is explicitly like, yeah, you were a soldier. Even though it's like, Cloud was never a soldier. I've seen how detailed uh, Berserk is. Mirror would have died long before he did it completely alone. Oh, yeah. Which JoJo has the best design? I really like Johnny's. Johnny's is pretty good. As much as I'm not the biggest Part 4 fan, I will admit Josuke has a really iconic look to him. Uh, Jonathan is basically just Kenshiro, but eh, that works. He's time on armor weapon. I think it just kills you. Okay, okay. Go called Maiko with a stand uh, called Tubular Bells named after Mike Oldfield. Yeah. Tifa totally killed Bill Coma Cloud. Yeah. Well, that's she, she was doing it because she wanted uh, to protect him. Because she didn't know what happened to Cloud and just saw him, like, out of his fucking mind in the middle of Midgar. So he wanted to look, she, she, she wanted to look out for him. Did Cloud have diapers while brain dead until he get changed? I don't know. How long are we going for? I'm literally about to wrap up as soon as we're done with this cutscene. You see where DC bought Golden Age Sandman back for an event and killed him off again at the end? I think that's really gay. So White Cloud was acting like a mercenary. Well, because uh, as stated, Tifa kind of fed him some fake memories a little bit. That's kind of why it's interesting how Rebirth is doing it now with, with uh, Cloud's memories because they're making it like Tifa's the one pointing out the differences. Meanwhile, uh, in this, Tifa's kind of the one that kind of like nudges him in certain directions. It's She's not doing it out of malice. She's doing it because she genuinely doesn't know what happened to him. Probably using that to the round mimic or counter is you have to watch cutscene five times every turn. No part five love designs. Giorno's design is okay. I would not call it one of the best JoJo ones. Because let's be honest here, Bucciolati was the real JoJo of that part. Can I ask for a stand name? Would be sick. I love that band. Yeah. Tubular Bells is the Michael Oldfield's most famous album. The song of the same name is almost well known as the theme for his ex. Just yeah. 
Just a teensy mind violation. Last date, it's 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 a thing where what actually happened was after the Nibelheim incident, uh, Zach was taking care of Cloud for a number of years. Like what? Fucking three? About three or so, I think. Cloud's mind was basically completely broken after Hojo gave Mako poisoning and lashed onto his story. Zach told him to compensate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cloud was completely brain dead for a while. He he was like out of it. Yeah, Cloud becomes a mercenary because Zach talks about it to his vegetative state. Yeah, uh, Zach really influenced Cloud. That's where the twist comes in. That that, and we're we're gonna have to go back to the uh, the mansion so you can get the full context. Years? Yes, years. Um, the Nibelheim incident was five or so years prior to the events of the game. I think five or six. It's a significant enough jump in time. Uh, the whole idea behind it is after Sephiroth destroys Cloud's village, Cloud is kind of lost his fucking mind a little bit, uh, because he's exposed to a shitload of Mako. Uh, Zack is still alive because he's not dead yet, uh, and he helps take care of Cloud because he, he's genuine friends with Cloud, so he feels bad for him. Uh, Zack dies, and Cloud's just kind of left in a daze... Not really sure, and he just kind of goes to Midgar. And from there, he snaps out of it. That Zack just has memories, magic inserted in the Cloud's brain. It's weird. It's very weird. Square's literally rewriting the original game courtesy of timeline jumping shenanigans. Bet you the fans would not be happy. They haven't been happy. They haven't. Can't be five. These guys are still teenagers. Well, Tifa was like, what, 12, 13 when Nibelheim happened? So five years later, it's like, yeah, about 17, 18. Zack didn't take care of Cloud for three years. They were all been comatose. Both comatose for most of that time until Zack woke up and broke them out. Uh, Cloud didn't wake up until Zack was dying. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because I remember, uh, fucking Crisis Core. Because Zack breaks Cloud out, and while they were escaping, that's when Zack dies. Yeah, now, now we're actually by ourselves. Tifa, Tifa slept with Cloud. Next day, she gaslight him. Yeah, Cloud uses Octo Slash from Zack's memory. Wait a minute. She was like 15 during it, I thought. Nah, she was like 13, 14. Scrambling those passionate small breasts on Tifa in the most recent chapter. Last aid, uh, that's in regards to Integrate, which is the DLC to Final Fantasy VII. And that time she's like 13, 14. I'm for Square to tank their reputation. Uh, throw a fucking dart. Square's had a number of fuck-ups over the years. Yeah, Remake Trilogy's practically the city of crap at this point. Nothing to do with the original FF7 story. Nomura uh, must have jumped ship caring about the OG game. I mean, Nomura is not the one writing right now. He He's project director, but he's not the one writing. From my understanding, he apparently fought to keep it closer to 7. Hudson and Allison changed. They're pretty good. Remember the cutscene from Christ Core where Sephiroth cutting that giant gun barrel while fighting Genesis? Yeah. Guarantee uh, nobody would use this stand name. Uh, Vicloth, obscure Romanian rapper Dibs. G15, but damn that body, 19. Not not in this part. Modern day, they're like, yeah, 17, 18. They, you know, they're, they're basically adults. If you want a recent fuck, uh, square fuck up, try selling some IPs for crypto. Yeah, right? Will it let me save yet? Oh, shit. Okay. <sighs> fuck. I wanted to be able to save. Hojo kept Zack and Cloud as tech subjects after Nibelheim when Shinra was erasing the witnesses. Tifa only lived because her master got out of there and fled. Yeah. There it is. Because, like, Tifa and Cloud were basically the only survivors. So remember all that grinding we didn't do with Barrett? <laughs> we're about to feel the pain of that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But that'll be, that'll be worry. That'll, that'll be uh, points for next time. Okay, okay. So there you go. There you go. We, we did get a little bit. We actually got a lot more done in 7 than I thought. You know, we, we played a little bit of Far Cry 2, which is pretty good. Pretty damn good. Uh, and we got a lot further in 7 than I thought we would. 
So, points to us. Points to us. Why didn't you grind? I did grind. I ground up my uh, my, my 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 A team. You know, Cloud, Yuffie, and Tifa, the ones I actually take to the end game. But I always forget that, like, oh right, there's parts where they they make you play as other people too. Fuck. Yeah, grind off screen. I might. I might. I'll I'll, I'll go through it on my own and see, like, all right, is this beatable or is it a thing where we're just completely fucked? Because it shouldn't be too bad, but it is a thing of, like, yeah, I might have to do that. I was going to eat shit next time. Where's my goddamn guitar, Bruce? It's sitting in the corner where it should be. Where it should be. Uh, I'm trying to get some things prepped on my end because uh, I might finally be having some some aspects of Horseman on Name Down. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you more of that when I finally feel confident about it, when I finally feel confident, you know. As stated, tomorrow, if if I don't have D&D tomorrow, I'll do an extra stream where we do more 7, and I'll show you guys more guitar shit. But as stated, I, I want to hold off on it now because I want to get some things down and ironed out, and then I'll show it to you guys. That'd be great. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> Play guitar now. There you go. Get my fingers rattling against the desk. Still waiting for Kingdom Hearts 4, not getting all screwed up with his own story, uh, given all the announcements about Square Rear and script over and over. Yeah, right. I grind all your characters. Yeah, I stay. I think we're going to feel the pain of that. My next guest stream also BG3 will be Revolt. Temporary says parents and friends realized the lead singer of AIC died because he did not uh, take money out to buy drugs. It is a little sad. It is a little sad. Uh, never got that fan uh, fan cannon cloud Tifa Yuthi error <laughs> love scene. Yeah, now you have necrophilia. Uh, no reasons for a dollar. Uh, on my way to through Disco Elysium, mostly enjoyed it up till now. Some of the world building is more trippy than I first expected. Oh yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, like I said, uh, I don't really do any of the political vision quests because the more fun part to me is the supernatural, the the supernatural and just finding the fucking murderer. That's to me the interesting part. I mean, the politics are there, but the politics are there just to be like, hey, everyone in this setting is fucking weird and crazy. So. But yeah, there you go. There you go. As stated, I, when I finally feel comfortable, because my big thing with Horse With No Name, because that's the song I'm trying to learn, is specifically that swing beat, that, that swing strum. I'm trying to get that down, and I still have no fucking clue how to get that down. And that's been the thing I've been trying to work on, because I got the chords down easy enough. That's just the, you know, the, the finger placement. It's specifically how you strum it, where it's that dun, 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 or dun, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So... I've been trying to iron out how I, I actually strum. And I think I have it pretty close. From the pick to the string horse with no name will be free from free horse with no name. Is that that character from Invincible just showed up in the show? Oh boy. Oh yeah, who boy indeed. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I get the palm uh palm mute sound. Yeah, yeah. It's it's stuff like that. You know, that's that's the part I'm at. That's the hard part. Seven hundred dollars so a cruise fund is complete. Yeah. Horse with no name, more like a gongo with no name. I repeat, on the last cruise, you eat a bait to Alaska. They'll throw you overboard for the pun, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. But yeah, when, once I actually have that down, uh, I'll finally feel comfortable. Because it's specifically that swing beat, that dun, dun, dun. doesn't help that I can never fucking remember how it goes. Uh, it, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Point is, this is, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm working on, hopefully. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you tomorrow. If not, I'll just show you maybe fucking Tuesday. I'll just take the guitar over to, to show this. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. But yeah, yeah. Thanks to everybody who showed up. Play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Screw Saga going to be like one piece that takes place in Alaska. Uh, Venom Anime might be okay, but I remember Seth Rogen's writer, but not producer. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you guys will get to enjoy it for election month or World War Three happens. Yeah, right? But okay. Thanks to everybody who showed up. Really good time. Really good time. And... See you guys.
Look at me, I'm Donkey Kong! <laughs>